victory. They're going to claim the 30,000. It's only Orange Marmalade to fight to the end. And he is going to run it out. He doesn't want to leave this finals. He can't believe that they've lost. They've come so far from the lower bracket. They almost claimed victory. They tied it up at one apiece. He is going to run away. And in comes the final abilities, the final kills that they need, despite having to fight against a very resilient Orange Marmalade. So look at her counter kill. This is incredible. Oh my God. Orange Marmalade turned that on his head. SK Gaming were playing like they won. We know what happens next. There's the Wolves and Bloodlust on Ben Rookie drops down the half. Well, and down goes Ben Rookie. Good morning. Welcome to day number two of the AWC Cup number one for Shadowlands. My name is Aya. I'm going to be your host this weekend. Once again, we're joined with Zico, Van Rookie, and Subutis. Today, we are going into the North American region. And then, of course, tomorrow will be Championship Sunday, where we're going to crown our champions for both EU and NA. We can take a look at the teams that we're going to be seeing here in North America. And if we can take anything from yesterday's games, Ven, uh, and, you know, apply that to what we're going to see today, I think these teams are going to show up with some you know competition to be had here i mean if north america is anything like europe the competition will be fierce we saw some of the best teams in europe not even make the top four getting eliminated early on in that top eight um and i, I think we might see some similar stories here in north america some of the you know team favorites team liquid for example as well as the golden guardians they already find themselves in that lower bracket so it's going to be quite the battle for them to make it all the way to the grand finals we've got some new faces uh, three and a half men as an example is a really strong RMP. Hasn't had too much, you know, showtime uh, on the AWC, but I expect big things from this team as well as the newly reformed Cloud9. Honestly, every single one of these rosters is looking rock solid. Yeah, 100%. They're also dealing with a bit of a different meta. We kind of saw them adapting yesterday on the side of Europe. We're going to see that once again here in North America. They are, of course, on the tournament realm, so they have the flexibility of being able to make whatever build they want. We're seeing a lot of specs that we haven't really seen highlighted and showcased in AWC come out to play. Uh, we saw that on Friday, so looking forward to seeing that on Saturday. But yeah, here's a nice little overview of the, the teams and the kind of the specs that they're known to be playing. We can also look at the bracket. We can look at the games that we're going to be seeing today we're starting off in the lower bracket so right off the bat is golden guardians versus unitas two very strong teams would you say that uh this compares to the lower bracket just the level of competition that we saw yesterday in europe that um super teams uh yeah i mean every single one of these teams 
could be a, a grand finalist potentially. Uh, and we've got reigning champions, Kawi coming in, uh, formerly Method NA. So how are they going to perform? They're actually almost in exactly the same spot that we saw my way in, like that lower yeah. upper round. Like, is it going to be the same journey for them? Are we going to see new champions in this first cup uh, rise to the challenge? This first series, though, Golden Guardians and Unitas is very interesting because they actually have similar compositions with Jaywa and Aiden. They've got the Shadow Priest Rogue. They could run Shadow Priest Rogue Shaman Mirrors. Uh, into the Golden Guardians, because I'm not thinking they'd want to run a Rogue Mage setup. I think the Golden Guardians are uh, kitted out right now to deal with Rogue Mage. So we might actually have a Mirror, which would be very entertaining right off the bat. Let's see, like, I was Peekaboo measuring up here against Aiden right in the first cup, Rogue versus Rogue. Like, I'd love to see some RPS Mirrors. I would as well. Speaking of Golden Guardians, we know that they played, all of the teams in North America played in those offline brackets on Wednesday. And let's take a look at a clip that we have from WizK and how he's reacting to that new meta. Rudy, 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 Oh Damn! Oh. Zug Zug. Where were you against Red Warrior, man? Oh my god! Oh, the uh, what is your uh, what's your reaction to that, Zigo? I mean, this is what WizK does. I mean, the clip is from Abster's point of view, but uh, you know, the player to watch is definitely WizK in that clip. Uh, this uh, WizK thinks, I guess, uh, gets the mind control on the on the. Trinket, Life Cocoon, and the uh, I-Beam actually ends up killing uh, his own teammate. So uh, we're going to expect big things of this man right here. And uh, the Golden Guardians in general, you know, they this is it's such a typical thing to see the Golden Guardians in the lower bracket fighting for their lives, bringing out the Rogue Shadow Priest Shaman. And uh, I think that's what we're going to see as well from these guys. And uh, it's just uh, a real fan favorite. Actually, a, a, a quick funny story is uh, you got, I have a new barber, if you haven't noticed. Oh, oh and, uh, uh, yeah, looks nice. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, and one of the things that my barber always talks about uh, when I'm there uh, getting my hair cut is how good Peekaboo is at Rogue. Because, uh, <laughs> he plays really? WoW, and yeah, yeah, he plays WoW, and uh, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, he, I, I ran into him one time, you know, at, um, at the supermarket, and he was like, oh, because we used to go to school together, and he, he recognized me from Twitch and stuff, and uh, he told me he had a barber shop. So I went by there one time, and... Yeah, we just talked about WoW the whole time, and he's a huge Peekaboo fan. I think he's actually going to be watching uh, oh closely God. here. Yeah. Cool. What a cool story. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely a team <laughs> that is, like you said, a fan favorite. Their their fan base is, is very large, you know, considering sometimes they don't even make it into the top eight, but they, they've they definitely got a lot of Ride or die, die fans out there, and it's it's really cool to see. On the side of Unitas as well, they've got quite a following. Uh, that org is representing the, the LATAM region. Um, so I think just it's... It's unfortunate when you see teams like this of this caliber in the in the lower bracket because we have to send one home. Um, and then the next one we've got is also going to be an elimination round. So at the end of today in North America, we're only going to have four teams left, Super Tees. Yeah, uh, only four can make it out alive. And the fact that we've got Team Liquid in the lower side already, Golden Guardians in the lower side already, like they face elimination in this first and second series of the day. Um, like, is this how they want to start their season? It's, it's the first cup. They still got a couple of other cups to look forward to, but like getting that good start, just getting the momentum, accumulating a safe amount of points to qualify for the circuit. Like you want to be in that comfortable position. You want to start off strong. So uh, to me, it's, it's Golden Guardians and Team Liquid that I am really hoping are going to step up here in the lower bracket. Uh, and it sh give us a run. Uh, but this is traditional Golden Guardians fashion, like you were alluding to, where they start off in the lower bracket, everybody's just cheering for them, they want them to go all the way, please do it, and it's like, they just come so close, but they, they always break your heart just at the last second. <laughs> so is 2022 gonna be the year Golden Guardians can deliver all the way? I certainly hope so. Unitas also looking for that win. Of course, both of these teams don't want to be going home early on in the tournament. Like on the first game would definitely be unfortunate for either side here. It's game number one on the Grand Arena. Golden Guardians versus Unitas. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. So you actually have Golden Guardians locking in their traditional Rogue Shadow Priest Shaman. Unitas bringing in the Rogue Mage Priest. 
And Aiden actually bringing in the Assassination Rogue. So I, I think this is a good choice. I'm not sure who exactly they're going to be going after. Um, I would say, just looking at this kind of matchup going head to head, um, I, I actually feel like RPS might not be that bad of a matchup uh, into RMP. Uh, but we'll have to see how much pressure they can get out and uh, how exactly Unitas decides to open here in the early stages. All right, both teams going to be leading with their strongest compositions. And uh, I mean, if we go by historically, Golden Guardians is that team that dismantles Rogue Mage Priest. This is one of their matchups that they like to, to play, but uh, I don't know, with the new changes to Assassination Rogue, maybe not. We're going to see immediate oh. pressure onto Peekaboo here. He's going to use that Trinket, trading it out for Aiden's Vendetta and Abrua's uh, Combustion right there, but now a counter kidney shot here onto Abrua. Both teams leading with big momentum. Life grip coming out from Corlick, full blind onto Corlick by Peekaboo. Corlick's going to Trinket out of that one, so they do get the Priest Trinket. Peekaboo with the Vendetta rolling onto Abrua. That's going to be the Golden, uh, the Guardian Angel as well coming out there. And now maybe a swap here, blind onto Absturge, kidney shot onto Peekaboo. Pre Earth and Wall, Holy Fires are coming out. Do they have a sap or anything onto Absurd? You get a fear into a full polymorph. Nasty spell coming out from Whiskey hey, though. And now Aiden in a lot of trouble here. Smoke bomb coming out. Aiden has his trinket and he will be forced to use it. That panda ratio coming out onto Corlick into a cheap shot into potential for more crack control. There's the silence as well. Aiden with no cloak of shadows gonna have to kite and kite here, but it looks like he will survive for now. Both teams basically one setup away from winning the game, and Aiden has his uh, vendetta coming up right now. So yeah, let's see who can pull the trigger first, and it looks like Unitas will. With two seconds left on the kidney shot, can Wizk make the save? Oh. Void shift over. Peekaboo stays alive for another kidney shot, but Absurge is still crowd controlled. They're going to grip Aiden now away from the kidney shot. Peekaboo Shadow steps in to try and go for the win right on top of Korlik here with Absturge. Dogpiling on the healer, trying to land those interrupts and secure a kill, but not finding it. Now it's Peekaboo, though, who has Vendetta available. He's going to be a big striker in the next couple of seconds. The next kidney shot could decide it all here. Who's going to get their kidney shot? first. Dragon's Breath on the Whiskey, but no follow-up just yet. We see Absurge pre-Earthen Wall Totem. Is Aiden going to go into it? No, it's Peekaboo who's going to pull the trigger. Kidney Shot Vendetta. Massive damage over onto Aiden. Dismantle out of it. Korlik gets a big heal out in time with that Ray of Hope. But now he's into a Fear. Potentially not going to be too big of a heal. Nice Fear by Whiskey. No, that Ray of Hope is going to get Aiden back into the fight. Aiden's now building up for his Kidney Shot. His Vendetta available. Combustion available. Nine more seconds for Peekaboo. He pre-evasions. Can Aiden Shadow Step behind the evasion here and go for the Kidney? No, he's going to get kidney shot himself but whiskey's in a polymorph this is nice stall by peekaboo he's gonna blink behind the pillar away from aiden he knows he's dead in this kidney he needs to survive a couple more seconds now with that trinket cloak of shadows and those evasive maneuvers peekaboo will have an answer to the massive cooldowns but they're swapping they don't care about peekaboo anymore swap over to absturge stun lock onto absturge that's it ko unitas game one Wow, I mean, that was a huge combustion there by Brua. I don't think Aiden actually had any cooldown, so it's just a kidney shot into Corlix's uh, Corlix chastise stun with a Brua's combustion. Whiskey tried to grip him, and I mean, what a close game this really was here in game number one, but Unitas definitely showing signs of life. RMP looking very strong with that burst damage there at the end. Both teams playing absolutely insane, but ultimately it's going to be Unitas claiming game number one, maybe still potentially trying to go for it, but at this point, I don't think Golden Guardians are going to be able to take him down. Wiz K, he's a miracle worker a lot of the time, but uh, I think even this situation is probably going to be uh, too much for him. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, Abrua did such a great job as well in this match. You know, uh, not only securing the kill there with his combustion, but actually he's the one who forced out Absturge's trinket. Uh, it's kind of why I was yelling a little bit earlier, because he sheep Absturge, and then uh, they, they went for the kidney shot of the Peekaboo. He trinketed to try to save Peekaboo, and then he actually got sheep on his trinket. So. Abrua uh, kind of setting up that win condition and uh, finding that swap as well here uh, towards the end of it. And uh, we're going to see exactly Aiden does not have his combustion. And I mean, at this point, it's just Peekaboo. Uh, he has his combustion. He has his vendetta, rather. Aiden has no trinket. So they, they're looking to set up here onto Aiden. This is their kill setup. And unfortunately, they don't get a follow up after that silence. And that's the big problem there. That ray of hope coming through with the Guardian Angel. And Whiskey goes for the fear. But unfortunately, uh, or like already getting that serenity out and getting those big heals out means that uh, Aiden is going to be completely fine. And then here, of course, Peekaboo uh, with the evasion, trying to stall out, trying to make sure that he doesn't get kidney shot here. And then he's actually pre-kidney shotting Aiden here just to try to buy himself some more time to get that trinket back. He gets a trinket back, he gets the uh, Cocoa Shadows, but then here uh, the setup is going to happen onto Absturge instead. So Absturge actually has a Fleshcraft shield as well. They, they yeah. don't even poke off the Fleshcraft. And it's just a brewer with a big fireball right there into the combustion and then they get the double stun of course with that kidney shot into the uh, 
uh, stunned from the priest with the chastise. So uh, just a great synergy there between Abrura and Korlik to set that up. And honestly, Absturge, uh, he got gripped there, maybe a little bit too late there, but still there was some defense there with the, uh, with the Necro Shield as well. So a uh, little bit surprising, honestly, to see him go down there. Full blind on Aiden also. I kind of wonder, uh, we're actually seeing... Um... We're seeing a Brua use the Echoing Resolve Trinket. Uh, so he's having to, like, you know, they have no Hex to spell. So every time Absurge lands a Hex on him, if he's not immune, it's going to be a really, really long extended Hex. We actually saw him trade out his Ice Block. So I wonder if Peekaboo, if he blinded the Mage instead in that situation. I mean, it's such a split-second decision, you know, it's happening instantly. But I think a blind on the Mage might have been able to keep him alive. Um, but yeah, definitely, that was a crazy amount of burst damage, especially since Aiden was controlled for so long. But... You get the feeling, or at least I get the feeling after watching this game, that it could definitely go either way. You know, Golden Guardian's showing a lot of signs of life. I, I personally feel like this is one of those series that's going to go back and forth. I really don't think we're going to see any kind of blowout here. Yeah, I, I feel like in, at that moment in time where he went for the blind, Peekaboo was probably thinking, if I stop the stun lock, then Absturge will use Link or something. So it's like CC yeah. the Rogue, that'll stop a Riga Road or a, a Cheap Shot or something. And then it was just the Holy Priest that stunned instead. Like If, yeah. if there was no follow-up on the Kidney <laughs> Shot, then... Absurd would have been able to get a cooldown off. So I, I'm imagining that was the thought process of CCing the rogue uh, rather than the mage. Uh, or potentially he had that resolve active. Maybe it was immune and they had no way to get rid of it. it could so it's yeah. like they had to just go for the blind. Um, but yeah, still proving that Fire Mage is quite powerful in 9.2, um, basically soloing Absturge in the, with the kidney <laughs> shot in that swap, along with Korlik. Although you still got to recognize Holy Priest. I, I feel like the one thing we're not talking about that is the main strength of Holy Priest is how much damage they put out from their new set bonuses. The new build for Holy Priest allows you to get Holy Fires that are like, I think like 20 to 30,000 damage um initial tick and the dot actually also continues to tick at a really large margin so you have to be afraid of all three members the holy priest might kill you the fire mage might kill you the rogue might kill you like all three of them are a big threat they tried to remove the rogue on that attempt and the holy priest and the mage were able to follow up with enough damage to kill absturge so this is going to be tough for the golden guardians already down one point in the lower Whoa. bracket to unitas how often do holy priest play night fey is that is that standard uh, I'm playing triple Night Fae in this matchup, so um, yeah, that's interesting. He's playing the uh, Loa Legendary as well, so kind of interesting uh, build from Korluk. I don't know if that's standard in RMP. I don't think it is, um, but yeah, let's see how this one opens up. Cheap shot onto Absurge, immediately into Polymorph. Looks like they're actually going to be going after WizK in this game. Panda over on to Aiden to slow him down, but a big kidney shot now on Peekaboo. Abru getting really aggressive here with his combustion, and that silence is going to completely wreck him and shut down that damage and now it's golden guardians looking to strike back a oh, beautiful root there on the grip aiden is going to be forced to trink it out right there you also get the guardian angel so both uh, rogues are already trading out their personal defenses vendetta's rolling on both rogues and it's once again kind of a slugfest here between aiden and peekaboo and uh, looking to find that edge next setup should be the blind here is a kidney shot onto peekaboo aiden might be looking for the blind here. Abrua could be looking for the crowd control as well. Now, Aiden, oh. the shot smoke on that. This might be it. I think he's dead here. Ray of Hope comes through. Is it going to be enough? It might be negative here. Does he have any big heals? Nice hex onto Korlik. And that Ray is him. going to be negative. And that's going to be the pod. Can they kill it? Oh, that is the question. It's getting massive heals. Sheep shot onto Korlik. He trinkets out to save the pod. But I don't think it's going to happen. In Golden Guardians with a quick one. Take game number two right there. They force out the trinket immediately with the smoke bomb punish on the next kidney shot and th there was a bit of a defensive overlap there with the um, guardian angel and that uh, trinket from uh, aiden all right golden guardians coming back strong in game number two gonna shake off you know the first game just first game it happens a lot i feel like we can all uh, agree when you queue up on the ladder you lose that first game it's the, the response is just eh, first game first game uh, get that out of the way, get the jitters out of the way, and now we're back to business here. Very early kill. It is not easy to take down an RMP, let alone an RMP so quickly, uh, and an RMP of this caliber from Unitas. So well done to Golden Guardians, getting punishes on the defensive cooldown usage of Unitas and just immediately executing for the win. I was actually thinking that they might not be able to kill the pod towards the end of the game. Like, that game was so short, it's probably the entire game on the replay, but we're going to see uh, how they were able to do it. So they get a kidney shot onto Peekaboo. This when Aiden and Abru are getting aggressive. Peekaboo almost goes down, cloaks at 10%, then just turns it around, 
right away with this kidney shot here. They stun Korlik. They prevent him from getting gripped, it looked like there. They got an earth grab yeah. totem on him, so they couldn't grip Aiden away on that kidney shot. That was deadly. And they overlap the Guardian. They overlap the Cloak. And that's where the big defensive overlap was. So Peekaboo knows, hey, we can win this game. Let's just wait for the next kidney. Absurge is getting ready to counter the kidney with Earthen Wall. So this Earthen Wall totem is soaking all the damage on Peekaboo. And Whiskey's ready. He's looking at Whiskey's damage. Peekaboo's like, okay, I got you. Kidney shot, smoke bomb, no trinket, no Guardian. We're going for the win right now. And here we're thinking maybe he survives. He's got Ray of Hope, which stalls all damage and accumulates healing. But Corlick got hexed and didn't get dispelled for like an extra second. And this Ray of Hope ends up being negative, doing damage to Aiden instead. Whiskey grips Peekaboo to the pod to get extra damage on the pod. They blind Corlick, Corlick trinkets, and they cheap shot his trinket. And that grip from Whiskey, the couple of extra seconds just to get Peekaboo there in time to kill the pod, was perfect. Otherwise, potentially Aiden comes to life. Peekaboo has no trinket. It could be Peekaboo on the ground. So clutch offense from Golden Guardians in game two. Look at Wizkay's damage, just absolutely wrecking. What's interesting is we saw a lot of the Shadow Priests in Europe yesterday not opt to run the two set and the four set, but Wizkay is going all out uh, with that new set bonus gear. And I mean, his scoreboard damage is absolutely nuts in this one. Uh, that Psy Fiend ultra punishing uh, in that first attempt where Brew actually, actually that second attempt where Aiden got incredibly low. So great plays coming out from both teams, but it's Golden Guardians who strikes back in a big way going into game number three. I kind of wonder if we're going to be seeing a change here uh, from the side of Unitas, um, I kind of think it's unlikely. And I wonder too, if map selection is really going to matter that much. Uh, it looks like they're going to be going to Maldrax's Coliseum, so a large map. And this just makes me feel like Korlik wants to play far away based off his positioning on the Grand and kind of his positioning on Ashbane's Fall. It seems like he wants to, you know, have a huge distance. But at the same time, Golden Guardians, they picked Ashbane's Fall. So I'm not exactly sure who these maps favor. I don't like the yeah, big map. You personally, for the RMP. I feel like because Krolik was so far away, that's what lost the game. Definitely possible. I mean, you can get there in the smoke bomb in time, but it's like, as soon as you run into the smoke bomb, you're just going to get crowd controlled anyway. Hey, everyone's just waiting there. We, we saw it in game number one. A whiz is just in the bomb with his panda quaking palm ready to go <laughs> as, as soon as he gets in. So I was a little surprised for the Holy Priest uh, when he tries to move in and actually heal his poor rogue who's just stuck there. But um, yeah, game number three. Uh, Golden Guardians picking up some momentum here in game number two. And yeah, you know, going into the series, I uh, wasn't exactly sure who was going to win. I feel like this is a relatively even matchup um, and it's still anyone's game. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think the map just, I, I think the map only matters if you're going after the Shadow Priest. If both teams are going after the Rogue, I really don't think the map, uh, the map matters too much uh, in this matchup because it's uh, essentially two setup based comps uh, trying to win with, you know, Kidney into Burst. So uh, we'll see. Uh, I think the nice thing for Korlik, at least, is that he won't have to worry about the fears of Whiskey that much on a large map. That could be why they pick it. But then again, uh, Korlik also won't be landing those fears uh, on a lar large map. Korlik gets blinded up, kidney shot onto Aiden. Korlik trinkets out. There's the Ray of Hope. There's the Guardian Angel. And this time, they don't get Aiden's trinket here. So uh, this is a little bit different from that last opener that we saw. Quaking Palm onto Whiskey, Sheep onto Whiskey, Abrua with the combustion here. Uh, ready to go. Might be pulling the trigger here. Let's see what they can get done here on Peekaboo. Peekaboo actually sitting through the stun as well. So uh, actually saving the combustion of a Brewer this time around and only committing the vendetta of Aiden. Trying to bait out the trinket there. But so far, both teams unsuccessful at getting that rogue trinket. I think if they can pull Absurge out in the open, they're going to swap. They got his trinket on the blind here. Aiden gets gripped Ooh, on the nice. bomb. Nice play by Korlik. Peekaboo is salty about that. I can imagine getting gripped on your bomb. That's the big moment to get the trinket from the rogue and then kill with your vendetta later on. So not getting the trinket there on the bomb is going to put Peekaboo's team really far behind in game number three. Aiden now setting up another stun on Peekaboo, but it looks like he's sitting through it for now. Aiden launches a huge shiv. And that extra hemotoxin is going to be reducing healing so significantly on Peekaboo. He's struggling, popping the Aegis. He's just getting crushed right now from a Brewer's Combustion. Has to trade the Trinket, has to trade the Cloak of Shadows. Another cooldown out of the spellbooks of Golden Guardians. Now Wizke is going to be the pocket save. He's got the Trinket Void Shift to trade his health with a partner's health if they're in trouble and potentially going to be going down. Aiden dismantled. Peekaboo trying to build pressure on Aiden here, but Aiden has Vendetta. He wants to go for the kill. Peekaboo pulls back to Absturge. He's got a pre-Earthen Wall Totem lined up here potentially. We have to wait and see if he's able to secure it in time. Aiden getting crushed by Wizkay. Wizkay's Mind Flay just tearing into Aiden. 
Aiden trying to reset. Peekaboo and Amsterdam's line of sighting, getting ready for the next attack, trying to stall and buy time for their trinkets. They stun Aiden behind the pillar. Big damage coming up from Peekaboo onto Aiden. These set bonuses for the assassination rogue make them so much more deadly in patch 9.2. Peekaboo almost going for a solo kill on Aiden, but gets shut down. Now Aiden turning it around. Amsterdam's pre earthen wall totems, the incoming crowd control and manages to break out of the chain for a moment, but now into the full polymorph. Whiskey goes for Master Spell, catches it into a DR stun. We see the healer Korlik moving forward, trying to maybe go for a Psychic Scream. Not gonna be going for it with that Tremor Totem down. Now Aiden into the kidney shot. Golden Guardians trying to go for the kill, but they're not even denting Aiden at this point in time. And I think this is why Korlik went Night Fae Priest. He's gonna have extra mana regen, because he's falling behind in that regard if this ends up going down to mana. Yeah, no doubt about it. Aiden getting low, a silence onto Korlik. It could be his trinket, but no. Aiden just trades out his Cloak of Shadows, his Faint, he's going to be running away. Abrua in the face of the Golden Guardians right now, trying to get something going for his team. And it seems like Peekaboo, I mean, he's still got his Trinket, he's still got Evasion, you know, he's got Blind as a safety net if he needs it. Um, so, or Peekaboo doesn't have a Trinket, Aiden still has his Trinket, he's looking good. Peekaboo has some cooldowns rotating back up as well, including his Vendetta. Is he going to use it right now? Looks like he's not, just being patient. This isn't the setup, but he got a full fear. Wizkid gets a full fear on Korlex, so the crowd control is looking good. Aiden still low, uses his Aegis Trinket, very powerful Trinket, now going after Peekaboo. Beautiful cross CC, Ring of Frost into Polymorph with a stun on Wiz K, a stun onto Peekaboo. Triple crowd control, full blind, Abster just deciding to sit it, realizing Peekaboo's going to be A-OK -okay with Aiden in a stun. Golden Guardians, they managed to basically not trade out anything, even through a really solid push there by Unitas. Yeah, that was even the Vendetta, so really nice stuff, but there's still a follow-up kidney show right now onto Peekaboo, and they get any crowd control here. They have the combustion rolling for Abrua. Abster's going to trade out the Ascendance. It looks like uh, Peekaboo is going to be completely fine here, and look at Aiden preemptively running. He knows the next kidney is going to come onto him, and he knows he could be in trouble. Now they're going to be forced to swap over to the mage. Aiden looks for the restuff, and uh, he won't find it because Whiskey is keeping him in combat. Orlik sitting down, getting a massive drink uh, through all of this, so... That mana advantage that we were talking about earlier, not going to be a factor here as they are able to equalize that and actually take a lead in terms of mana. But I do believe that the Holy Priest will be spending a lot more mana than Absurge. So if it does come down to that, it's going to be interesting to see what actually ends up happening. Peekaboo with his Vendetta ready to go, looking for the Kidney Shot here. But right now he's going to be in a Kidney Shot. Absurge deflecting here with a Grounding Totem and the Earthen Wall Totem. Now Kidney Shot onto Aden. Whiz K looking for the dots, looking for some damage, Peekaboo with the Vendetta. They're going to trade out once again the Ray of Hope with that Guardian Angel. Should be enough to keep Aiden nice and healthy here, and he will be topped from that. But Peekaboo still has that Vendetta rolling, still has a little bit of extra damage here to go with. Aiden going to use the Kidney Shot, that should be enough. to allow Cordic to actually catch him up and reverse the pressure back onto Peekaboo. And both of these rogues are just looking for Kidney Shots on DR. Full Sheep secured Abrua, looking for the Ring Cross Crowd Control. Counter spells Whiskey there on the master spell, but he goes for the Shadow Mend instead. And uh, this game is a lot slower pace compared to the other two. We are just entering uh, dampening right now. All right, let's see who takes it in dampening here. Even though getting a drink, Korlik is evening out on mana once again with Absurge. Aiden in trouble down to half health. Pre Aegis Trinket on the kidney shot. Nice play by Aiden. That's going to absorb 50% of all the magic damage. Now he's setting up a swap on a Pigo kidney shot. Big damage coming out. Vendetta is rolling. Absurge is locked down in a polymorph. Whiskey needs to help. How is he going to keep Peekaboo alive? Peekaboo is going to pop his Aegis as well. Trying to soak some of the hits here at 30% health. Ring of Frost ticking away on Absurge. Finally out of crowd control. Connecting big heals. Now Aiden on the run. Peekaboo chasing after him. Looking to try and take game number three. Aiden pre-evasions. Putting his back on the wall. Trying to avoid the kidney shot. But a Siphine is on him. Reducing healing significantly. They stun Peekaboo. They're trying to kill off the Siphine. It's getting huge value. Now Peekaboo falling behind. Absurge into the Dragon's Breath. Who is going to fall first? Absurge saves Saving Peekaboo just in the nick of time with that Spirit Link Totem. Aiden on the back foot. Korlik getting interrupted. Trading out the Guardian Spirit. It's going down to the wire here. Smoke Bomb comes down for Peekaboo. Aiden's going to trinket and get out of that Smoke Bomb right away. He does not want to throw the game. They've been fighting so hard for six minutes of nothing but nonstop intensity. Whiskey trying to push forward. Gets Frost Nova. Dragon's Breath. Whiskey wants to go for crowd control on Korlik. They want to go for the win, but he's out of line of sight. Abrua preventing him from getting there. Aiden gets pulled to safety. Pikachu is trying to go for a restealth. Trying to get a reset on Aiden here. Gets the restealth. He's going to get big garrote damage on this opener. He can go for Aiden right now. Korlik into the stun. He's waiting. He's patiently going to take the moment here. Potentially the whole game still in stealth. Waiting for Aiden. When is he going to pull the trigger on it? He's right behind Aiden. Now oh, Peekaboo gets pulled out of stealth by the Fan of Knives. He's trying to go for a re-stealth once again, but Absurge is in a polymorph. 
Peekaboo now into a Polymorph. Who are they going to set up on with that? I think they want Absurge, actually. A swap to Absurge. No trinket on Absurge. How is he going to survive? Massive damage. Wizke comes in with the game-saving Void Shift, exchanging his health to Absurge, saving him in the nick of time. Now Peekaboo trying to get pressure onto Aiden. Kidney shot into Dismantle. He's getting smacked down by Wizke. And Korlik is struggling to heal. 12% dampening. Aiden on the run, trying to get behind the pillar with Korlik. Big heals coming in from Korlik. Aiden is going to top off once again. Peekaboo's just pushing forward, but Polymorph onto his healer. Is he going to be able to survive? Aiden turning around, getting aggressive on the Peekaboo. Wizke trying to move in. A swap to Absturge. Another kidney shot, but Peekaboo peels him away with a kidney shot himself. A Brua blinks in for a Dragon's Breath on the whole team to stall. You can tell that both teams want this, but I think it's the Golden Guardians that are getting ahead. They've got trinkets. They've got mana. They've got a huge lead. Yeah, it's looking good for the Golden Guardians. 15% dampening. Unitas really with not too much left. Let's see what they can do. Polymorph on Absurge. He's got the trinket, but no spirit link. Peekaboo could be in some trouble. Gets DR stunned into a dismantle. Peekaboo uses the Vanish. That should be enough for him to live. But now the Golden Guardians, they got to look to strike back. Full blind on Korlek. He's just not trinketing it. He's got his trinket. He's, oh my goodness, this kiting from Aiden is just beautiful. Just running around the pillar, preventing Peekaboo from doing anything. But he finally gets caught into a kidney shot. Korlik is there, not in crowd control, trading out the Fade, trading out as much healing as he can. Great plays coming in from both of these teams. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, this is an elimination series in the lower bracket. Loser of this will be going home. So they're battling it out for dear life here in this lower bracket in game number three. Aiden right now, full kidney shot on Peekaboo at the same time. Whiskey kind of pumping him down, but it looks like Peekaboo could fall incredibly low. Gets off his Aegis as well as his Cloak of Shadows. Peekaboo should be fine, but Golden Guardian's got to start finding some momentum here. Yeah, and that was Peekaboo's Vendetta and Aiden's Vendetta right now. Peekaboo was able to hold on to his uh, PvP trinket there, but Aiden still uh, also having his PvP trinket ready. Korlik's mana not looking great. Absturge has plenty to work with. Korlik actually trying to set, uh, sit down for a drink right now, but he's being kept in combat, Aiden, right here. And Korlik actually will be sitting down for a drink here. Can they stop it? Is there a void crash or anything here from Whiskey? It doesn't look like it. So much and mana. Korlik is going to so, yeah, get half mana off of that drink. So that's going to put Unitas once again back in the game. And now Peekaboo in a full kidney shot. No personal defensives to really work with. But he still has that trinket and he pre-faints actually that kidney shot. So beautifully done there by Peekaboo. You got a sheep here onto Absurge. Double disarms coming out here on both rogues. A Brewer now actually going to be the target of choice here. They've had enough with this rogue race. They're targeting the mage a lot more. But a Brewer still has his uh, uh, ice block to go with. And so Abrua could still be a quite tanky target here in the matchup. He was trying to get multiple bleeds now, trying to get bleeds onto Abrua as well as Aiden. But now it's caught up in a kidney shot, Absurge, in a full sheep here on his aura mastery right there. And now he gets uh, stunned right there by the Holy Priest as well. Combustion coming out now onto Peekaboo. The sheep shot coming out as well. Big damage here from the Combustion and the Vendetta. But Peekaboo doesn't actually have to trade anything. That Ascendance from Absurge is just going to be enough. And the symbols of hope is coming out once again. Korlik keeps finding these drinks, but he keeps burning through his mana so much. Look Aiden, the pressure. super low on HP. So much pressure now because they dotted up Abrua as well. Abrua taking massive damage. And Aiden has that Guardian Angel, so he's going to be fine. But Abrua finally having to trade out the Ice Block. And now that they're starting to rush down, uh, rush down the Mage, things are really spiraling out of control for Unitas. Can they take Abrua down? They have no cooldowns left. Big damage coming out the side fiend in the back line of Brewer actually blinking out of that smoke bomb there. Kidney shot onto Aiden and blind onto Abster, but they're still chasing down a Brewer. Do they have enough time though to do it? That's the question. Aiden now activating his, his Aegis, trying to stay alive and now trying to reverse the pressure onto Peekaboo. Unitas, I don't think it's looking too good for them. No trinket, no block, but Peekaboo's into the kidney shot. The Golden Guardians just need to make a trade and get aggressive right now. They have everything they need to, to win this game. They're so close, but dampening is high. They're struggling to recover. They're trying to be greedy on the poly here. Whiskey's into the stun. Peekaboo trades the cloak and pre-faints the next stun. Going for the win here. Pressure is going to be building as Whiskey is going to be unleashing a flurry of Shadow Bolt volleys. Who is going to fall first? Peekaboo's scared to go for the kill. He's trying to run away while Absurge is in a polymorph. Can he go for it at this point? He's so low. Big heal comes in from Absurge with that Riptide. Is he going to be able to get another heal gets dragon's breath on his hex kidney shot onto aiden whiskey is interrupted he drops the side fiend onto aiden reducing healing by even further beyond aiden down at 20 percent guardian spirit's gonna oh. rock on him i think this could be it for aiden golden guardians looking to take game number three they're cutting through all of the heals of korlik his mana is completely tapped at this point i can't believe that he's still going pre-evasion from peekaboo on the attempt of aiden here with the polymorphs onto absturge a brew just spamming out scorches trying to build pressure but he's not finding enough damage to go for the kill peekaboo moves behind the pillar but he might 
regret it. He's overextended. Massive damage coming in. Absurge almost doesn't get there in time. Spearling comes down. Now they're getting aggressive. Kidney shot onto Aiden. They need to close the game out. There's no mana left. They have to stay aggressive. Peekaboo Trink gets out to go for the kill here. Aiden shadow steps defensively, trying oh to escape goodness. Peekaboo. Peekaboo can't catch him. Peekaboo's in a frost over. Whiskey has to solo Aiden. Can Whiskey solo Aiden at this point? Wrapping behind the pillar, but he's fully dotted. He's rotting, and Corlick has no mana behind the pillar. Peekaboo blinks in for the kill. Aiden pre cloak of shadows, pre faints at 10% health. Is that going to be enough for him to stay alive as Cloak of Shadows fades? Abru blinks in, double what? Dragon's Breath, holding Aiden alive at 10%. Corley barely gets a heal in time. There's no trinket on Peekaboo. Vendetta available. Blind is coming up, but Aiden gets blind. No trinket for five seconds. Golden Guardians pausing the fight, getting ready to go for the kill here. Peekaboo doesn't get a sap out of the blind here. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to get it. He's frosted, but now Peekaboo into the kidney shot. Absurge pre earthens all of this setup. Peekaboo pre faints the stun. He takes so much extra damage. Now Peekaboo turning it around kidney shot onto Aiden trying to go for the kill I don't think the Golden Guardians can believe it they can't believe it that Unitas are still alive they've been working with nothing can they go for the win Peekaboo gets half blinded Aiden is so desperate just to keep himself alive at this point we're almost at 50% dampening between these two highly aggressive contenders who is going to take it this is li this is literally unbelievable. I mean, Corlex has been out of banner for such a long time. Silence now on Corlex. Aiden just dancing with death, finally landing a big kidney shot here on Peekaboo. He's got no trinket. Decent burst damage coming in, but this pre-ages from Peekaboo really paying dividends here for his survival. And I don't know if Peekaboo's going to be able to survive. They, they overlap a ton of cooldowns. It's a trinket. It's the void shift. I almost wonder if they should go after WizK here, but just evasive maneuvers, run away from Peekaboo, kidney shot him on cooldown. Seems to be the, the, the strategy here from Unitas, and it's brought them to 50% dampening. Abril once again has his ice block. He's also playing Blink Stun, so if he gets kidneyed, he should be able to hold on. He's got the Resolve Trinket also, making this Fire Mage incredibly durable, but has to trade out the Ice Block. I mean, Corlek with just no mana left. There's the Kidney Shot of Brua. He cannot blink out it. Finally, gets off cooldown, blinks out of the Kidney Shot. This is why it's so difficult to take down Fire Mage. It's this combination of Trinket plus the Blink. Peekaboo incredibly low. He's got no Cloak of Shadows. Might just die. No in way. Place. Raw damage. Aiden trying to turn around. Big combustion from Aiden. Peekaboo. What? what? The hell? Both of these rogues no way. are just dancing with death. Peekaboo now vanishing out somehow, some way, potentially survives. Oh. Big triple fear oh, here. Fear. As Peekaboo just goes for it, but he goes after. Uh, I don't know if going after a brew was the right move. It might be. It might actually be. Corlick with the ray of hope, trying to keep a brew alive. He still has his cauterized. Peekaboo getting incredibly low. Aiden into the full blind. A brew goes for the double dragon's breath. This is just such an absolutely insane game. How are these teams holding on for such a long time? Siphon by WizK, Abrua may have ran out of time, but at the same time, Peekaboo's got nothing left. If he gets kidney shot here, it could be the game. Aiden just needs to land it. Can he land it? These teams are playing out of their minds. The link, Abrua the pre-link, the, the pre-link. Pre it's such a nice play there by Absurge. Abrua burning down, he's on fire. No cooldowns left, 5% health. Uh, right now, WizK's going on a he's storm. He's a lava burst. managed to pot him. Can they keep the pot alive though? No, they cannot. 60% dampening between Golden Guardians and Unitas, what? but it is Golden Guardians that pull out ahead. But I mean, I feel like you have to give a ton of credit to Unitas in this one. I I can't believe they lived this long. I mean, Aiden had some outrageous plays to survive as long as he did. Yeah, just, I mean, this is incredible, right? Because both rogues just doing such a phenomenal job kiting back and forth, Cornic consistently finding these windows to drink because he was out of mana, you know, before we even went to dampening. He was like on 10% mana. He finds a drink, he finds another drink, he finds another drink, and he keeps uh, doing it, you know, at the right time where it doesn't cost his team those defensives, right? And it's just such an incredible job because when you look at it, the matchup, like both teams have the firepower to kill somebody. I mean, we just saw it in the previous game. The rogue literally died on the second kidney shot, but. For, for them to live to 60% dampening, I mean, both of these teams just playing phenomenally defensively, just everybody doing such a great job working together, not overlapping cooldowns and, and trading cooldowns uh, when they need to. Even here at the end, you know, both healers completely tapped, but still finding a little bit of mana to work with. And uh, my goodness, the pre-link as well from Absturge later on, it's just so many, so many plays uh, to actually secure the kill. And I mean, here you'd think Peekaboo is just completely dead. He's using 1%. And he manages to just kite and avoid a brua and survive here. Gets the vanish off cleanly, stays in stealth for just a tiny bit. They get the triple fear, and then to uh, to have the presence of mind to actually go and go get aggressive when you have basically no defensives left and you have basically no HP as well to work with. Just get that triple fear, and you realize, okay, 
the only defense we have right now is to try to kill the mage. They go after Abrua and they proc the uh, Cauterize here very shortly as well to get the Guardian Angel. And at this point, it just doesn't do anything. Look at Corlix mana, just completely tap. And they get Abrua to about 50%. Then here, a crucial uh, interrupts as well coming out from Absturge. This is the pre link right there from Absturge to save Peekaboo there. And then finally, Whiskey able to chase down Abrua here. Peekaboo on one side, Whiskey on the other side, cornering him there. And they finally get the pod. And of course, at this point, 60% dampening. There's nothing Corley can do to keep this one alive. And uh, finally, the Golden Guardians are able to take the win, but so many wait, close moments. Wait a and look at the damage. Hey, Corlick out damage Abrua. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait the a minute. Priest out damage the Fire Mage in this one. That's pretty. All right. Well, I guess it happens. I kind of wonder. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I, I feel like at that point in dampening, once you're 60% you're dampening, there's no way that the Shadow Priest isn't a good target, right? Like. Yeah. I feel like he's the one that's getting all the master spells on Polymorphs. Uh, if you just put a kidney shot on WizK, I know early on in the game it's really difficult and you don't want to leave Peekaboo open, but later on in the game, I can't help but feel if you have like a stationary target, like a Shadow Priest, and you have an Assassination Rogue on him, that that might have just been a more effective strategy. But I kind of wonder how many times these two teams have went to 60% dampening in this matchup. I, I can't help but feel like it's not a lot. <laughs> This was not the series I thought would go into. Is this our deepest dampening? <laughs> I think this is yeah, our that, longest game. Yeah, this I was the not record. expecting these teams as these comps to be the longest game. Here, I'm thinking we'd need to get like Swapsy versus Cloud9 Wizard Battle to get, to get to this <laughs> level of dampening. But like Unitas versus Golden Guardians, I wasn't expecting that. Like these compositions are so lethal to be able to get the game to go that long. Like you're always just having to think ahead. Like what's the next CC that's going to hit? I have to predict with this, then you predict with that, and then you need to pre-run right now or you're going to die. Like there's a lot more going on <laughs> in the game than you can really take into account just even just by watching it based on the comms. Like I'd love to I'd love to see like a, a peekaboo a POV of the of that game and be like, well, how did he survive that? Like what's he thinking in those moments uh, like he's done in the past uh, to be able to survive that long against an RMP? Um, Korlik is doing an insane damage. It, uh, it, it almost makes you think a Brua needs to be doing more damage, though. Uh, I feel like in that long of a game, really, you're behind the Holy Priest? I don't know. Honestly, a Brua didn't really get that much value. Like, we saw in the previous two matches, a Brua did some insane combust. There was that one kill on Absurd, which he literally soloed him. But in this game, uh, especially, uh, actually, the I think second to last combustion, he got zero damage out. He was loading up a big combust, and you know what, what a lot of mages do is, uh, you, you start casting a fireball and right before the fireball goes off you press the combust and then that will give you some extra pyros during your big first moment and he was doing that but he got kicked as he popped the combust before the fireball went oh. off so he was kicked with the combustion active and he just got purged off he did zero damage with it and that was deep deep into dampening you know towards the uh, ending stages of the game so uh, things like that especially late in the game will really really reduce your damage because let's be honest your consistent damage as a fire mage it's not really there. Uh, what you're doing most of the time is building up for that big combustion, getting some big cooldowns, and then you're just building up for the next combustion. And eventually you have combustion, they don't have cooldowns to trade, and that's where you find the win. Uh, and then you mix that in with the Vendetta, of course, as well from Aiden. And that's how you, you see a lot of these kills happen. You know, Aiden forcing out a trinket, uh, you know, from Absters by kidding Peekaboo, and then Abru has a combustion to finish uh, Absters off, for example. So uh, things like that. If that if that happens, it's really rough on your uh, total damage output. It's hard to know. Like so, like this matchup has kind of changed. I mean, this match, the, uh, the game number three we saw was kind of just like an all-out slugfest, right? Where damage seemed to be king, just kidney shot, do damage. I mean, both teams weren't. I mean, they were getting a pretty good crowd control, but at the end of it all, I mean, both teams were surviving the CC chains. I kind of wonder if a Brew should switch up his build. I don't know if it would be good to do. It kind of seems like counterintuitive to what you want to do as RMP, but even like Ring of Fire might be useful. The only problem is Absurge might be able to abuse that by running in, but every kidney shot with a Ring of Fire might actually like really skyrocket to Brew's consistent damage and his ability to you know kind of pump during uh, their burst moments. But I, I, I don't know if it would fully work out. It could backfire. Empyrean Domain, so it seems like both these teams like the large maps, <laughs> like the largest maps yeah. possible. <laughs> I think both rogues just want to be able to put out evasive maneuvers when they're in trouble and just run away across the map because it seems like it's just an all-out rogue race. I mean, ultimately, it was a Brewer that fell, and I think Unitas, they need to realize that if the game gets late, you can go after the Shadow Priest. Like, I, I don't think WizK, I mean, once you get through this dispersion, which you should be able to do, also you don't have to worry about 
things like uh, Mass Dispel anymore. If the Shadow Priest is in Kidney Shot, all that damage um, is going to really add up. As well as the Combustion, that's another thing you mentioned. I mean, when Combustion gets dispelled off by WizK, um, it makes it a lot more difficult to actually put out that consistent damage. So maybe some things to think about, but I, I, I would be surprised if we saw this game <laughs> go to 63% dampening again. <laughs> Very I like surprised. the value. Yeah. Sidu got, or not Sidu, sorry, Absurge actually got a huge value out of his set bonuses. I was a bit worried about Shaman set bonuses and how much value they would be getting. But like right at the end of the game, in that replay where Peekaboo is running around behind the pillar, you could see every time he puts a totem down, that totem casts a chain heal. And like if that chain heal wasn't there, Peekaboo would have died. Like he dropped down like three totems that all healed Peekaboo yeah. while he had zero mana. And the chain heals are actually from the totems are what kept him alive. So um, you know, some set bonuses, like for Holy Priest, you're getting like 30k holy fires. It's pretty crazy for the holy priest to be wearing them but rest of shaman that game definitely got value um with the chain heals from the totem it's nice to see you know some other healers getting flexed here we got to see how they can do uh, in a holy priest world right now uh can absurd stay alive they're on match point they win this they're going to continue on unitas will be eliminated but it's not going to be easy like that was a sweaty grind that was 16 minutes of i'm i'm pre-doing this go you pre-do that go i got this go you got this go no run away run away like that was 16 minutes of intensity like that takes stamina to be able to do that can they do it again here facing unitas a hey, good shutdown there by wiz k using that pandar and rachel right away into a kidney shot but dragon's rest shuts it down both teams playing incredible defensively. A Brew right now going for some big damage on Peekaboo during this kidney shot, but it looks like Gap Surge able to easily heal through that pressure. No crowd control really going to be landing. And now it's up to Golden Guardians to kind of reverse the pressure. There's a dismantle on Peekaboo, but likely a big kidney shot on Aiden soon. And you get it. No Polymorphs coming in from a Brewa. Unitas is really focusing on that hit and run strategy. Throw the kidney shot on Peekaboo and then run away for as long as possible. Just try to stall the goes. And look at this. Now Peekaboo's in another kidney shot before he's able to, able to find his own. This is the Vendetta from Aiden, but it doesn't look like it's going to be accomplishing too much. pre earthen by Absurd once again. Really well done. Yeah, nice uh, pre egg is as well there from Aiden. So both rogues here are going to be completely safe in that situation. Yeah, but it is going to be Aiden actually taking a little bit more pressure the year from Peekaboo who still uh, looking uh, like he needs to wait a long time before he's going to have that Vendetta. 33 more seconds on that big cooldown. Everybody so far having their cooldowns ready to go. And you can tell maybe the players have swapped around a little bit. They're getting a little bit more comfortable with you know, the, the pacing of the matchup. And I like this a lot from the Golden Guardians. Try to target the mage more often. And try to see what you can get down here onto Abrua because uh, ultimately he was the one that fell and he's a big player for this team. Nice Dragon Breath into Sheep onto Absurge. Chris K, can he get it off? Uh, it doesn't look like he's going to go for that Master Spell. And it doesn't look like they can get too much going with it, actually. It's kind of a defensive sheep, almost, because it doesn't really uh, amount to anything. Now they have the Kidney Shot on the Peekaboo, but Absurge is actually out of crowd control. So he actually stun him up there with the Holy Priest, and here comes the Holy Fire. Here comes the damage onto Peekaboo, but no stun anymore. So and the CC and the stuns are kind of just off sync right now for Unitas. Full Fear onto Korlik, and Korlik will break out of that one with the Will of Forsaken. Abrua, once again, going to be the target of choice here, and that's going to be some big cooldowns being traded out for that Vendetta. I think Abrua should be completely fine here with that Ray of Hope, and he will be completely fine there, getting back to full HP. Absturge in a Polymorph. Once again, though, pre earthen while Totem coming out, and a Triple Fear coming out from Korlik here as well. Kidney Shot, though, onto Aiden. Peekaboo should be completely fine here. He's got his feint as well as his ev evasion here in that situation. And now, once again, it's going to be Aiden here on the back foot. The next kidney shot could be lethal. There's the silence on the core lake, and they find it. Aiden realizing the situation he's in. Abru as well with a nice polymorph there on the Peekaboo. Kind of peeling the situation before it happens. Now Peekaboo in a kidney shot. So good, good job here by Unitas stalling out what could be a deadly situation but still abrua not out of the woods yet they don't have the ray of hope yet they don't have that guardian angel yet so abrua is going to need to be a little bit careful here for the next 10 seconds or so this kidney shot could be lethal whiskey is moving in can he find a fear onto poor lake no will of the forsaken if he does but doesn't look like he's going to find it and they are nope. going to swap over to whiskey big damage coming out but that's going to be the uh dispersion being traded out for the combustion of abrua yeah, good calculated trade by WizK here. Only three minutes in. Korlik's half mana, but a Polymorph lands. They are committed to WizK. Can they kill him through the Aegis? It's absorbing so much damage right now, but he's at 40%. He's going to use Quaking Palm on Aiden. Try and slow down some damage. Get some value out of that panda. Just a quick little panda that. Korlik into the silence, but no follow-up. 
Doesn't look like they're gonna get too much damage just yet. Abrua is the main target. Whiskey finally getting some a chance to tear in. That Guardian Spirit is actually getting cut through. This is a surprising amount of damage on Whoa. Abrua right now. It's match point for the Golden Guardians. Unitas facing elimination. Abrua holding on by a thread. Korlik managing to get massive heals into that Ray of Hope and saving the day. Abrua back to full health, but Whiskey is still rolling up. Abru going to blink out of the kidney shot, try and get aggressive, gets corroded after the blink, Absurge behind the pillar, line of sighting mm. crowd control, getting ready with that earthen wall, but Aiden rolls up with a full blind and wraps around the corner to get back onto Wizk. They seem to be pretty committed to Wizk here. I don't think they're getting a sap out of this. They're going to use Chastise Stun on Absurge. Abru trying to get a Ring of Frost around the corner, not finding it just yet. Wizk pre-mass dispelling, anticipating the polymorph. Abru not, is not going to find it. Absurge bunkering down, avoiding the CC, but this split damage from the Golden Guardians is so threatening. They're going after Abru, they're going uh -oh. after Aiden, and Korlik is spending so much mana to heal through this huge amount of damage. Now they're swapping back. Aiden is the target. Wizk is just launching Shadow Volley after Shadow Volley. Huge pressure on the Aiden. Korlik gets fully feared by Wizk. Master Spell attempt gets interrupted by it. Peekaboo's trying to sap, I think, out of the fear here. He gets the sap out oh. of the fear onto Korlik. This could be a trinket before the blind. Abrua getting devastated. Aiden getting devastated right now by the Golden Guardians. Yeah, definitely. A Brewer just blinking out of these stuns, though. But the one thing about going after a Brewer is it makes it a lot more difficult for him to actually get in the face of Absurge and kind of abuse him with those Dragon's Wraths and Polymorph. So Golden Guardian's doing a great job with their strategy adaptation, forcing a Brewer to play very defensive, and that is not what you want as the Fire Mage. Uh, I like their attempt onto WizK, but this just seems to be really taxing the mana of Korlek. He's already down to 10%. Big attempt here onto WizK. This is the Vendetta. Can they get the dispersion? WizK trades out the fade. Should be okay. Potentially gets Garot silenced as well as his Aegis. Right now, Brua into a full stun on that combustion. Beautiful kidney shot. Brua does not have the blink available. So he's going to eat that entire stun. But now switching over to a Peekaboo. As both teams seem to just be hitting multiple targets now. Just, I guess just going after one target was a bit too scripted. Both teams were dealing with it too well. That's why we went so deep into dampening. And now both sides are trying to pressure multiple members, keeping the enemies uh, guessing. Yeah, and this could be a very lethal situation here for Korlik and Abrua. Can they find a sap here? Peekaboo is in a sheep. He gets disarmed. Doesn't look like he will find it. So hey, Korlik sitting through that blind very comfortably here. But earlier, they were able to actually not... Oh, well, now they get the dispersion. I was just about to say, they were able to not uh, get that dispersion with the combustion and the vendetta. But guess what? Now Whiskey had to use it and Combustion and Vendetta Korlick. is coming up. So that could be a very scary uh -oh. situation, but they're swapping over to Korlik. Silence onto him. Can they find any more crowd control? Still has this trinket though, because he did sit through that blind. So if he gets the kidney shot, he could trinket out of it. I think he might have to. He's sitting a full kidney shot right here. Nice Dragon's Breath though. Peeling the situation there by Abrua. Guardian Angel is gonna come through. And now I like this a lot. This is the Golden Guardians that we love to see where they're just swapping around the whole team and you don't really know who they're going to go after next. But I am terrified for Whiskey because that combustion is up. The Vendetta is up. The Earthen Wall Totem just got traded out oh, for that Vendetta. Oh. And that is a massive amount of damage there onto Abrua, blocking the Cauterize and getting the Ice Block there as well. So, and now Abrua blinking out of that Kidney Shot and he still has that combustion. He's going to need to make it count here, Sid. Yeah, Brewer getting uppercutted there, almost knocked out KO on match point. Cauterize and Ice Block out of the way, Guardian Angel out of the way, but surprisingly, Absturge is the one lower on mana. Whiskey with limited options here, how are they going to deal with this Kidney Shot? Absturge puts Healing Tide behind the pillar to disarm Aiden, so he's not able to kill the Healing Tide quickly enough. Whiskey survives another Kidney Shot, silence onto the healer, core like Abrua, the target, trying to blink away to safety with that Soul Shade. Peekaboo in hot pursuit, gets Dragon's Breath away. Polymorph by Abrua attempt here, trying to get Peekaboo off of his back as much as possible. Polymorph onto the Dispel. Getting control of them is going to be important here. Aiden trying to set up. They still need to get through another dispersion. Pre Vampiric Embrace. Korlik getting dispelled out of the Hex. He Shadow Redested as well. Kidney Shot onto Whiskey. It looks like he pre ages this Kidney Shot, but it doesn't even look like it matters. He's getting cut through and cut down right now. 30% health. No CC on the team. They don't want to choke here. They trade dispersion. I'll have to wait and see if that ends up costing them later when they can't use it in a stun lock. Absurge now into a Ring of Frost, but I think Whiskey is doing all right. Counterspelled on Mass Dispel, Quaking Palm onto Aiden, trying to slow down the damage. Void Eruption, but Combustion is going to meet face to face between Whiskey and Abrua. Abrua gets stunned on his Combust. They purge it off. Abrua gets pulled away from the Onslaught. Peekaboo Shadow stepping in to go for the kill, and he does, is not able to find it. The Guardian Spirit of Korlik saves the day, and Korlik, look at his mana. He got so much more mana than Absurge here in game number four. Yeah, blind on Whiskey, and now a big swap on Peekaboo. He's got no Trinket. 
He gets gripped away. This is great pressure from both these sides. I like the adaptations. 21% dampening. Whiskey, no dispersion. They could go after him. Peekaboo incredibly low as well, but this polymorph. Whiskey trying to go for the master spells. It gets kicked there by Aiden. Shut down. Now Peekaboo going for a kidney shot. Instant blink there by a Brua. The polymorphs up. Peekaboo just going for control on the rogue and going after for this stationary target. This is exactly what I was talking about. Absurge has to trade up the Spirit Link totem. Golden Guardians is running out of time, but at the same time, Abrua, there's no Ice Block. There is no Cauterize. It's going to be all up to Korlek, but he is in a stun. Abrua on the run, trying to survive a beautiful Alter Time. Goes for the Dragon Threat, just all out control on a Peekaboo, blinking out of the stun once again, just on the run, allowing his Rogue to basically go on a solo mission. This is still anyone's game, but I feel like Unitas, uh, I, I like their strategy a little bit better. Uh, Brew right Bust. now with the Combustion, just throwing out some damage. Wiz K. It doesn't really have too much as a response. One second here on Dispersion. He's going to trade it out. He's getting really low. Is he going to trade it out? He trades up the fade a bit greedy. Has to trade up Dispersion as well. He has Life Swap. That's the last line of defense for the Golden Guardians. That Life Swap. And uh, Unitas is looking pretty good. A minute here for a Brew as Ice Block. If he gets that back, I would say it's probably game over. Yeah, uh, 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 right now, Whiskey might just go down on that next kidney shot. You need to be careful. He has that uh, void chip, but no trinket. He can find a CC onto Absturge and just kill him in a stun. That's definitely an opportunity for Unitas, but also Korlik has no trinket. There is a Vendetta ready on Peekaboo, but here we go. That's the setup. Whiskey, though, has the Aegis, and he gets the Master Spell there. He should be kind of okay in this situation. No big damage cooldowns coming out, and Korlik, 10 seconds left on his trinket, so I don't think they're going to be swapping over to him. And uh, they're going on Aiden. Point, I think they're gonna just go after Aiden here. No trigger onto and, uh, Aiden. It could kill him in a stun. There's the smoke bomb. Aiden with the pre-Aegis. Nicely done by Aiden there, reading that situation. And now Whiskey could be in a lot of trouble. He has the void shift. He might need to use it as soon as he comes out of this kidney shot. Do they have the damage? That is the question. Aiden still dropping low though. Uh, on the flip side, nice shots that kick there onto Absters. Oh, Aiden with the Guardian cool. Angel. And there's the void shift that we're talking about. Absters now. In a full blind, doesn't want to overlap with his trinket. Peekaboo using his Aegis as well. And Whiskey, this is the target that Maruki was talking about. If they go after the Shadow Priest deep into dampening, it could be such a vulnerable target. Yeah, strategy swap up by Unitas, but mana is even out. Can Whiskey stay alive? Four more seconds to his disperse. He gets counterspelled on his heel. Peekaboo now on the back foot. They're swapping back to Peekaboo. He's going to trade his evasion right away. Has Cloak of Shadows available? He may have to trade it right here. Cloak of Shadows now pop. Peekaboo is left uh, vulnerable at this point. 11 minutes Big. in, but Aiden stunned up. They're going for the win on match point. Peekaboo gets Frost nova He can't catch up to Aiden behind the pillar. Stuck with Whiskey and a Frost Nova. A Brewer with sick peels. He gets a Polymorph on the app search. Now Peekaboo potentially on the back foot. Aiden shadow stepping in. Trying to go for the kill, gets dismantled. He can't stay on target. He's going to go after Whiskey. Whiskey has to disperse. That was the combustion for Abrua, at least. He's going to have that out of the way with a fair trade. But Korlik is drinking in the back line, trying to make sure that he can keep his team stable. If this goes into dampening, Absurge is working with basically nothing. He's trying to sit down for a drink. Absurge, how much mana is he going to get? Abrua moves in. He gets a, a Frost Nova, misses on Absurge. He's getting a couple of ticks of mana. That's a lot better than zero right now for Absurge here on match point. 41% dampening. They're still going after Whiskey. Is he going to be able to hold strong? Pre Earthen Wall Totem on the Chastise. Korlik in position, gets the Psychic Scream. Polymorph on Peekaboo. Aiden going for the kill onto Whiskey. Fade has faded. He's trying to master spell around the corner. That's a full Polymorph. No trinket. Whiskey into the Grote in game number four. Can they finish? Whiskey and go to game number five. Another Polymorph. Aegis activates for Whiskey at below 50% health. He's standing right next to Absturge. In case he needs to Spirit Link Totem here, is he going to have to? The Epony is so high at this point. He's trying to be greedy. He's trying to hold on to it for a setup later on. But look at the dots. Aiden Abrua rotting down Korlik with no mana left. Master Spell slipped through from Whiskey. Now going for Fleshcraft on the Interrupt. He's taking all the Interrupts. Absurd is going to Fleshcraft while there isn't any left. Try and stabilize Whiskey, but the Spearling Totem has already been burned through. He's running out of options. The momentum could potentially be in favor of Unitas here. This could be the game-winning kill right now with Fade available. Maybe not. Whiskey escapes from the Kidney Shot. Staying wow. alive. I can't believe how Aiden. long he's doing. No, Aiden! It. Aiden! He's going to get potted! He's That's in the Seed! It. Is he going to go down in the Seed? Abrua is trying to save the Seed. Spamming Polymorph after Polymorph to save it but it is not enough golden guardians take it and stay alive in the tournament unbelievable i mean that was a fra i've never seen the replay but that was a fraction of a second to getting guardian onto uh aiden instead of the pod so a bit unfortunate there that was a really crazy amount of damage i mean we see it these rogues when they have their vendetta available and they have sepsis from that night fay as well as their shiv the burst damage that a rogue can put out is outrageous and uh, still, these teams are surviving such a long time. So that really speaks highly of the caliber of both of these teams.
So much damage going out, consistent set us, but it's just being blocked over and over. Golden Guardians with a beautiful series here. Absolutely incredible stuff here from both of these teams. I mean, when you look at the replay, look at Whisker right now. It looks like he's dead, but he gets that Aegis, and it's just barely enough defense to keep him alive here. And it's constantly just that one little thing that keep him going. And this is the moment where actually Aiden had to use his trinket. So at this point, you know, the Golden Guardians are just thinking that next skinny shot onto Aiden, we can make something big happen here. Aiden realizing it, tries to pre-faint here as well, but they get the master spells out. Whiskey gets kicked, drops the Fleshcraft, Spirit Link Totem comes out. And, of course, uh, they get the um, combustion still 30 seconds away here for Abrua. That last one was a big factor that, that put them in the situation. And look at Korlik. He's sitting down for a drink, and Whiskey gets kidney shot. Panda racial onto Peekaboo. It's disarmed. They're trying to stall. They're trying to buy some time. And look at that cap totem from Absters. They're sniping Korlik, stopping the drink into the silence. And that's that silence, he trinkets out, but just a fraction of a second too late on that trinket, a Guardian Spirit. And that's going to be, instead of Aiden getting that Guardian Spirit, it's going to be the pod receiving the Guardian Spirit. So not only can he not save the pod, but he also can't save Aiden, of course. And a big old smile from Absturge, realizing that uh, that's over. It looked very, very stressful to be in uh, in this matchup. Yeah, Absurd's definitely pulling out all the stops there. Did a really good job of keeping his team topped off and alive. It, it seemed like... You guys were surprised at the length of time that the, the individual matches were going. Am I right, Ben? I mean, normally when you see RMP versus RPS, it's it's like fast, right? Like you open up, games rarely go into dampening. If they go into dampening, it's like 5% dampening, maybe 10% dampening. Uh, but this game, it was just, there's so much denial. Uh, especially, I mean, one of the things I'm noticing, I don't know if you guys are noticing, but this new Aegis Trinket is insane. Like, it oh. is a very powerful defensive trinket. Basically, every single player has just abandoned the Battlemaster's Trinket, the emblem, and they're all using the Aegis now. So if you can just pre-Aegis a go, uh, like we saw many times, I mean, the situations where Aiden, he's got no Trinket, he's got no Cloak of Shadows, he's for sure dead, but he realizes, okay, Kidding Shot's coming up in a few seconds, let's throw in the Aegis. It's a beautiful preemptive play, but it's going to save him. And that Trinket just consistently saving people in the goes is what, you know, uh, is difficult for these setup comps because teams basically and players have so many tools uh in order to survive i mean they're playing out of their minds but the aegis trinket right now is insane and that's why we've been seeing it basically in every single game from every single player uh in the tournament this weekend yeah and here's our awc companion as well showing aiden's build using that trinket that ven is mentioning so you can get a little a uh, bit of an overview of what exactly it does but is that something then ven that you expect to see quite a lot uh with our melee players with everyone it's not everyone. even just melee players so the, the trinket, um, it, it fully absorbs, like, I think a lot of players expected it to kind of be really, really good into the resonator trinket. So it fully absorbs, like, the cosmic damage from the bomb, the new bomb trinket, the resonator trinket. But it also mitigates a ton of magic damage. And it's not just casters that have ma magic damage. Like, a death knight is going to have magic damage. An assassination rogue is going to have magic damage. Um, a demon hunter is going to have magic damage. A retribution paladin is going to have magic damage. So it just is a really effective trinket into basically all the specs in the game there's a few where it's not like you're, not, you're probably not going to want to use it against a warrior unless he's using condemn but um yeah that's why we're seeing it played basically every series by every player because it works against almost every spec Okay, well, that wraps up our game number one for today. That's elimination round as well. So unfortunately, that is going to be the end of Unitas for cup number one. Golden Guardians are going to be moving on into that lower bracket. So they're going to have a, a pretty long run to go if they want to make it back up to that grand, grand finals. But it seems like they held it together pretty well. I know it's kind of always the question here with Golden Guardians, Zico, of like what kind of season they're going to have. I feel like it really depends uh, just where they are as a team and also where they are within that meta as well because they're kind of they've got some niche, comp niche compositions that they're you know kind of known for um so we'll have to see uh, exactly where they're going to end up here at the end of the the cup on championship sunday but that next up match that we've got going on zico team liquid versus zan chang how are you feeling about this one well i think it's going to be another nail biter um I, I think in general in this lower bracket i mean you just saw unitas you know one of the best teams uh, they really had a nice season uh, last year. Actually, they kind of established themselves as one of the top dogs. And uh, to be honest, their RMP looked very crisp. Unfortunately uh, for them, uh, they're up against the Golden Guardians as well, which, of course, is another one of those uh, really stacked rosters. And then here, of course, again, we're going to have Team Liquid. 
finding themselves in the lower bracket against Zan Cheng, which means, I think, Red Warrior in Chinese. Uh, and yeah. uh, that's most likely what they're going to be playing. And uh, in <laughs> the open goodness. bracket, yeah, you know, they have two Warriors on their rosters from, from what we've been told. So uh, I think uh, uh, Red Warrior is quite uh, strong, actually. And Team Liquid did struggle a little bit with a Red Warrior in that open bracket. So uh, it, it could be another one of those nail-biter series coming up here for sure. You definitely don't want to miss it. Absolutely don't want to miss it. We're going to head to a break. When we come back, it's going to be another elimination round. Team Liquid versus Zan Chang up next. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We are now headed into another elimination round. This time it's going to be Team Liquid versus Zan Chang. And I feel like this is just happening to us over and over and over again. We see these real powerhouse teams in the lower bracket facing elimination. It's, it's definitely odd to see some of these names uh, down there this early on. But I mean, this is a, another series that we're just going to have to get through. And one of them will be going home by the end of this series. It's best of five. And uh, here's a little bit of an overlook as well of the players that we do have in the tournament in the top eight. We've already sent one home. If you're just now tuning in, Unitas got knocked out in that last round. Golden Guardians moved forward. And now it is Team Liquid versus Zon Cheng, as I did say. And Zico, what is the state of Red Warrior right now if we do see it? What's it looking like in the meta? Uh, I think... You know, some people might give me some hate for it, but I think Red Warrior is up there. I think, uh, you know, we see a lot of Rogue Mage, <laughs> a lot of Assassination Rogue and Fire Mage. And yes, I, I would say that's tier one, but I do think Red Warrior does have a place in the meta. But uh, at the same time, we didn't actually see any team running it in Europe. Um, and also, this is there's only one team running it in North America. So 
maybe not as strong as it was last season, but I would still uh, consider it, you know, a, a really strong comp. Hmm. Okay. Do we think that that's something that could beat Team Liquid, team Liquid then, Super Tease? I think it's something that almost any team could struggle with. Uh, Rhett Warrior is a very threatening comp. Uh, does a tremendous amount of burst damage. I'm curious to see what comp Team Liquid come out of the gates here. I saw them practicing yesterday with Windwalker DK, and they were queuing into a lot of Rhett Warriors. They were fighting like Vanguards and Smexen on the ladder, and they were having some success with the Windwalker DK. Um, but they have other options that they've been playing in the open bracket. I think Cedu's been putting a lot of time into the Holy Priest, even though he said on his stream that he felt a little bit shaky in the open bracket uh, on the Holy Priest. So they have a few options. Whereas Zhang Cheng, you know what's coming out. It's going to be Brett Warrior. There's no doubt. And yeah, Team Liquid are going to stay with the composition they played in the open bracket. Windwalker, Fire Mage, Holy Priest. Let's see what Zhang Cheng can get done here with this Rhett Warrior. It's going to be a slugfest. They've got huge amounts of damage available with these burst cooldowns, and so you just got to be ready for it. Yeah, definitely. One of the nice things about Windwalker Monks and their new set bonus is Fist of Fury is really strong, and that's really strong on the cleave. Big burst damage immediately on the Retribution Paladin. KZ Fox He's going to trade out his Trinket. That was Combustion. That was Bone Dust Brew. That was a lot, honestly. Now Trill actually had a bit of trouble trading out his Diffuse Magic as both Clapper and KZ Fox looking to get aggressive on that Rhett Warrior. This is their cooldowns. This is their time to shine. They need to get aggressive, and Team Liquid has to weather this storm, but they already get the Warrior's Trinket. They already get the Red's Trinket, and uh, I feel like Team Liquid, they haven't had to trade too much in these opening stages. Trill could be in some trouble, but he's just kiting around. He realizes, you know, it's not their time just oh. yet, but they are doing a setup here, and they do manage to get the Divine Shield, so great start here for Team Liquid, I'd say, but Trill just might get one shot. Hammer you does do. now on Sidu as he's getting swapped to, forced to trade out his trinket, and this is what's going to happen. Red Warrior just has so much damage. Every one of these stuns is so devastating. Now Sidu's not feeling too safe here. Yeah, and one more setup on that red could potentially be that trinket spearling totem to get a sheep onto Clapper. Sidu, though, going to be the target here. He's going to use that Dwarf Shadows across the map with that, and he should be kind of fine with that now. And now they're looking for that next setup. They have that combustion on Sam I Am, and they're going to rip it. Big damage coming out. That's going to be the Trinket Spirit Link coming out, and that is the last defensive cooldown remaining here. What? Sidu, though, they might just kill him through it. Blessing of Protection coming out here from KZ Fox. Sidu still in a lot of trouble. Ring of Peace coming out here from Trill. Trill doing an excellent job here of killing situations. Spinning oh my. coming out as well onto KZ Fox. Massive damage onto Sidu. Massive damage onto KZ Fox. He gets kicked on that door of Shadow Sidu with big healing as well. Trill with the Vivifies as well. Sam I am killing with that Ring of Frost. Trying to reset that combustion as soon as possible. Slamming up the shifting uh, power and those fireballs. Sidu though could go down in that next time, but also so could KZ Fox. And this might just be it. They get a sheep onto Caprice. Do they have the damage to take down KZ Fox? He's in touch of Death Range. Can they execute it? The fear comes out. And that is going to be 1-0 here for Team Liquid. And you got to love Caprice here, just with a big smile on his face, just taking it on the chin. And uh, it doesn't seem to be too phased here. You can tell these guys are uh, still having fun despite how that first matchup went. And I think that's very important, if you, especially if you're on the losing team. If you have a good mindset like that, you're still able to laugh and, and still, you know, uh, keep your composure and not get too, you know, triggered and tilt. Uh, I think that's very, very nice prospect for that next game. But liquid with a very very clean game one so far yeah good setups under the rat paladin consistent uh they didn't choke there was one point in that game where they really tested cdu on that holy priest like are you ready to bring this into the tournament uh when trill was at like 30 percent and cdu is at 30 percent like that was a real test moment for cdu's holy priest and i think that comes up here in just a moment if if cdu didn't handle this situation as he had he would have gone down this is where we see the trinket spirit link it's combustion it's the spinning crane kick with images it makes a lot of sense to trade those cooldowns he almost dies even through mm -hmm. that with the ascendance from caprice this is a big burst moment for Sam Miami popped off but right here Sidu really gets tested by uh, Clapper and KZ Fox because Trill is getting cleaved Sidu is getting cleaved they have to pick who they're going to go after Sam peels the warrior they proc a root here they peels the ret pally there's no interrupts he casts some heals he moves out of range Trill assists him with vivify like that could have easily been the end of the game there for Sidu he doesn't have any cooldowns to trade uh, but because he was able to survive in that setup, his teammates peeled for him appropriately. They get to this point where they pile off the Shaman and can connect to Holy Fire Mind Games. And if you get Holy Fire and Mind Games off while the healer is CC'd, it's pretty much game over at that point. It's just going to be an unrecoverable amount of damage. So I like that Sidu could flip the switch. He went from defense to offense right at that moment. 
and got the kill. Uh, Trill popping off on the damage meter, as, as would be expected <laughs> from a race to world first uh, raider. Uh, he's, he's coming in clutch for the team as well. And now we're just got to move into game two. Are they going to decide to flip the switch? Is Red Warrior going to focus more on defense, try and stop some crowd control? Uh, or are they just going to keep rushing down the Holy Priest, try and go all in? Um, I'm kind of a fan of just going all in, kind of just hit the dice, see if you can win in three goes on the Priest. Um, if you're fighting a team that you think is going to be able to outskill you in a long game, uh, especially a comp like this, Windwalker Mage can be pretty annoying to kill the Windwalker or the Mage. Uh, staying on either target is difficult. So I'm kind of on the side of the fence of just kind of go throw down the gauntlet, test see do uh, in these games in Russia. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's what I would like to see. Hey, real quick, since you were talking about um, raiding here, Super Tease, I if for those of you that don't know right now, I'm at the, the, the Race World First venue with Liquid, so I actually got to see Trill like head to the airport yesterday because he, you know, as you guys know, he was he was in the raid and then he had to go home to make it home in time for the AWC. Um, so that's just like, it's just crazy to me how he's been balancing both of that. So basically his plan is he's going to compete here in the AWC this weekend and then as soon as he <laughs> gets done with that, like Sunday night, he's going to hop back into the raid and, and get back on mythic progression so dude's just a powerhouse is he gonna fly back <laughs> That's no i think he's gonna finish off um from home yeah trill trill is just he, he's a different beast <laughs> when it comes to world of warcraft that's for sure but uh yeah once again bringing it on this windwalker monk really solid plays and I, I think this is a great answer when you think about compositions that are good in the cleave the windwalker monk and the fire mage both pretty durable the monk uh very kind of evasive and if you do get caught in stuns you have the fire mage to kind of back you up because that is a scary thing on the monk is uh if you get caught in a stun and you don't have anyone to peel for you you can get dropped really fast but if you have sam i am just you know shimmering in and throwing in a dragon's breath you're likely going to live and then you can do this kind of rinse repeat setup so i think super Tease is onto something uh, instead of trying to go after the monk instead of going after the mage these very durable uh targets into your composition you just go straight for Sidu, uh see what he can do um because at this point yeah. i mean I feel like the Vet Warrior doesn't really have many other options. It's just like when you have one composition, teams know exactly what you're going to be playing. They can prepare for it. And this is, I think, a pretty solid answer. So go to hook point, target CD yeah. from start to finish, and uh, let the chips fall where they may, I guess. You know, I like this. I really like this team, uh, Zan Chang. They're just, they, they look like they're having fun. They're just smiling. They're playing that melee cleave. They're going to hook point. And I, I, I'm a big fan of their warrior as well. Like, imagine you make a warrior and you name it Clapper, and you just play Red Warrior and you just run at CD. I mean, that's this this guy. You know, ten out of ten, straight up, ten out of ten. And now I just want to see them exactly what you guys are talking about. Just run at CD the entirety of the game because it looked good. They almost had him there at one point, uh, but they did waste a little bit of time onto Trail. But the game is live. Caprice looking for the hex there on Sam. I am buying a little bit of time. KZ Fox going to be caught up in the leg sweep doing decent damage here but now they're going to connect on Sidu. hammer of justice immediately here big damage on the Sidu. he's choosing to sit through it a little bit greedy there but oh. the egg is coming through and that ring of peace is actually going to allow him to hold his trinket there so Sidu with nice preemptive place here realizing exactly what zan cheng wants to do here and now once again liquid looking for the attack Oh, fear comes out from Clapper, peeling the team for a moment. Sidu's going to fly up into the air. Divine Ascension, holy fire from the skies, raining death from above here, <laughs> trying to get out some pressure. But he's going to touch ground soon, and he's gonna, eating a hammer of justice as soon as he lands. Not a warm welcome for Sidu after the Sidu <laughs> Airlines. They're just going to keep going after him. KZ Fox gets sent up. Trill getting cleaved out of nowhere. Suddenly a half his health is chunked away. KZ Fox retreating back to the pillar, not going all in. While his shaman is in a polymorph, he's line of sighting, trying to heal while Clapper goes for the kill. Fleshcraft on the kick there. Nice play by KZ Fox. He soaks all the kicks. They can get a full hex onto the mage now. Capri sees that. Sam I am blinks the hex behind the pillar. Nice blink. He's going to sit like a 10 second hex with that trinket he's wearing. So if Caprice gets this, it could be dangerous. He goes for it. He gets Dragon's Breath on it. Sam I am avoiding these hexes expertly, but Sidu now into the Hammer of Justice. Caprice gets stacked up for a triple leg sweep. That's devastating. Massive damage. Oh! That's it. Poor KZ Fox, Clapper, KZ Fox just getting smacked out there. Big mistake stacking up. Team Liquid are going to punish. Wow. I mean, that was a beautiful setup. I, I love <laughs> I love that Sam actually gets the full crowd control, and Trill says, yeah, I don't care about that. <laughs> Spinning crane kick, just one taps him, breaks the polymorph, doesn't even matter. Uh, so, yeah, probably a bit unexpected, that amount of burst there. It's interesting. I kind of thought, I anticipated with, like, the four set bonus and stuff like that, that... 
Uh, maybe it'll change with the double legendary. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but I thought more monks would go over and play Kyrian and kind of rely on that Fist of Fury damage, but it still seems like Trill and then a lot of other monks too. They're just, uh, they're still going with the Necrolord. They're going with the Bone Dust Brew. They're going with the big Spin and Crane Kicks. And uh, I mean, we're going to see the amount of burst damage that it is able to put out in this game near the end. Yeah, I mean, this was just crazy. Uh, this is the, you know, Sea Dew Airlines uh, having a bit of a rocky landing right there, but it does recover. They get the sheep, they get the damage. Uh, KZ Fox immediately trinkets out. And, you know, at the end of this one, they still, if you look at the right side of the screen, you can see Capri still has Trinket Spirit Link. KZ Fox still has his uh, bubble. He still has, you know, his blessing of protection. They still have cooldowns. So, and right now, it's going on a meta game here between Sam I Am and Caprice. You see Caprice trying to hex him. Sam I Am blinks around the pillar, and he resets his blink with that shifting power. Caprice looking for the hex. He gets a Night Fae, Blink, Dragon's Breath, and then uh, Caprice once again here getting a Ring of Frost. He gets Leg Sweep, and this is the moment here where Rook is talking about full ring and spinning crank just coming out. Trills is like, yeah, I don't care about that. Right now, I am parsing, bro. I just did 300-something pulls on Mythic Calandras. It's time to do damn. And, uh, I mean, you can see it there on the uh, on the scoreboard, through topping that one. And uh, not su very surprising here, uh, as he is, uh, you know, that Windwalker monk. Just absolutely clapping KZ Fox in that one. They actually have two warriors on their team. I wonder if they just bring an ace now. <laughs> he gets a little show, a little airtime, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they already tried Clapper. Now bringing an Ace, the second warrior on their roster. Maybe they go for some double warrior plays. Like, I don't know. I wonder how Fury would do too. I, I, I kind of wonder. I mean, they're not going after the warrior whatsoever. And it seems like a lot of the high end warriors in Europe are opting to play Fury. I, I think we even saw Mez play Fury so far yeah. in the tournament. So I wonder if Fury Rat Warrior would just be uh, scary and if they're willing to try that at all. Nope. Uh, they're not going to, but <laughs> I was thinking about it too. Um, the main problem with Fury is if you ever get reset, like you lose all of your momentum. So if you get sheeped one time, you're going to lose all the damage that you built up for like the last 10 seconds. All your haste stacks, all your mortal wounds effects are just going to fall off. It seems like ARMS is still kind of good, I, I think, in Ret Warrior as an option because it also lets you swap. Fury Warrior has a tough time switching targets because you, again, lose mm. everything you've stacked up if you switch targets. You have to stay on one target to maintain your buffs. Arms Warrior doesn't care. They're just like, I can MS that guy. All right, let's go. Let's hit the monk instead and still maintain all of their damage. And I think that's the reason why I think Arms and Fury is still, you can flex between the two. Kind of just depends on what your strategy is. Although here, they're not really swapping very much. Like, c is getting truck down the whole game um we have to wait and see uh, again there that at the end of that game could have gone totally different if caprice gets the hex on sam like he doesn't blink behind the pillar he doesn't bait him to run into the middle of the map and then triple leg sweep them like if caprice doesn't get he kind of got owned by sam to be honest right there like sam knew exactly how they yeah. could lose and stopped caprice from that happening and then baited him into that situation but if caprice gets the hex cdu's probably just dead on the ground instead or sam has to block it and then the next hex could win the game so as long as they're aware of the leg sweeps, they don't get baited to stack up together. Like they can still crush Sidu. Like this is a, this is still a very scary comp with the Ret Warrior. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, again, Dalaran sewers. You know they're gonna pick that small map, and uh, potentially we're gonna see them go after Sidu again. And you know there was a lot. There was a surprising amount of burst damage in that last game. They still had cooldowns to trade. So I don't think we've seen the, the full matchup here. Uh, you know to its potential, but. Uh, it, it does look like Liquid is kind of favored, and uh, it's also nice to see because this is the first showing that we actually see from, you know, Sidu, uh, Trill, and Mez, and, and, and Trill, uh, and Sam, of course, uh, from uh, Team Liquid, or under the Liquid banner, rather. Uh, these are, you know, they're, uh, of course, they played in the offline games, but this is the first time we actually see them on broadcast, so uh, it's kind of nice to see, you know, they're repping their new sponsor, and they want to, you know, make a good first impression here, and, uh, you know, try to grab as many points as they can here in the first cup. They're only one game away from doing it. Two to zero. Zan Cheng's map pick. He's potentially going to be the target of choice. Gates oh, are open. No. Full sheep. And this is not looking good for KZ Fox right now. Immediate punish here. Instant. Uh, actually, doesn't actually have to use too much. Clapper trading out his trinket there to feel that situation. But now, looking to get aggressive here onto Sidu. 
Yeah, Avenging Wrath is up. Big cracks of damage up from KZ Fox. Clapper trying to stay on target here, but that Ring of Peace, Whoa. which is invisible to us, I think, is bouncing KZ Fox away. He's going to duck for cover downstairs, not go all in and just attack Trill and potentially play a more conservative game this time around, not just kind of YOLO at Sidu. And they may, they may want to try that out, right? Like, this is match point. The all in has not been working. So KZ Fox playing a little bit more defensively here, trying to stay back with his healer, not overextend with Trill. Trill's just going after Clapper instead. Now rolling to swap back to KZ Fox. Fox, getting ready for the next setup. See the door of shadows back behind the pillar. Hammer justice swap over to Sam. It looks like huge crush of damage over onto Sam, punishing that trinket because every stun is going to be so long. And if he's not playing blink stun, which it looks like I don't think he is, they could definitely punish that trinket on the mage. But in the meantime, triple fear by Sidu, setting up the team for devastation. Oh. Master spell gets interrupted by KZ Fox. That divine shield needs to sit. Clapper has to trade die by the sword in the swap to him. As he is dismantled, Divine Shield is over. They're getting crushed. They swap back to Trill, trying to take him out. Seraphim going to proc here for KZ Fox. Try and get some damage with the base Fist of Fury. He can't get there. He's trying to retreat with the Blessing of Freedom, but I don't know if he's going to be able to make it out alive. He's trying to go aggressive here onto Sam, but he gets Ring of Peace away and blasted down. Caprice goes for a big heal. Trinket, Spirit Link Totem onto the whole team, but that's pretty much every defensive cooldown from the side of Zan Cheng. They are on match point, facing elimination. Team Liquid looking so good, so fluid in this first series of the day are they going to be able to go all of the way they are just rushing down their opponents trill needs to be a bit careful rolling away from the cleave kz fox freedoming chasing after him fleshcraft seed launches himself into the air at the boxes no crowd control on him at the moment but now they're ready. Hammers down. Stun onto Trill. KZ Fox trying to avoid the leg sweep. Just dodging away from Trill. But the leg sweep is going to land. Clapper is owning oh. Trill though. In the meantime, fearing him on that spinning crane kick. Trill is Trill dying at the moment. Is Trill going to go down? KZ Fox at half health. Trill at half health. Who's going to fall first? Spinning crane kick after spinning crane kick. Trill's going for the kill. But he can't stay on target. He's getting blended by the Rat Warrior. Oh, He's going to get dropped. And Zan Chang are not going to be clean swept. I, I, when we see the replay, there's going to be so many moments for c where he's like, please, you're lining me. Stop, Trill. And I was like, no, I'm going for it. I feel like there had to be some miscommunications there because c had, I think, one second on his Guardian Spirit. I feel like if Trill had just played it a little safer, that game was as good as over. But Zhang Chang, they are going to really punish that aggression. Get on Trill. He's going to play over aggressive. Well, uh, guess what? We're going to remind you we're Rhett Warrior. And uh, that's exactly what happened, putting a point on the board. And uh, now the series gets interesting. Yeah, because this is kind of how a reverse sweep can, can happen, you know, but uh, let's not kid ourselves. We're probably going to a larger map. The map definitely allows Zan Cheng here to get a lot of uptime. But I mean, look at this moment here. Uh, KZ Fox just permanent. You never see this guy on actually high HP. He's just permanently dying. They're going after Sam. They're just trying to hit whatever they can. Those spinning crane kicks just devastating. KZ Fox, Fist of Fury doing tons of damage as well. And Clapper as well, getting absolutely destroyed there for a second, but he will survive as well. And then at this point, you know, Zan Cheng actually, uh, they're looking kind of good. They're like, okay, we got our HP back. We got the wings uh, active. Let's go after Trill here. We, they kick the Fleshcraft, actually very fast kick right there. And then this is, the, I think, the moment that Venruki's talking about where they hard see you, they go after Trill, and Trill is gonna start hiding a little bit out of line of sight. And they get aggressive here, Trill, hoping the touch of Karma, they blessing of protection to remove it. Trill gets topped off here, right here. Uh, somewhat, it's and lining. then here he's lining c -Doo, lining c -Doo, lining c -Doo, just She's trying like, to pass Please. on him. And then he comes back, and uh, here is just massive damage coming in there. And, uh, yeah, uh, Liquid, uh, they're going to be humbled a little bit there. Zan Cheng still showing, you know, uh, they're here to play. And I, I love Caprice. Uh, uh, he's so happy, so excited. You know, this is, these are players I don't think we've ever seen in the AWC, so it's nice to see some new blood in here and uh, to see, you know, how much fun they're actually having. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, and taking a point off Team Liquid, like, at least if you go out of the tournament, you can still say, hey, I killed Trill. Like, what have you done? <laughs> what have you done in WoW? I took a game off Team Liquid, and so uh, potentially going to reverse sweep. It's not even just a game here. They, they're really putting the pressure on. We're likely going to, yeah, Ashamane's Fall, a really big map. They're not subbing out their warrior. Maybe I was thinking, like, maybe Ace is the defense warrior or something. He didn't pick him on the big maps. And, like, Clapper's the aggressive warrior. warrier. Yeah, he's the definite. Like, some warriors that have play styles like that. Some warriors are just all yeah. aggro, others defense. Maybe that's the reason they have two warriors on the team. I don't know. It seems like Clapper is not going to be substituted out here. Still on match point. Team Liquid, though, are unfazed. They are not going to be changing their composition, uh, sticking with Sam, I am, Cho, and Sidu. And I think they're just going to be 
um, a little bit less overconfident in their ability to just close this out. I can imagine they're thinking like, oh, we're just rolling this team. Like, I'm, I'm just going to go in. I'm Karma Diffuse. I'm just going to kill them. Spinning Crane Kick and then, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> gotta gotta <laughs> respect this a little bit. Gotta turn around. Okay. Oh, okay. It's over. Uh, and I think if they give them full respect that Sam I am and Trill should be able to close this out, it's going to kind of be up to Caprice and and Zen Chang to be able to get aggressive, find the hexes on the mage, uh, and get the setups. I like that they're going after Trill more uh, and switching between Sidu and Trill, switching targets so it's less predictable and just lobbing out these massive hits and crits onto whoever they can get to. Uh, and that's gonna what is what allowed them victory and what could allow them victory moving moving forward. But this is a very big map, and if Team Liquid just play the most defensive game they've played, it's gonna be really tough for Zen Chang to connect. Yeah, what? Definitely. Cedar's just running in. Yeah, well, this is what they do. They get the Chastise, they get the Stun on the Warrior into a Mind Control, a Dragon's Breath Sheep onto the uh, Shaman, and then an in cap into a Stun. So that's kind of the 3 2 1 setup of Team Liquid. But all oh, cooldowns coming in from Zhang Chang. Let's see what they can get down there going after Trill once again. They took him down in the last game. Can Ooh. they do Ooh. it again? Big War Stomp on the Fist of Fury, denying that Turbo Fist parry. Now Trill, they're just full defense. Team Liquid is not messing around on the cooldowns of Zhang Chang once again. Run across the map, port across the map, flying serpent kick across the map. Trill's on the run, paralyzed. He does not want any of this Red Warrior action. Nice flush crap there by Caprice, but he gets interrupted into a fear. Let's see what they can get done. Caprice not in crowd control right now. Should be able to keep his Retribution Paladin alive as the Red and Warrior Clapper going to be reconnecting onto Trill, who's still just having to play very defensive here. Yeah, and they're trying to reset that combustion. That next combustion could be deadly. But right now, I'm a little bit worried for Trill, and he's going to activate that Aegis. Should be okay. And now here comes the big setup. Chamayam, Dragon's Breath into full shape. KZ Fox, how are you going to respond? Immediate Divine Shield coming out from KZ Fox. He does not want to be anywhere near that. But look at Trill. He still has his Bone Dust. He still has a lot of damage here with his images as well ready. That next uh, stun potentially has his Leg Sweep as well. So Trill could do a lot of work here. Titan right now, though, he could be in trouble. Sam I am in a full hex right now. Uh, Trill, what is he going to do? Sea Dew Airlines yeah. taking off there. And there's the leg sweep trinket counter stun, though, coming out from KZ Fox. And with that trinket, they're just immediately going to reset once again. No real offense committed there. And I am very scared right now for KZ Fox. That next stun could potentially be lights out. They're going to have to trade out the trinket link here. Full fear secured. No tremor totem available here. Sam I am potentially looking for the polymorph as well. Not able to find it. Nice defensive fear here by Clapper. And they are going to find the fear on those images. But now finally the spinning crane kicks connecting here. Disarm onto Clapper. It's a bit of a race. And now oh. KZ Fox might just go down nicely done there. Trinket oh, really comes the out. They snipe the link and they keep up the damage. Nice ascendance coming out from Caprice as well. And that should be enough to keep KZ Fox alive. And that was most of the offense. And now Sidu getting swapped to here as well. He's going to use this uh, fade here, trying to get away. Yeah. Sidu just getting absolutely clapped right now, getting destroyed. But he's going to use that Guardian Angel. Should be enough to keep him alive right now. Do they have an intro for the Door of Shadows? It doesn't look like it. And CD will reposition, but this is anybody's game right now. Yeah, Trill ports behind the pillar. Nothing left for CD here with no trinket. Or sorry, his trinket left to make a trade here. Trill has defused, but that might not be too powerful into the warrior. KZ Fox is worried about pushing, though. There's no trinket for him, no trinket for his healer. This could be the Leg Sweep winning game. Will he be able to secure it? Leg Sweep Dragon's Breath Polymorph kills the grounding totem. Full sheep found. KZ Fox trades out the Aegis. Clapper intervenes over, pops the duel to reduce some damage onto his rep pound. And Clapper carrying on this setup right now. And KZ Z Fox has a wings up. He's trying to get some pressure going over on the trail, but Mind Games, Mind Games is gonna connect. KZ Fox can't heal himself. He's behind the pillar waiting for Caprice to come out of crowd control. Mind Games still up for another second. He can't heal. Finally, Mind Games over. Word of Glory is coming through. Caprice trying to pick him up, but the damage is so high. The damage is overwhelming. And Team Liquid take it 3-1. That was a great push there by Team Liquid at the end. Clapper did a great job, honestly, defensively in this game. He was always there with his trinket to get the intervenes. Had a really nice duels and fears. Uh, honestly, really well played. But at the end, it was just overwhelming damage. Sidu and Sam in a position where they could basically just blast off, uh, free casting. And unfortunately for Caprice, he didn't really have too many healing cooldowns. They just got completely overwhelmed. Couldn't really connect. It was a nice ring of peace there by Trill just to add insult to injury. Really great series. Uh, nice to see Zhang Chang kind of uh, step up. First time in that top eight. Great to see him play. Uh, but it is going to be Team Liquid who does advance three to one, staying alive in that lower bracket. Yeah, it's just a really tough opponent, tough matchup. And you can tell, uh, you know, on the larger maps where Trill has a lot of, you know, momentum to move around, it's just really tough for him to uh, actually take him down. Uh, but still, Zhang Chang definitely uh, gained himself some new fans here. And. Uh, 
can see in the replay here exactly how they made it happen. Uh, you can see already they're in a checkmate position when you just look at the cooldowns here. KZ Fox has nothing. Uh, Caprice, no trinket, Spirit Link. And Sam I am uh, working towards that combustion. Bone Dust Brew is active. They get the Dragon Spread, the Sheep, kill off the Granny Totem there. Nicely done by Sam I am. And then here, of course, have the Aegis coming out here from KZ Fox, who's going to have that big, big shield. And of course, uh, still, they continue the chain. They get the DR Fear. And I'm just surprised at how much damage they have. They get the Mind Games there. Barely KZ Fox, not going to be making it around that pillar to avoid it. And just a surprising amount of damage. Usually when uh, you're in this situation where there's no more CC on the healer, uh, KZ Fox should be fine, but just an overwhelming amount of damage coming out from uh, Seedew, Sam I Am, Trill, and, uh, you know, Team Liquid just looking hydrated right now. Ha ha ha. Good one. Had to do it. How long were you thinking about that one? No. He started thinking about it as soon as he stole it from Sid. <laughs> what? No, he said fluid. I said fluid. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot steal. I don't steal then, okay? I innovate. <laughs> wow. I was kidding. Okay. Well, um, either way, um, regardless, they will be going on into the lower bracket, and that unfortunately is going to be the end of Son Chang. But I mean, really cool, though, that they at least got to, uh, you know, get one game off of Team Liquid, because like Super Tease, I think they were saying, like, hey, we, you know, I killed, I killed Trill, which is a, an accomplishment nonetheless. So hopefully they do return for the AWC Cup number two. Do you think that this is a team that has potential, Sid? I mean, Rhett Warrior can't, can't count out. I think this is the team that sent Golden Guardians actually to the lower bracket. Very Golden true. Guardians are actually probably pretty happy that Team Liquid got rid of them. <laughs> yes. So they don't, they don't have to worry about them potentially in the future. Um, so yeah, that, that, I mean, that team has already kind of got an impressive resume from their cup one performance. Hope they come back into cup two and kind of just zug it out, you know, just sometimes you got to work it out with each other. Sometimes you got to zug it out. Rhett Warrior is definitely one of those uh, compositions. Uh, just go back to the ladder, keep grinding out some games and see what you can do, right? Because you got multiple cups to earn points to qualify. They're not out of it just yet. Had a great run. Uh, we're looking at the upper bracket now. We got three and a half men and I think we got Nova. So we got the RMP showdown. Um, these are kind of two really top dog RMPs when it comes to the ladder. Um, we haven't really gotten a chance to see them show what they've got in a tournament setting which is what I'm interested to see. It's like, it's one thing to perform on the ladder, but when you're in a tournament, the pressure's on, you're getting watched by a lot of people. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a different environment. So can they adjust to that uh, and perform as well as they do on the ladder? Because if they do, these are the types of the teams that are looking like, you know, when Peekaboo started out, right? Like they were kind of like, the, uh, these are the new, the new seasoned generation uh, yeah. of WoW Arena players that this is their chance. Yeah, well, I mean, speaking of new generation, I did message some players from Three and a Half Men during those games, and I was curious about what Three and a Half Men meant. Um, and I got two different answers. I got one from Nuked, and it said he said that that's it's because Calvish is 16. And then I got an answer from Calvish, and he said it's because Nuked is short. So I don't really know, <laughs> don't really know the exact answer there. Um, but it does sound like we, you know, to your point, Super Tees, we do have some newcomers with this team um, and with both of these teams, really. So I, I think it's really cool that not only we're getting a, a new generation generation players um, like we saw previously with you know the peekaboos uh, of the world and, and now we're just getting lots of newcomers lots of not so much newcomers to to the ladder like you were saying Sid but newcomers to competition so I am curious of uh, you know of how you're gonna how they are gonna adjust Venriki do you remember your first game on on a live tournament uh yeah uh, how'd it go? I do I think we lost maybe we won it was in MLG Orlando. This is my first oh. live tournament, 2008. So, I, we, wow. I don't think we, I think we made like top five or something like that, top six. It, it wasn't the best showing, but it, it was a lot of fun. And it definitely felt a lot of pressure. I mean, it's a little bit different than this because, I mean, these guys get to play from the comfort of their own home as opposed to, you know, uh, at a LAN event, no add ons and stuff. But right. still, I mean, when everybody's watching you, the pressure's on. You definitely have to kind of rise to the occasion. I think the one benefit a lot of these players have is a lot of them stream. So they're already being watched. So it's kind of like it's just another day in the in the office for these guys. And I expect some really top tier gameplay from both these two squads. Yeah, well, we'll see if we get that top tier gameplay. We're going to head to a break when we come back. It's going to be the upper bracket coming up next.
Welcome back, everyone. We are now in the upper bracket. It is three and a half men versus Novos. Novos, game number one. Ooh, big RMP mirrors here in the upper bracket from the newcomers. Have to see who ends up pulling out ahead. I, I feel like if, if I had to guess which team is slightly favored here, I would say three and a half men, but uh, we'll have to see. I mean, both these teams have not dropped a game so far, or not dropped a series so far in this tournament. Calvish going to be moving forward, lands the sap onto Whaler. Who is he going to open on? Just trying to slow down the priest in the opener, potentially Ooh. going after him. Uh, both sides playing forward. Calvish gets knocked out into a dragon's with immediate dispel and a vanish. Does not want to get opened up on by Polymore. Uh, looks like this is crazy. I mean, beautiful preemptive plays here. Calvish, before he can even open, gets dismantled. So far, three and a half men have not been able to get anything going. Yeah, beautiful stuff right now, and so far kind of a slow opener. Kiddish are coming out onto Whaler, and they find any crowd control. They get a DR fear. Can they find a sheep as well? Doesn't look like they will find it, and that is going to be actually two sub rogues in this mirror. So we've been seeing a lot of assassination, but in the RMP mirror, both rogues opting to play that sub spec. I was going to be playing that orc male as well. Blind here onto uh, Kearney. And we're going to see if they can follow oh. that up with anything more. They get a sap onto Palu, and it doesn't look like they're actually going to get anything going here. Finally, now they're going to connect here onto the Rogue. Resonator has been dropped. The bomb has been planted. Can they get any damage, though? It doesn't look like they can force out any trinkets just yet. And both teams so far kind of predicting each other's moves. And it's resulting in a little bit of a slower opener than you would expect in an RMP mirror. And finally, uh, Palu more going to go for the smoke bomb play here onto Nuked. But it doesn't look like Nuke is going to be too faced from that. He's just going to walk it off. And, and once again, Kalvish is doing a great job hiding here while his priest is in that CC chain. Yeah, Kalvish totally shut that down. Dismantled the rogue. Cheap shot. Now swapping onto Palomar. Gets the oh. trinket on this setup. Trinket Cloak of Shadows. Palomar in a lot of trouble moving forward here. Smoke Bomb still available from Kalvish. He could just get completely destroyed in the next stun lock. But in the meantime, Dopamine's Combustion is available. Who's going after? Kearney, the Holy Priest. Swap to the healer. Palomar intercepting. Double Fear by Whaler. Trying to set up for the kill here. But Kalvish now getting swapped to. Huge pressure coming out cloak of shadows on one percent is cheat death gonna proc evasion activates kearney is still cc calvish trying to assist shadow step kick now trying to go for the kill on to palomar can they end the game here no trinket on to palomar kearney going for the mind games holy fire massive damage proccing the guardian spirit cheap shot on the whaler into a polymorph and that's it three and a half men with the turnaround taking game number one yeah very back and forth i mean we saw such great plays from basically start to finish in this one ultimately is going to be three and a half men who pull out ahead in this game number one but you kind of get the feeling after watching these games that this is a series that could go very back and forth um, but yeah some beautiful plays here it's interesting Kalvish is actually playing that sheet f and yeah. it ended up saving him it's not like I, i'm trying to think when was the last time we actually saw sheet f even selected as talent even here in this matchup, Palomar was opting for that elusiveness with the feint, uh, whereas Calvis actually, that cheat death, did end up saving him, whereas uh, I don't think feint, uh, I mean, feint is great, but I don't think it actually ended up saving Palomar, so maybe a little bit more experience in the matchup, or maybe I uh, just got lucky there with that cheat death, because sometimes it uh, it's not the most reliable talent, but here uh, is the replay. They force out the trinket of Palomar right here uh, with that CC chain onto Waylor. Beautifully uh, done there, and then they go after Nuke here. I think uh, this is where they pull the trigger. Uh, did they actually pull the trigger already on that smoke bomb uh, onto the mage? And then they go for that kidney shot onto Kearney. They're looking for that priest swap, but they get shut down and they get feared here as well. And then they go after Calvish. This is where the sheet death procs. And here he gets that look at that. He's basically dead here, but that crimson vial and that cloak of shadows is enough to stabilize him. They get a kick onto Waylor, into a cheap shot, into a kidney shot onto Palomar, into a sheep onto Waylor into uh, that guardian angel but the mind games connect the holy fire connects sheep truck on the trinket into a dr sheep and nuke able to take him out there right at the end so really really nice uh cc chain there nice <laughs> sheep shot as well on the trinket there by kalish it's really funny i actually remember this i remember a, a tweet that kalish sent out and he said cheat death in rogue mage x mirror equals insecure and now here he is right <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. There's got to call that out a little bit. I want to go look but it, for that tweet. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not having I mean, to have it here right in front of me. Uh, that's literally what it was. It's just it, it, it's funny because I do feel like cheap death. I mean, it's got to get a lot of value if you're dying in stun locks, it, unless you like preemptively fade. If you preemptively fade, then it, it's going to be great. But no, sometimes it can be hard to do that, especially if you're getting kind of preed 
in the go if you're getting like dragon's breath or something like that or you're getting feared uh then chi death could be the only thing that does save you and that's what we saw so yeah, little, it's interesting to see the, the talent differences. Uh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you are interested in checking out the talents and the builds of all these players, you can check it out at awc.gcd.tv, um, especially with you know some of the new builds in this patch. Uh, it's great to see uh, you know exactly what some of the best players are running, what they're experimenting with, and how they approach different matchups. Yeah, I'm excited to see. Like, there's some pretty significant differences in build that game, um, the cheat death, but also Calvish pre fainted that go. I actually kind of wonder, even if he wasn't cheat death, if he would have lived that with pre faint anyways. Um, I think what he's worried about is getting shadowy duel one shot and not being able to pre faint it, so that will keep him alive during the shadowy duel if he trinkets something else earlier on. Maybe he's expecting the other team to be like over aggressive and and try and do like this commitment all in, so he wants that as a counter, a safety net. Uh, maybe that's what he means by it's insecure because you, you're, you're basically saying you're not going to predict <laughs> the all in. It's just going to save you. Um, we'll have to wait and see. The opener looked really, uh, honestly, kind of scuffed from both teams. It seemed like they didn't know exactly what they <laughs> wanted to do. It was like, are we going to Holy Priest? Because that looked like they wanted to. And then they got pulled out of stealth. And it's like, maybe we should go rogue. Maybe that's too risky. Like It's like both teams were hesitating on what they wanted to do right off the bat. After it got started, it became more clear. Like, okay, we're going to do a rogue race. Um, but I, I would like to see. It looks like uh, Palomar is not flexing just yet. Let's see if the, it updates at all to see if Cheat Death appears there. But Calvish still has it. Uh, and the Holy Priest is actually, I think, a great target at points in this game. It's a big map. Both rogues have the Holy Ward, so they're going to be immune to each other's cheap shots right off the bat. Mm. Trying to assist with that early crowd control, waiting for the mages in Viz. Here's see where they go here. Both teams playing Horde, wanting that Orc. Uh, racial to reduce the stun locks. If you don't have that, it's going to be pretty devastating. Oh, right on top of each other. How did they not see each other right there in oh, stealth? Wow. Uh, Whaler on his mount in midfield. Maybe he's baiting uh, right now for, oh. for someone to go for something. Oh, Calvish oh. is right there. No way. What? Right now? There's no way. Stab on Palomar. He gets Holy Word and they get pulled out of stealth. Oh, but Palomar gets the first stun. Dragon's Breath intercepts it on the smoke bomb. It might be enough. That Dragon's Breath was really sick by Nuke. Now they turn it around on a Palomar. They're going to grip him, try and stabilize, but Trinket Cloak has been blown through. Whaler had to use Will of Forsaken. That's a huge advantage to three and a half men, despite the fact that Nova's got the first stun. Yeah, absolutely insane. Right now, swapping over to Kearney. Keep in mind, Whaler, he does not have a trinket for another 13 seconds. He used his will of the Forsaken. So there's kind of a checkmate situation. There it is. Full blind resonators. on Whaler. Big damage on Polymor. Lots of resonators. But it looks like Polymor is actually going to be able to survive. There is a gap in the stun. Calvish now swapping over to Dopamine, putting a bunch of damage out on him. Can they force more of this Polymorph on Whaler? He does not want to have to trade his trinket. To keep Dopamine alive. And it looks like almost will be able to stabilize. But they need to get something going fast. And Calvish is in stealth. So that's going to be very difficult. Yeah, and these Holy Wards are actually really nice as well. Uh, priests are actually using them on the rogues here, so uh, it's going to allow them to maybe get that CC chain. Cheap shot, no Holy Morph to follow it up, though. It doesn't Ooh. look like it just yet. They get a kidney shot, smoke bomb here. Nuked is there, connecting with the damage dopamine. Looking for the Dragon's Breath potentially here. Doesn't look like he's going to be finding it. And Kalvish now caught up in that uh, Sheep Shot as well. Disarm coming out here onto Holy Morph. Sheep Shot onto Wailer. Can they find any card control onto Wailer? Doesn't look like he'll, oh, they will the be blind. able to. And uh, unfortunately, that blind is super DR'd right there, coming out from Polymore. So they're not going to have that to kind of set up the tails here, going after Nukes here with the kidney shot. And uh, it looks like Polymore is kind of deviating a little bit from that rogue race. Nice grip there by Kearney. And uh, onto Kalvish there, going to make him nice and safe. Spells get into Dragon's Breath. Sheep, double Dragon's Breath. Kalvish is in position. This is a scary setup here. Onto Polymore. No trinket on That's him. It. Sheep shot. And that is going to be it. Clean setup there. And Nuke actually leading the charge now. Um, I, I'm not sure if he actually did spell steal the Holy War there, but I, I think that's exactly what happened there. He spell stole it, got the Dragon's Breath on two members, and that of course gives Kavish plenty of time as well to make his way to that target, and uh, they just get that Dragon's Breath sheep and connect with that two finish shot. Yeah, when it comes to the rogue race here, three and a half men looking like they're going to outmatch Novus. Curious to see how Novus want to respond in the rest of the series. Like, I was looking at the opener like, wow, they got the first stun on Calvish. Like, that's going to be devastating. But then Nuke just blinked in, DB'd everything, stopped the whole setup. Uh, and right here we see the final moments of the game. We see Palomar and Calvish just, like, both sprinting around the map, trying to figure out who they want to go for. Calvish gets the Shadow Step Kidney, edges his smoke bomb, massive damage onto him. Uh, dopamine blinks over to try and to assist, but he can't really. Then they try and turn it around. I think this is where the DR blind comes in, which was devastating because that could have been a trinket to try and peel later on. 
Uh, and we're waiting to see, yeah, right here, okay. full DR blind onto the priest. So now they don't even have that to peel. They have no options. That's going to put three and a half men in a position where they can just play so confidently. Like there's no blind threat. You can just do whatever you want. If you need to trinket, you can try and just play for the win. Uh, Palomar goes for stun lock. It's pre gripped away from the stun. Palomar can't get any pressure. Nuke blinks in. He spell steals. Double dragon's breath. Polymorph. Kearney's in position. Palomar Sap stun. No trinket. Dopamine gets sapped on the way in. Everyone's CC'd, even though dopamine blocks. Like, they're just looking clean right now in game number two. And unless something happens here, uh, this is looking like a 3 0. Yeah, that, that matchup was really one sided. It just felt like three and a half men were in the driver's seat from basically start to finish, despite an un, uh, unideal opener. It just seems like Calvish knows exactly what he wants to do. His team's backing him up perfectly. Uh, on the flip side, uh, I feel like Novos, when the pressure's on, this is a really good team, but when the pressure's on, you know, some mistakes slipping through, you can't afford to, you know, triple DR blind. It's just such an important tool. Um, all the setups are kind of getting, you know, um destroyed like they go after calvish he just gets gripped away Palmore really doesn't have any targets that he can go after and uh it just seems like three and a half men right now they're a well-oiled machine and they're playing the series out beautifully so far but we are going to be going to hook point for game number three the last chance uh for novus uh, unless they want to go down to that lower bracket yep this is an upper bracket game so nobody's getting eliminated just yet and uh yeah like you mentioned novus here and uh, are gonna have at least their own match points they're gonna at least they're going to at least have this game here to try to uh, bring it back. And, you know, it's a mirror. Anything can happen. And uh, on smaller maps as well, it's it's kind of interesting that, uh, you know, uh, they did go to the larger map first. Check out kind of how it felt there. But it just felt like uh, three and a half men had so much room to kind of kite around and to really uh, just outplay there that on a smaller map, I think it's a lot. It's going to be a lot easier for Palomar to actually get those setups and uh, it's a lot more chaos, you know, and I, in my opinion, uh, a smaller map is tends, tends to be a little bit better for whatever team is behind or whatever team is uh, playing a little bit worse because you just have more chaos. There's just more, you know, uh, things going on on the map. You can just run somebody over before, uh, you know, it really gets to that cooldown trading phase. So uh, for Novos, uh, this is a good map for them, I believe, but it's all going to be dependent on how these openers go and which rogue gets ahead. They're actually going to go after the priest, and that is a great map to do it. Kearney in a lot of trouble here. They might just take him down in the opener. He does actually escape, though, without having to use his trinket. They blind him up now as well, and they go after Dopamine here, and they get some pressure onto Dopamine. Nice altered time there, actually, by Dopamine. They're going to bring him back to full HP. Smoke from coming out of Polymore and Kalvish. They're going to follow that up with a disarm here, and both teams actually popping a lot of cooldowns, but not really netting a lot of defensives. What I like that they do here is they use the Chastise on the Rogue to stop them from pre-fainting or pre using a cooldown and then go for a Resonator. Right now, it seems like the main strategy for Novus is to just go after the healer every setup, but they're getting put on the back foot. Now swapping to Calvish in midfield. Kearney looks like he's right there next to him, trying to pick him up as much as he can. Shadowy Duel comes out from Palomar, but Kearney able to just pop out a couple of AoE heals, keep him safe. And then with that Shadowy Duel threat out of the way, that is going to be scary. That means there's no more lethality really from Palomar. Maybe the Smoke Bomb but with them going after the priest, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. Calvish is going for a re-stealth behind the pillar here. Kearney getting beside him as well. Pre-Holy Ward on the cheap shots here from Kearney. They managed to work through that with another cheap shot. Calvish with a pre-setup manages to avoid it cheap shotting palomar away trying to stabilize and find their footing before they go for the kill now a polymorph on palomar going to get mass dispelled actually into another polymorph going to get dispelled by whaler nuked getting polymorph to setting up on the mage actually really mixing it up but that dismantle from calvish does it matter dopamine is just soloing nuked at the moment manages to stay alive through that if palomar was not dismantled that would have been a block maybe a kill nice play by calvish calvish setting up stuns onto the whole team here dropping the resonators onto palomar whaler moving into them to soak the resonator damage also break the potential cc nice positioning by whaler on that setup now kearney cheap shot we can see novus setting up going after calvish can they get the kill here holy fire incoming massive damage kearney trinkets makes a big trade on those resonators with the guardian spirit and trinket which means that kearney can now die Having no trinket and no spirit means that he cannot access any of his defensive cooldowns. If they get a clean setup here, build up for a combustion, that's what I want to see. Yeah, big setup here on Polymor. This is the combustion. He gets stunned. Trinket's out and uses his vanish, so should be okay. Throws a full blind on Calvish as well. Wants to kind of just slow him down. Really defensive blind there. Now going for a setup. Can they take him down? Calvish has his trinket, but no real answers to follow it up with. 
getting low. Shadowy Duel, so he just goes for the Trinket. Shadowy Duel onto Waylord the Priest, who is unlikely going to be able to take him down. And if Calvis gets a reself here, I am worried for Polymore. Waylord does have his Trinket, but they can somehow CC his Trinket. They're going to be in a really prime position. There's the KD shot. There's the Smoke Bomb. Ring of Frost onto Waylor. Where's the damage on Polymore? There's really not that much. The gap the sun looks like Polymore should be able to survive. They're just pushing through the polymorph on Whaler. Not Why didn't he trick it? He get trick it. He get guardian. Uh, I, I I don't know. Nova's making some mistakes there for sure. Three and a half men get to capitalize on those mistakes. Really clean setups consistently in this series, and uh, they're going to be advancing um, in the upper bracket. Nova's going down to that lower bracket. Really, really clean stuff here from three and a half men. Uh, Cabbage going for that restuff in the end there. And, uh, you know, they had, they had some nice weak additions there. You know, Palomar with that defensive blind, I really didn't like that because uh, he had a full blind essentially with, his, with the enemy priest with no trinket. I feel like that was a win condition. They could either blind him and set up on him out of that, uh, or they could blind him and try to take down Calvish, at least get his trinket, and then find a win condition a little bit later on with that next CC chain. But um, they kind of just uh, throw it away. I, I really didn't like Polymorph's blind in the previous game, of course, because it was triple DR and in this game as well. And we're going to see it here, you know, uh, three and a half men with just a lot of pressure here, uh, getting the kidney shot, getting the cheap shot here onto Polymorph, full blind onto Whaler, and uh, Polymorph trinketing out here, using that vanish, using that defensive blind right there that we're talking about, and then cheap shotting Kearney, uh, cheap shotting Nuked, and then going after Kalish here with that cheap shot, and not really amounting to much here. They don't force out any big cooldowns to get here. Nice uh, shadowy duel coming out from Calvish just to survive there defensively while Kearney is sitting through, you know, a plethora of CC chain and he gets that restuff at the back end of it. The, avoids the mage there from blinking in. Cheap shots off the Holy Ward. Re cheap shot. Old Kidney. Ring of Frost. Smoke bomb coming out. And then here, nice pre cloak there by Palomar. But look at the look at Kearney just waiting for the last second there to get the mind games off. And once you connect those mind games, uh, it doesn't really matter, and I, I do agree with Van there. There was more answers, of course. You could have just uh, trinketed it right there. There was no blind in play for a little while there, so they could have kept the game going there. Uh, Whaler could have probably trinketed Guardian Angel or whatever, uh, used some defensive and, and kept his rogue in the fight for a little bit longer, but uh, maybe he thought he would survive there. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but that mind game's always going to be crucial uh, when you're landing those kills. If the mind game is on the target, it just stops you know the, all that self-healing with the Crimson Vial and things like that from really being effective and uh, a lot of these uh, priest teams that's how they find the kills they go vent there they get those mind games and uh, they take somebody out okay well very solid series from the newcomers three and a half men uh you know as i was saying before we headed into, the, into this match i was able to catch up with nuked and i was curious about how he was feeling about his you know this newly formed team for the awc and he says these guys have been following you know practicing just every day they put in a ton of work to head into this cup and he says that this is the best roster that he could have hoped for uh so obviously it's working out for them so far three to zero just right off the bat and they're still in the upper bracket so they have yet to lose a game in this tournament so i feel like this is for sure Super T is a, a roster that we want to be looking out for in the future. Yeah, I mean, right now, Rogue Mage, a solid position, looking like a strong team. They put it in the practice, they grind it on the ladder. They have a little bit of flexibility with Fuse uh, on that Feral dude. They can run some Feral Mage. Curious to see how they utilize him uh, or if he's just going to be riding the bench uh, moving forward. Uh, but this is their chance to really show what they've got. Great performance in the mirror here, asserting RMP dominance. Yeah, lo love when you when you show up to a mirror and you you know you dominate like that. It's got to be a really good confident boost as you head into the rest of your games because they've got a few more to play if they want to make it up to the grand finals on Championship Sunday. Of course, North America will, will be playing in the afternoon. Um, they are yet to have a have a, a competitor for that game, so we'll have to see who they're going to have to face off against on Sunday. But Moving on to our next match, this might be one of the bigger ones that we're going to be seeing today, Zico. It's Cloud9 versus Kawhi. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, what typically is the Titans in North America. Cloud9, though, uh, going through some roster changes, no longer going to be having a Snuts and a Chan on that roster. Instead, they are bringing on Chun Li, which we've seen on so many rosters. This guy is an absolute beast when it comes to that Windwalker, but also. I've been hearing a lot about Cropley, his hunter, uh, taking over the North American ladder. So uh, he's going to be playing, you know, a, you know, kind of the melee expert there. And uh, of course, they're also bringing in Flop to play that Resto Druid. And uh, you might be thinking, well, what about Cubsy? Uh, Cubsy is apparently going to be playing DPS, and apparently he's been doing a great job with that DPS. So uh, playing things like Warrior and Warlock. And it's going to be interesting to see what Cloud9 has cooking up in that kitchen. And of course, they still have Wealthy Man uh, on that roster. 
and then on Kauai, uh, the former champions, you know, the, the former, uh, how, I don't even know how many times they've won at this yeah. point, but these guys <laughs> are just super yeah, solid. Countless times uh, champion of I mean, there was a season that they basically <laughs> went undefeated, right? And then they went on to win the, the, the finals too. So it was just like a yeah. week after week they were winning then. But... They, they just don't. It's one, of, it's one of those things that's really funny about Kauai is that like so many people, they kind of like forget that they just never lose. They just like, you know, they, I don't know why it is like people just kind of write, they don't write them off. Like if you're a competitor, you're never going to write them off because you know, they're an insane team, but people kind of just forget that they're the most dominant team in North America. They don't lose. Yeah. They've lost like one cup in like two years or something like that. Other than that, they've won everything. So, I mean, this is still the team to beat in my mind. Uh, they're in the upper bracket. Cloud9 definitely has their hands full with this one. Yeah. No, it's a really interesting point, Van. Maybe they're, they're, you just don't hear from them much. So, you know, they don't have that large of a, of a social media presence. Yeah. So maybe that has to do with it. But I, I mean, one thing is for certain, for certain, this is a very dominant team. And you can bet that they're going to try and dominate once again as they head into this match. But we have to go to a break. When we come back, it's Cloud9 versus Kawhi coming up next. Hey everybody and welcome back. We are on to another match. This one is going to be a big one. It is Cloud9 versus Kawhi. Both of these teams have been absolutely dominating the North American region for quite some time and they are back yet again for another season. However, the major difference, something that we discussed just a little bit before we went into the break, is Cloud9 and their roster change it seems like it's just going to be a completely different team then than we're used to seeing with cloud nine uh 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that's very fair to say. I mean, Snuts and Chanimal, I mean, basically all-star players. I mean, Chanimal and Snuts have been around the scene for such a long time. They decided to not participate in the AWC this year. So um, it, basically what happened is Chun-Li and Flop have kind of stepped up. Cubsy, uh, interestingly enough, I kind of mentioned this yesterday. In my personal opinion, I feel like Cubsy is one of the best healers in the entire game. And to have him kind of on the sideline uh, being put on DPS, Flop has a huge kind of role to step up into, but this guy has been a real contender in North America for quite some time. I mean, if you watch the stream, he is a seasoned healer. He can multi-class. And it seems like these four players have built some serious synergy with each other. Um, Chun-Li uh, playing a lot of Hunter, playing a lot of Windwalker Monk, uh, doing exceptionally well. Wealthy Man, actually, he's the one mage I can always rely on to actually play a little Frost. You know, he's the only one that I can rely on and be happy as a Frost mage to, you know, watch him perform. So I'm hoping that we see this. I'm not sure if we will. Um, but then Cubsy, Cubsy is the really interesting one because he's always played uh, healer, specifically the Resto Druid. I mean, we've seen him on Paladin. We've seen him on basically anything, but now he's actually going to be... Frost. Oh, I saw the Frost Mage. I saw it. Uh, yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> Frost Mage, which we already know is my favorite. But yeah, Cubsy, uh, just to kind of talk about him a little bit. I actually had Flop in my stream. And, uh, you know, people were asking, you know, Flop, why are you healing and not Cubsy? And Flop says, well... Mm. You know, uh, Cubsy, he thinks that Cubsy is one of the best players in the game. Regard I mean, obviously he is, but he thinks he's one of the best players on any class that he touches. So we'll see if he can actually step up. If he's going to play Warlock, can he rise to the level of Chanimal? Uh, I mean, he's definitely going to have to prove himself. I, you could, <laughs> I'm never going to say that he can, but uh, until I see it with my own two eyes, but I, I definitely wouldn't count Cubsy out on basically anything he plays. I saw I a Holy Pally. I didn't notice actually when, when Flop was in the streamer that he did subscribe and uh, good news for everybody out there. While this game is getting restarted, this would be an excellent opportunity, yes, to hit that subscribe button on the Warcraft YouTube channel. We got two of the best games, or two of the best teams, sorry, uh, in North America, and there it is. And don't forget to ring the bell as well, of course. Uh, coming up here, Cloud9 and Kawaii, uh, you know, reigning champions for however long, Kawaii, Cloud9 as well, always been one of the top dogs in North America. and. We are uh, we're witnessing something very very special. Earlier we saw Resto Shamans, now we are going to see our first Frost Mage of 9.2. And just like Renuki, I am super stoked to see Wealthy Man because uh, this has been you know this has been his forte. And uh, uh, you, you think we're gonna see some uh, Mage Lock uh, from from what I'm gathering here with uh, with maybe Cubsy Warlock then? No, I actually my guess is Mage Hunter. Uh, I swear we're gonna oh. see properly on the Hunter. They play this comp. Nobody else plays this comp. Uh, if they play it, uh, I think it's going to be really exciting. They basically just have two play Mark's Hunter Frost Mage. They have two what? basically. Yeah, really bizarre. I know, but they, I said the same thing when Ben asked me to play it with Jelly, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we did well, though. We did well. It's actually a good comp. I swear. Oh. So we'll see if they. What can they? do we've seen a lot of fire mage this weekend i think we've seen a fire mage in literally every series <laughs> this entire weekend except maybe one where it was shadow priest hunter versus the jungle that might have been the only series of this entire weekend where there's no fire mage so finally you're gonna get to see a little bit of frost from wealthy man now i love the build that he plays when you when you see him basically turn into a skeleton that's when you know he's about to get crazy things are getting wild and normally the enemy team has to run and hide behind a pillar because the damage is so overwhelming uh, but if you don't, you can get caught in the open, especially if uh, Wealthy Man's going to be playing uh, Ice Wall, which I know he does. Oh. And there it is. I told you. So here we go. <laughs> Chun-Li on the Marks Hunter, Wealthy Man on the Frost Mage. This composition, we've never, I don't think we've ever seen this in the AWC. So uh, let's see what they can get done. I don't think we've seen a Marksman Hunter in the AWC for like as long as I can remember. When was the last time we saw a Marksman Hunter? It's always survival or after they buff BM and BM Hunter. I, I really can't even remember the last time we saw this. So this is this is very, very new territory. And I, I wonder how much experience Kawaii has uh, into this composition, but they are actually running something that we haven't seen that much as well. We're gonna be bringing in Prev on that Shadow Priest and of course Drake on that Rogue. We saw him really rise to the occasion and it was a real big reason for their success last year. And Drake bringing in that Rogue being an absolute beast on Rogue, Warrior and that Windwalker. And here we go, the opener coming in. And we're gonna see Brain as well on Holy Paladin, actually. So this is a uh, you know no Holy Priest on either side here. 
Uh, this is just surprises from both teams, I think. Rogue Shadow Priest and uh, Paladin. We already saw Rogue Shadow Priest Shaman, so you can assume it's going to be similar. Wow, what a big amount of damage coming out from Chun Li here right off the get go on that MM Hunter. And I mean, this is playing in perfectly into Cloud9 style. Just sit yeah. back and, you know, dampen people. So uh, you love to see that right away. All right, half of Prev's it. Oh, that ice wall walling Brain off behind the pillar. He's trying to reposition. Chun Li getting crushed over the opener. This is the downside. That marksmanship hunter is fragile. Basically, glass uh, for this rogue and shadow priest. Skelly <laughs> stun is going to be very scary. Here comes big damage from Wealthy Man activating that Deathborn Ring of Frost. Oh, he's playing Kyrian marksman. He can shoot through walls. Chun Li's going to be unleashing a flurry of arrows while Wealthy Man gets aggressive. What? Look at the damage across the board here of this team. Prev struggling to survive. Frostbolt's cleaving the team. Chun Li on the other side. If they can survive these stun locks from the road, every time they try and bunker down on the pillar, they are going to get erased eventually. But now they've got to get on defense. They got to get ready. Here's the kidney shot. Are they prepared to keep Chun Li alive here? Smoke bomb comes down. No pre iron bark. Flourish up with Scenarian Ward. Big hots on Chun Li. He survives the smoke bomb. Brain charging in. Hammers down onto Flop. Chun Li still the target, but Wealthy Man has a couple more seconds of death. Born curious to see if he can get any big frost bolts out here. Just lobbing them out at Prev. Drake and Polymorph setting them up on the pillar. Sap out of the blinding light, though. The crowd control chain from Kawhi is insane. Chun Li trying to pre feign death, pre feign death. The kidney shot. Is that going to be enough to survive the sepsis? Massive damage incoming onto Chun Li. Iron Mark, oh. not enough, and he will be crushed. Kawaii, reigning champions of North America countless times coming in strong and not going to be taking the curveball this is going to be scary i think for chun li and wealthy man i feel like maybe with this comp maybe they need a paladin healer not a druid maybe a little bit more offense like bops on the hunter uh, and maybe go all in on these pillars like pop a kidney then pop everything i'm not sure if the druid is going to be able to handle this i think yeah that i think we need we need a holy priest <laughs> Wait, who doesn't yeah, need so always the answer the holy <laughs> priest is always the answer but this is kind of this is essentially how frost mage works you pop your veins you pop your deathborn the enemy team runs they're so scared <laughs> it's getting cleave frost bolted down it's getting snared they're very afraid um and it, you can either take someone down with surprise burst or you know later on in dampening it's just the damage is way too overwhelming which like you said kind of plays into the strengths of cloud nine Big kidney shot here on Chun Li. See exactly what happens to Flop because he is in crowd control for quite some time. Big feign death coming in from Chun Li, and it's the spell. So he dispels the VT into a full hammer of justice into a blinding light. And Flop is just so far out of position; it's really difficult for him at this point. Especially Drake, just with the sprint, look at how fast he gets across the map. Gets the full sap. He trinkets out of the sap. There is no blind, so. Maybe a little bit greedy to sit through this crowd control. There's no blind available. He just isn't able to get there. Too little, too late. Gets silenced. Iron Bark at you know five percent health is going to be enough to keep him alive. And I I, I actually agree with you, Sid, because it seems like the only way we're going to see Drake, Prev, and Brain win this is with a big CC chain. Um, they do it really well. I mean, we've seen this strategy from them many, many times. Maybe having a Paladin um, as like kind of an emergency healer, you have more breaks, and then during those large CC chains, you can actually, uh, you know, have those immunities. The ultimate sacrifice, for example, would have saved them where Iron Bark would not have. So um, I, I don't know what, how much Paladin flop plays, um, but yeah, I, I feel like these all-ins from Prev, Drake, and Brain can definitely work against the Hunter. Um, but if they can somehow shut that down, um, maybe they could actually bring the game into the late game, which is where I think they're really going to thrive. So I just wanted to hop in real quick. I've got some some information from Chun Li behind the scenes here. Before that series, he was telling me that he was going to play as Hunter, and uh, you know we've always known him as a Windwalker. A lot of people cite him as one of the best Windwalkers in the world, and and we got to see him play just a little bit of Hunter last year, and it was really really early success with that. And so I asked him, I was like, you know, how are you feeling on your Hunter right now? If you're going to be playing that in competition, and he said, I am feeling better on my Hunter than I am on my Windwalker. That's how I'm feeling right now, and I think the confidence definitely shown through on that first game Zico. absolutely and i mean it looked honestly it looked like more of a defensive misplay from flop i feel like he was just pushed up way too far it feels like they're calm they want to win by just kind of sitting back and letting wealthy man and chun lee just get damage out and then kind of surviving those bursts so uh, i think it was during the death point maybe flop uh, wanted to push in to be able to assist wealthy man when he was really far up but uh, I, I feel like wealthy man isn't that great of a target for Kawhi, so uh, just let wealthy man do wealthy man things and 
and try to keep a more defensive posture, especially when, when Charlie doesn't have that trinket and it's going to look a lot better. Um, I mean, he was able to do a lot of damage during that matchup, but now the question comes uh, exactly what are they going to run? And another question is, are they tagging in Cubsy at all here for this? Because uh, like you guys mentioned, uh, if we see a Holy Paladin, would that be Cubsy playing the Holy Paladin or is that still Bob uh, playing the Holy Paladin and Cubsy strictly going to be, you know, uh, flexing on those DPS roles? A lot of questions for, for this new Cloud9 roster, and I, I think we just need more uh, data points to see exactly what they can do here. I wouldn't even mind a Mistweaver. Ring of Peace when the enemies start running behind the pillar, just sit max range, portal in stuns, portal away from goes, you're going to have better mana than the Paladin. Yeah. Actually, it's way more healing output. Um, I actually think Mistweaver wouldn't be too bad here. I actually think Druid is the, probably the most exploitable healer because it, it, you can die through your cooldowns to Siphon. You can just get CC'd out, purged by the Shadow Priest. I actually think Druid might be one of the weaker options. You get Vortex, which is which is great to try and Vortex people out in line. Uh, but the healing output, I think, is, is tough against the Shadow Priest. Uh, specifically, if Druid has a weakness, I would say the Shadow Priest is one of them. Uh, and Rogue, probably another. Uh, so this this is going to be tough for Cloud9. This is the new roster for 2022 here, uh, AWC. Flop coming in. They had that really big moment where we saw the Resonating Arrow. We saw the Deathborn from the Frost Mage. Thought that maybe they could get some damage out there, but no, Brain was ready for it. Prev was ready for it. Just Fleshcraft tanked through all of it. So if they can survive those big cooldown windows, I'm a bit worried. Cloud9 pick a map that have very small pillars, and this is what they need. Big maps, small pillars, so that the enemies can't line of sight them as much. Flop's going to have to be very careful with his positioning here because Kawhi are more than ready to punish him, taking that game number one off an insanely long crowd control chain. I'll have to wait and see if they can do it again. It looks like Chun-Li is sticking to the Kyrian marksmanship hunter. This is the first time we saw Resonating Arrow, and I feel like this is one of the biggest abilities talked about moving into Shadowlands. Like, what? You get wall hacks? You can shoot through the pillar? Like, this <laughs> yeah. is going to be the most ridiculous thing ever, and we never saw it literally until now. Like, we, we, the final patch, we're going to see the Marksmanship Hunter. Let's see what that resonating arrow can get done. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious to see how this one plays out. The resonating arrow is going to be really strong. If you have Wealthy Man, is able to kind of push in. Honestly, I don't... I, I have to be a little bit critical of the build Wealthy Man is playing in the last game. Uh, I feel like there's ways he could optimize their strategy a, a lot more. Um, we'll see how this one plays out, and I'll see if he makes any adaptations before I really comment on that one. But uh, Prev right now, uh, going to be the main target. It looks like the Frozen Orb will drop down. The Comet Storm will drop down as Prev's going to be um, the initial target. Um, actually, basically Wealthy Man hitting whoever he can. I think he's already popped his Deathborn and Bane, so playing really, really aggressive here on the oh. Prev, getting a lot of Whoa. damage out. Vampiric Embrace, Prev getting low, big rapid fire. Rain gets caught into a polymorph. These frost bolts just build up bigger and bigger and bigger. Every single one of these frost bolts during icy veins empowers the next frost bolt. And uh, this ice wall, beautifully done, just really looking to get aggressive, get that deathborn on cooldown, and start generating some momentum for his team. Yeah, and uh, still a lot of damage coming out here onto Drake, a wealthy man with big flurry combos, and really putting out a lot of pressure. But in terms of defensives, they didn't get you know any of those major defensives. And there's the resonating arrow. Here comes the aim shots from Chinese, Shadow Step Kidney coming through. What was that damage onto Brain? They're almost taking him down uh, from across the map. And Chun Li's going to survive beautifully. And here's the if Pop is playing a lot more single target oriented build, playing something similar to what we saw from Luxia, uh, just going for those set bonuses, going for those big single target healing uh, with that Tree of Life as well. So. Uh, I like this a lot more, and, uh, and Flop is just moving further and further back on the map. Just kite them throughout the map, have the Frost Mage slow everybody up, have Chun Li reposition with Flop, and this is much more in tune of what we see from Cloud9. But this is an opportunity to close the gap. Drake is trying to make his way over there, but look at the damage. It's just absolutely incredible how much damage it is. Flop now going to re stealth and cross the map, and this is exactly what he needs to be doing. Just build up momentum, Fleshcraft coming up in Wealthy Man gonna get popped out he's gonna get kicked on it sheep's coming out onto drake nice a counter shot there onto brain as well brain with those wings active and uh, should have no problems keeping his team alive and aggressive right now and once again now they've crossed the map you never want flop to be on the same pillar as brain and uh, that's basically uh, the story of paladin versus druid anytime the druid is on the same side as the paladin oh. that means we're gonna see oh. those um, eight, those big big cc chains but right now john lee once again resonating arrow evasion gets <laughs> forced out ice wall and i mean this is incredible stuff uh, the resonating arrow really uh, getting showcased so far and doing a lot of work honestly for 
I mean, that's big value, but now they're going to push forward. This is their opportunity to counterattack once that cooldown is down. Freezing Trap onto Brain. Potentially an opportunity for Cloud9 to get some damage here out onto Drake. They get Cloak of Shadows at least, but Cyphine is up. Big pressure on a wealthy man. Ice block, Master Spell, Prev gets interrupted. Big heal comes in from Flop. Recovering Wealthy Man, but one Ice Block down, and that's what Kawaii need. They need to just wait for those big Siege Tank moments, where chun is going to post up, drop a bunch of damage. Once all the damage is unloaded, then go for a big push, get a cooldown, and then get back to the Pillar. Because uh, I would think of this comp as like a Siege comp between the Mage and Hunter. They're going to post up, and then be max range, maxing their damage. And you got to be careful when you pick your moments to push into a Siege comp here. Flop trinketing into a Hammer of Justice. This could be devastating, but resonating arrow. Chun-Li, look at the damage behind the wall. Brain struggling to heal through it. Trinketing out of the Freezing Trap. Goes for a double blinding light, but here comes the Deathborn. Wealthy Man wants to be a scary threat. Maybe scare his opponents away so that Flop can get out of crowd control. He's ramping up those Frost Bolts one after the other. Procking Roots here, and Chun-Li's... In a position to keep shooting them behind the pillar here on the left side, but I don't think Wealthy Man's going to get in the line of sight, unfortunately, to get too much damage off with this Deathborn. And there's no resonating arrow to just kind of try and flank them off of the pillar. Just Blizzard and Cleave run the Paladin out of mana with this position, trying to attrition Kawaii out. Hmm. Yeah, Wealthy Man kind of desynced his Deathborn and Icy Veins, which I don't think you really want to do. The damage threat is kind of limited. Um, he did end up picking up the Frostbite, which I think is really good, because now you get the random roots with the Blizzard and the Frozen Orb, keeping them in place. And this is the exact positioning you want, this kind of triangle formation where Wealthy Man's on the right side of the pillar, Chun-Li's on the left side of the pillar, and you're kind of just poking everyone down. Wealthy Man still has one Ice Block, uh, which is a great position. Resonating Arrow going to be putting out a decent amount of damage, and this is basically, it's interesting because when the mage pops his cooldowns, you got to run behind the pillar, but unfortunately you can't run behind the pillar when Chun-Li has a resonating arrow. And I think that's kind of where that synergy comes from. Cloud9 really utilizing this map well so far. And it's been difficult the for wall. Kawhi to actually push forward. Beautiful ice wall, keeping Drake and Prev in the middle of the map. Drift, uh, Drake going to push forward right now, has a Cloak of Shadows, has his Vendetta as well. Wealthy Man gets freedomed. And uh, that freedom is definitely going to pay dividends. Big kidney shot, though, on the flop. What are they going to be able to do? He doesn't have a trick yet. And Drake's really, really low. A big all in, though, on the flop. They punish in a huge way. There was no trinket, and they just all in. And with the kidney shot into the hammer of justice, Kawhi just always finds these win conditions. This team is so good at just mixing it up, turning it on a dime, and they will be going up in the series 2 0, Cloud 9 on match point. Yeah, very, very unique strategies coming out from Cloud9, and uh, I think it was on their earlier push they used that blind to uh, force out uh, Flop Strinket, and now they they saw, okay, we have a 10-second window here, 15-second window where potentially we can drop Flop, and that's exactly what they do. You can see the cooldown of that Trinket is kind of lining up there with Drake's blind, and uh, they have that Vendetta coming up very, very shortly. Wealthy Man just popped his Deathborn here, and they're just trying to avoid it, and uh, as well, Chan Li on one side, and this is honestly the best map for this type of strategy. I mean, you have these super, super tiny pillars, and you have a lot of distance, you know? It's not like Tulvir where the pillars are really, really chunky. Uh, here, you just, uh, any, if you take a step to avoid Wealthy Man, well, you're in Chan Li's line of sight, and they go for the Resonating Arrow, they go for a bit of damage there onto Chan Li, because uh, when that Resonating Arrow is active, you may as well go and hit the Hunter. It's basically like you're not behind a pillar anyway. Nice ice wall coming out from Wealthy Man, and they get good pressure here onto Drake, but Drake has a plan here. He's got uh, that uh, big smoke bomb. He's got that Vendetta coming up. He has his Trinket as well, and this is a nice setup. Scatter into Trap, into Bash, and then they just swap to Flop here. And they, honestly, Flop actually makes it very easy for them here in that situation. Going in for the Bash, getting aggressive, and uh, not really having that uh, defensive mindset. And uh, immediately, as soon as he goes aggressive, they just immediately pounce on that and take him out with 10 seconds left on that trinket. And I think in that first game as well, he had a little bit aggressive positioning. And in this situation, you know, I would have loved to see him just kind of stay back, trade out maybe Iron Bark on uh, Sean Lee or whatever, and then just sit back, try to go for the re-stealth. And kind of similarly to what we usually see from Cloud9, it's just more of a defensive approach. They're not really trying to go for those big setups and, and try to land those kills early on if there is any risk whatsoever. Yeah, you need, you need to make yourself invulnerable in the match. And uh, unfortunately, Flop tries to go for an aggressive play and he gets punished. Uh, maybe he didn't expect, you know, the kidney shot into the hammer of justice. Um, it was kind of, it, it didn't feel random, uh, but you've got to realize those conditions, especially if you're going to play a composition. I mean, that that's what made 
the old Cloud9 so strong when they're playing their Mage Lock is Cubsy was uh, unkillable. You could basically never die. Uh, I, I don't think I saw it, quite honestly. He was just always playing max range, basically only moving in when it was impossible for him to lose. He's had a really, really good grasp uh, of the game. I'm not saying Flop doesn't, um, but those moments you, you have to look out for because yeah, if, if Kawhi finds themselves in a situation where they have a win condition, they're going to be able to punish and capitalize that uh, really, really quickly, which is what we just saw. I'm not liking the Druid in this comp. I feel like there's got to be better options for healers. Uh, and this specifically, even Holy Priest having a range stun. Like, just imagine if Drake was range stunned. He, he doesn't have to even get close to him. Just launch out the chastise. Right. Like, Drake's dead. Anytime he tries to move, he's just going to get chastised, sniped in midfield. I, I just feel like there's got to be better healers than the Druid. Like, the Druid is like, we're going to be just behind the pillar until 50% dampening and oom the pally. And they need to play that. Like, almost never go for a stun, I think, if they want to do that with the Druid. But Holy Priest could do that and get the stun. It's like... And you get some damage, like a holy fire. Imagine a, a 30k holy fire in the middle of that game. Like it's also that's a way more obnoxious. I mean, if you're a holy priest and you're getting to play max range, yeah. it's likely you're gonna have holy ward on yourself. You're gonna have greater fade. So they have to do all. They have to put in a lot more work to actually land that effective crowd control on you. Whereas the druid um, doesn't really have that same level of protection. I, I definitely agree. Like holy priest, it just makes more sense because instead of having two wizards. Essentially, I'm just going to start calling Hunters Wizards at this point, by the way. Uh, survival, MM, I said that wizard. Yeah, no, they, they're 100% a wizard. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> at this point, I would like to see a Holy Priest, of course. Uh, we're not going to see it, but uh, it does make sense. You know, you have a third wizard standing there spamming out. You know, essentially, we saw it earlier, you know, in in, um, in the Golden Guardian series. We saw the Holy Priest doing, you know, same damage as, as his, his Fire Mage on the side of Unitas. You know, that is the amount of damage that you're actually giving up. But... I will say stylistically for Cloud9, the rest of Druid is a pillar of, of their gameplay. This is what they do. They just build a composition, you know, like Mage Lock, like Mage Hunter here, and they just have their Druid in the back line, constantly looking for drinks. And the Hunter and the Mage, they're stopping the enemy from drinking. So anytime the enemy wants to, you know, hurdle behind the pillar, Cloud9 is slowly winning it. And I think what we're seeing is actually some of the growing pains from Cloud9, where everybody isn't maybe on the same page like that because you know uh, with uh, Cubsy and Chanimal and when they were playing that mage lock we saw like like you said Cubsy would almost never really go down it was always uh, as soon as he you know was in that situation he would just restuff cross the map look for a stun on on the healer while he's crossing the map and just constantly playing it safe and as a rest of druid yes I, I agree with Sid you you're giving up a lot by having the rest of druid but the one thing that you do gain is that if the game goes long and your team is constantly stopping the drinks by just, you know, existing, uh, then you're slowly winning the game, right? So uh, for Cloud9 style, that is typically how they won a lot of their game and saw a lot of their success, you know, especially during last year. So I think this is just uh, some growing pains and they just need to uh, all get on the same page during those setups. You can go for those because, uh, you know, we saw it as well with their mage lock. They always would go for those infernal stun into a coil into big setups but it was never at a time where they could lose the game it was never at a time where oh if they just drink it and counter go i'm dead you know and uh, i think that's just uh, something that you have to chalk up some mistakes there positionally and just uh, you know and uh, not everybody being on the same page so uh, i i don't mind that cloud nine stick with the composition but uh they're banking on a lot you know playing a long game especially against you know the first of assassination rogue it's not going to be an easy thing yeah, let's see if they can keep it up here. This map is also going to be great benefit to Cloud9. Small pillars, big space. chun -Li already getting a lot of damage onto Prev. Drake still in stealth, though. Looking for his target. Flop is out of stealth, but I don't think they want to start on the Druid. It's just something in that situation where they already had his trinket. It was a good opportunity. They're going to go on to Wealthy Man for now. Scatter shot onto the Rogue. chun -Li gets stunned by Prev. Siphoning on Wealthy Man. They're going after the Mage. Uh, this time around in game number three, maybe trying to mix it up against Cloud9, close this series out with a surprise, but here comes the Deathborn, Wealthy Man. Is he going to regret it, though? He just has to go into his Ice Block. Mass Dispel, this could be it. It's match point for him. Mass Dispel on the Ice Block. Flop has to trinket. Huge overlaps defensively on the side of Cloud9, and they haven't gotten any pressure just yet. Wealthy Man needs to get damage and some value out of this Deathborn. Here comes the Resonating Arrow. They've got to get big cooldowns from Prev right here. Aim shot. Oh, gets Kidney shot on his aim shot. He's not going to connect it. Prev now flesh grab 
crafting behind the pillar and the resonating arrow will not be available to shoot through it. They're trying to disengage in. They're trying to get aggressive, trying to get some value out of this trade because they're almost they're basically getting nothing on the side of Kawhi for almost everything on their side. This is an abysmal start for Cloud9. Secure a polymorph on the brain. Trying to drag Drake off the pillar. He's obviously reluctant to do so, facing down that Deathborn Frost Mage. But now Frost Nova, Thomas Storm Prox. Big damage onto Drake. Kona Cold snaring him down. Now Prev getting blasted. They got Prev and Drake out in the open for Chun Li to start going to town, but with no trinket on the druid, one block down. If Kawaii make some solid pushes here, like one or two, they could close this out. Yeah, Wealthy Man using his blink. Can Drake land the kidney? He does land the full kidney on Wealthy Man. He's gonna be eating a long stun here. And this is the Psy Fiend as well, but it looks like Flop has more than enough healing to keep him alive. Wealthy Man kind of just tanking through this damage, getting some Polymorphs now, getting some counter pressure on Prev. Little swap here onto Drake. This suddenly looking to tap him out with the big aim shot. Ice Wall does come down. Wealthy Man going for a big Comet Storm, but Drake going for a Kitty Shot onto Flop once again. I don't think this is going to be that same level of all in. Double Fear coming in. Hammer of Justice. Can they take him down? There's no way. Flop holds on. That's going to be the Bark Skin now with no Trinket. Could be vulnerable to the next stun. They could also just go after Flop, get his Trinket, and then throw a full blind on him. So a few different options for Kawhi. Big damage out on the Prevacy gets interrupted. This is the Deathborn. This is the, actually, this is just a Resonating Arrow. Deathborn still not available for another about a minute and a half. That's going to be the next really scary moment for Kawhi. Yeah, and we're going to see now Wealthy Man once again going to be the target of choice. And Ice Altered Time there by Wealthy Man. And they do have that Iron Bark Whoa. available as well to work with. Big damage coming out here from Chun potentially. See what he can get done. He gets a nice scatter there onto Prev, trying to slow him down. Old Sheep secured onto Brain. This is Cloud9 actually getting very aggressive here. Can he get the Cloak of Shadows? That is the question. Drake, Shadow steps over. Nice Cheap Shot onto Chun Li. Nice Garot onto Wealthy Man. Trying to hold on to that Cloak of Shadows, but he will trade out the Cloak and the Evasion right there. So, uh, Saved by the Light as well going to Croc. So, not a bad situation for Cloud9. Finally, showing some signs of life, getting some cooldowns. Rain's mana not looking too hot here. And they're going into that wizard formation. Flop in the back line. Wealthy man on one side, Chun on the other side. Drake right now in stealth. Looking for the opening here. Flop has his trinket. Everybody on Cloud9 still has defense. The only thing they really forced is that exhilaration, which is coming up. There's the resonating arrow now. And that's gonna be Drake's. That's what Drake is actually waiting for. He wants to shut down that resonating arrow just with a big kidney shot immediately. And uh, he's going to just go back to the pillar. And knowing that now it's kind of safe to turtle here for them a little bit. Waiting for some of those cooldowns to come back up. He doesn't want to get too aggressive. Maybe without that cloak of shadows or at least a vanish in his back pocket. He gets a restuff once again. And now he's going to go after Wealthy Man with that Deathborn active. Fleshcraft coming up from Wealthy Man. Can absorb a lot of that damage. Polymorph coming out here onto the crab. Uh... Wealthy Man still forced into the ice block here. He's taking massive chunks of damage. And Kawhi is so far looking pretty solid. I think they're going to be taking this pretty soon. Like, I, they could probably kill through Iron Bark with all their cooldowns. They still have a smoke bomb. And R R Wealthy Man doesn't, he has that trinket where you can go immune to a CC. So, unless he's running that like blink it. stun or he has a good timing here. Chun Li's got another resonating arrow. He's got a true shot. They need to get value out of these cooldowns here on this push. Decent damage onto Prev. When is Chun Li going to pull the trigger here on that resonating arrow? Here's the double tap. There's the resonating arrow. Throws it into the middle of the map onto Drake to try and get some extra damage, blasting him out. But if he retreats to the pillar, he's gonna be able to line aside him for the rest of the match. Rapid fire over onto Prev, just maxing out their damage, trying to oom the Holy Paladin brain. Seems to be the name of the game here. Huge damage onto Drake. Finally, pressure coming out from Cloud9. They drop an ice wall, brain repositions, but that Vortex is gonna pull Drake back behind the wall. He tries to soul shape away in line of sight of brain and to recover to survive into the future using the wall to line of sight the hunter as well a little bit there with the soul shape they're killing this pet they actually kill the hunter pet um uh, there so chun li's gonna just go for a revive there's no stop for it flop is drinking trying to secure the late game but drake shadow steps in for a kidney shot on the hunter to try and stop the drink but he's already regenerated full mana drake is gonna pull back to the pillar with his team here wait for their next big assault cold snaps coming up soon though that kill window is slowly being lost brain regenerated a bit of mana but still significantly behind that of flop at this point with dampening moving in at the 40 second mark yeah and i don't actually think i'm a fan of wealthy man using this trinket and using blink stun basically what's happening they're not even kidneying him they're just attacking him and he can't move so instead of having like shimmer to actually maneuver around the map he's basically just forced to tank out the damage and there's no range interrupts uh, the only one that can stop him is drake so i, I think it's a big mistake to use this trinket um, both ice blocks have been as a result of just not being able to move whatsoever. 
But in the middle of the map, Drake's shadow steps over. Wealthy Man finally going to blink away. Can Drake connect the kidney shot? It's going to be big if he can. Nice try to with the Fleshcraft there. You have to wait for that Fleshcraft immune, then land the kidney shot. But it looks like Wealthy Man trying to just defuse that situation. May have bought himself enough time. It looks like he has blink likely going to be off. Cool, that's a big vendetta. Just shredding through the defense. MD. And a big oh. master spell as well. Wealthy Man is just in so much trouble. There's a full blind right now. Blinding light out on the flop. Wealthy Man on the run once again. He has to use his blink to try to escape. If he gets caught into a kidney, the blind. Absolute disaster. Blind. Full blind on flop. Drake! No trinket. Drake at the same time. He has evasion. He has cloak. He should be able to make this push here on Wealthy Man. He blinks away again. Can they land Full the kidney? kidney. There oh, it bomb. is. Big kidney shot. Wealthy Man uses every man for himself, but I don't think I he feed. has enough time. Why 3 0 over Cloud9. These beautiful offensive pushes onto Wealthy Man. Really punishing. And uh, unfortunately for Cloud9, they will be going down to that lower bracket. Beautiful stuff from Quiet. But here, I think this is the game where Cloud9 looked the best. Like, uh, I, I do agree, maybe the blink stun wasn't ideal here for Cloud9, but uh, at least we got to see what the comp wants to do, you know, how they're actually winning. Because Mana wasn't looking super good for Brain compared to Flop. And uh, it did look like, uh, you know, Cloud9 uh, kind of had them in that famous Cloud9 chokehold. However, why you're just too strong on the day and especially Prev, man, uh, with that master spell on the ice block. I am pretty sure we're going to see it on the replay, but he fakes out uh, Chun's kick and then goes for the remaster spell cast, gets the ice block with that. And uh, basically from there on out, they push in. Rain gets the blinding light finally. And uh, that situation that we talked about where if the piling gets on top of the druid, it's uh, usually not a good uh, situation for the druid because there's just going to be a blinding light, hammer of justice, uh, all that good stuff. And uh, we're going to take a look here at the replay and see exactly that. So that's the Iron Bark there onto Wealthy Man. And Wealthy Man is doing a great job here. You get the sheep onto Brain. They're trying to get some counter pressure. DR trap out of the sheep. Blink forced out from Wealthy Man. He's trying to slow Drake here with the Frozen Orb. Trying to pre flesh crap the kidney shot. The Vortex comes out as well defensively. Wealthy Man doing a good job here, just making a distance between him and Drake. Finally, Drake is going to connect, and there's the big Vendetta now coming in. No Iron Bark. There's the Hammer of Justice, and look at Prev here. That's a spell. They cast a kick right there. Goes for a new cast, gets it. Generally a little bit too slow there with the uh, Scatter Shot, or maybe it was still on cooldown. And then they get the Blinding Light as well out of the Hammer of Justice into the Shadow Priest's uh, Disarm, into a, a Silence. He has to trinket out of that one, and then Flop uh, finally getting DR blinded into a Triple DR Fear. Goes for the nature swiftness, goes for the tree of life, but kidney shot coming through. Wealthy man tries to trink it, but the shift slow is there, the side fiend is there, and the smoke bomb, of course, as well to punish that. And just an overwhelming amount of damage coming out. And that's the thing you love to see from Kawhi as well. You know, they just keep keep on uh, pressing that gas pedal, even though some teams will be like, okay, well, he trinketed it. Next, next go, we can just full blind and win there. No, Rick says, nope, we're gonna go for the DR blind. We're gonna continue the chain with triple DR fear the smoke bomb and we're gonna push through and, and get the win anyway wow really really quick uh a swift 3-0 from Kawhi. unfortunate for cloud nine of course it's uh it's really weird to see them not even get a single win but it's it's you know it's not the end of the world for them they are going to be um you know heading down oh, yeah they're going to be heading down to the lower bracket and they're going to be facing off against golden guardians for the last game of the day that's another really difficult team that they're going to be having to face uh so oh. I, I mean i'm not surprised that they had a little bit of trouble just with their new roster and everything that's going on with them but what are your thoughts on that sid i mean they're gonna have to fight like the same comp so i mean this is yeah. maybe a warm-up um, but <laughs> if I was the Golden Guardians and I saw what uh, Kawi just did, I would just copy paste. <laughs> control C, Control V in the lower bracket. <laughs> uh, type GG next see you next week or something to Cloud9. Uh, I'm very worried for them. Uh, maybe they can make an adjustment, a change. I still feel like the Druid is just not going to be your best healer pick in there. It's just it can struggle in those last minute situations. If you're a monk, you top off instantly in that situation, or a Paladin or a Holy Priest even. Like you'd be able to recover. You'd get so much more. Um, from the matchup specifically, but maybe they're worried about a different comp from Kawi. I don't know that the Druid would be better into, uh, but Kawi knew exactly what they wanted to do. We've never seen MM Hunter Frost Mage in a tournament, uh, and they seemed like they'd been playing against it for years, right? So they made yeah. really good pushes, really good commitments, knew exactly when to make it. They were trading on the resonating arrows. Like, even though that was the first time we've seen it, they looked like veterans and now they're looking strong to move to championship Sundays. So we've got like the reigning champions. You got the current generation of players, top level going up against the new gen uh, on Sunday in that upper bracket, which is going to be very exciting.
yeah, it will be very exciting. So we'll have to see if this is a composition that Cloud9 is running that has potential or if they try and switch things up when we see oh. them next. But we can take a look at the bracket where we stand currently. We all are, we are, of course, heading to Novus versus Team Liquid up next. That's going to be another elimination round. And then the one that we just mentioned, Cloud9 versus Golden Guardian. So at the end of the day, we will only have four remaining North American teams. Um, so Novus, we know that they're kind of the new kids on the block, Venruki. Can they handle Team Liquid? Well, uh, I'm trying to see. So Novos actually sent Unitas down to the lower bracket. Um, I, I think Novos, uh, they didn't have the greatest performance against three and a half men, but three and a half men is really good at this RMP mirror. So I think they can make even really solid teams look like they're making a, a bunch of mistakes. So uh, I really feel like this could be an even matchup. This is kind of like old versus new Team Liquid. They know exactly what they're going to be walking into. Do they have something prepared for RMP? I think this might be one of those series where we see Trill and Mez paired up together in some sort of cleave. So that's what I would anticipate from Team Liquid. Novos, they're going to be running that RMP. Let's see if they can kind of uh, rise to the occasion when the pressure is at its highest. Yeah, we'll have, we will uh, we'll definitely see. It's kind of, I love that metaphor, the new versus the old. So we will come to that series up next. We're going to head to a break and we'll be right back.
everybody and welcome back. We're about to see Team Liquid face off against Novus. I was talking with Dopamine of Novus a little bit um, during that break and I got to catch up with him just on how his team is doing. Uh, it is confirmed these guys are all new to tournament play and tournament, tournament competition. He says that the nerves have been pretty intense because everybody is so new to it, uh, but hopefully they can, you know, get, get over that that hump of, of just sort of feeling new to all of this and it's got to be a little bit of a of stressful position to be in super tease do you do you have any advice to, to maybe new players that are in this position advice to new players don't yeah. get mad at each other i feel like falling into the blame game is usually what happens like maybe it is someone's fault you know but like if you just pick someone out and like isolate them it just always ends up bad like you just it's always a bad place to be um, you just want to take from the lessons, you know, like even if you lose, what were the lessons from that for next time? Because this is only the first cup. So just keep the rage under control. Um, I feel like there's there's some historic rage clips in WoW's history. Uh, <laughs> and usually it results in teams disbanding, which is you can't keep competing if that happens. So uh, take from the lessons in the defeat, celebrate the victories. Uh, like this is just the beginning. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to put it. It seems like, at least in my experience, the teams that do that, basically what you just said, Super rather than you know get upset when they when they have those really bad losses, are the ones that stick together over a long period of time, get those wins, and obviously have a, a more fun time competing in these tournaments because it should be fun. But game number one here, Nagrand Arena Novus versus Team Liquid. Um, this is going to be an exciting one. I mean, Team Liquid. My prediction for them was running some sort of cleave. Uh, like a uh, Demon Hunter Death Knight, something like that. Uh, we'll see if they lock that in. Novus Lord obviously going to be running that RMP. Finally, it is, you saw. Lord Mez? Well, I'm hoping, like, is it going to finally happen? He hasn't played DK in I don't know how long. It's like, it's literally I Lord Mez. DKs are actually DK. not bad. Come on, Mez. You got to give us one DK. Fury game. Warrior. Yeah, that, uh, that could be probably. No way. You don't think so? We need so? the Death Knight. We need Mez on Death Knight. Probably not. We're going to summon Mez on Death Knight right now. Just by speak DH. his name three times, he's going to yeah. appear. Everyone in chat, <laughs> let's let's get some Mez DK in chat. Mez. Mez. You guys aren't chanting with me. <laughs> Mez. 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 This is getting scary. The children like sound like a goat in, and a lamb. In like. Finding Nemo. Mez? Mine? Mez? 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 DK? DK? Maybe. Mez? I don't think we're going to see the DK. I think we're going to see DH. I don't know why, but I have a DH. Like DH I'm feeling a DH. DH um, Shadow Priest? I know Sans are practicing a lot of mm. Shadow Priest. I actually feel like that comp might not be bad in RMP. So much defense, oh. so much crowd control immunities. Definitely DH Shaman, something is what I want to see. That's what DHDK. That's it. DHDK? Uh, real DH? Yeah. Let's okay. see. I don't know if they'll, they'll actually do it. I don't. I haven't seen. Oh, I mean, I've seen a little bit of it, but I feel like Unholy Death Knights, they're, they're pretty strong right now. Mez keeps talking about how he doesn't like Unholy and he only wants to play Frost, so I'm not sure. Maybe that'll work out the same. I'm just. Uh, I'm not convinced that if they play War, okay, they're playing Windwalker. Maybe. <laughs> I. I. I don't know how I feel about this. I feel like on like when I think about this matchup, the Rogue should have a big advantage, um, but you can never count out Team Liquid. Uh, they've already played this composition today. They made it look really good. Let's see if they can continue that success, success uh, moving on in the series. Yeah, and they're going to be bringing in uh, Sidu on a Benthyr Priest. Tam I am on the Night Fate, Trill on that uh, on that Necro Lord, uh, Windwalker, and uh, we're going to see exactly what they decide to do. Palomar still playing that uh, subtlety Rogue, and honestly, I think. I feel like assassination might be better actually in this matchup if you're uh, if you're going after the windwalker. But I guess the the benefit of the subrog is always going to be that you have that triple stun lock. Going to see the opener here as well, and uh, you know Novos. They are newcomers here to the scene. They're fighting off against big time veterans. They get a sap here onto Trill. Damn, I am going to look for the cross. Nova doesn't find it. See you actually pre resolve right there. So I'm going to sheep Sidu, go after Palomar, uh, go after Trill right here, and they get his trinket uh, immediately there with the Touch of Karma, with the Diffuse Magic, grapple weapon onto Palomar, Sidu now out of crowd control, and Sidu anticipating himself to be the target in that matchup, and they're just going to trade out Trill's cooldowns. Now finally a big push here on the Palomar, and they get his trinket, Fist of Fury coming out, and that's going to be the trinket stun on the trinket, the trinket as well, and they almost taken down through it. They Novus is in a checkmate. They forced everything. They forced Trinket, Guardian Spirit, and Trinket, Evasion, Evoke, everything. 
Uh, next down, next down with the mushroom just be Oh, smoke right bomb! Smoke resonators! Bomb, resonators! They're turning it around! Resonators. Boom! And Trill! Boom! Goes the dynamite, and Trill is going to get absolutely destroyed right away. Unbelievable. That was such a quick game. This shadowy duel resonators. <laughs> you always got to watch for that. And that's why I think this matchup so rough is the Windwalker Monk is just... I really feel like the Windwalker Monk is very exploitable here. It was back and forth. Uh, it was a close call, but ultimately Novus, all they really need to do, if they can get Trill with no trinket and have Shadowy Duel and Resonators, they can easily take him down. So always have to be uh, watching for that. And uh, we can see exactly how this game played out uh, and uh, how this opener went here for the side of Novus. It was an insane opener. Like they got everything from Trill. They got Trinket Diffuse Karma, I think, right off the rip. Uh, so like that's already like a checkmate position for them. But then in reverse, Trill got everything from Palomar. Like we're only a couple of seconds away from Palomar being dead, but this is the opener. This is where Trill used basically everything. His whole team is CC'd. He sees Combust, he sees Blades. So it's like, oh, that's a Trinket. I'm gonna use Trinket Diffuse Karma and I'm gonna survive this. But then there's still the Shadowy Duel, there's still the Smoke Bomb, and there's still Resonators. So Novus' strategy was, let's pop all our cooldowns, get everything with Trill, and then Resonator him later. Trill turns it around. They literally almost kill Palomar through everything in the game. Sidu gets a restun, spinning crane kick almost eradicates him, and then Big Hill oh. comes out from Whaler at 1%. Palomar, Palomar almost dies, and now he's Palomar is dead next setup. But their strat was to use everything to bait Trinket, and then do this. Stun, Smoke Bomb, Resonator. Did they even end up dueling him on top of the bomb? So they Smoke do, yeah. Bomb is down. Resonators are coming in. See, dude's trying to door into the bomb and he gets dueled CS. He's not getting there. There's no way. So Bomb Resonator plus Combust being a threat for lethal. They know what their win conditions are and they played that really cleanly. Like this is a big improvement uh, for Novus coming down from the upper bracket. Like that was a clear plan that they wanted to follow. They didn't, they didn't choke at the moment where they almost died against Trill and then they executed on it. So... Now that Cedus team has seen that, that they're going to know it's an option. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to combat it, though, because like if you don't trinket trade on bust blades, like I don't think you're surviving. But then if you don't have trinket on dual resonator, I don't think you're surviving. So, like, <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> I'm swab. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I don't think. I think the Windwalker Monk is too exploitable. I really do. <laughs> I mean, maybe... Maybe you could play some sort of like build to survive, but I don't know if it'd be good. Like play Orc with Sefus and play like Kyrian auto stun or something like that. Like maybe <laughs> there's like a universe he could live, but the consistent setups coming in from RMP are just so brutal in this matchup. So I think Team Liquid, I would say they need to make a change. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to see, um, you know, this setup consistently. Sidu obviously going for the door of shadows gets interrupted on it, but it's, it's just a devastating amount of damage. And uh, when you're in a sun as Trill, you can't really do too much. He has port, he has wall, but no access to those <laughs> if you're dying in a kidney shot. Is it just me or did we change the like, environment around us? I think we've been here all day, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. We've been in Maldraxxus all yeah, day. Okay. Checking, just checking. <laughs> just making sure. Uh, just, I think yeah, it's just you. Know, you. Yeah, okay, fine, fine. Uh, but th that last resonator didn't even go off. So yeah, like, overkill. He still had more stuns. Like that, that was an overkill setup. So uh, I, I don't know if, if swapping to orcs, Zephyrs, and all that, it, it might make a difference. But Team Liquid definitely they need to they need to consider okay. everything now uh, because they know what they're up against. Like no one's playing only one setup. So. I think we're going to see the same thing from Team Liquid, but I, I don't know what they're going to do about that opener. That's, that's the thing that scares me because obviously Sidu knows, okay, they might go me. So I'm going to pre Aegis. That's exactly what he did. Um, but then they just go after Trill and they get his trinket and then they get checkmate. And if Sidu triggers to save him, there's always going to be the blind threat and there's also going to be the swap onto Sidu like, uh, that they have to worry about. So. I think a large map for sure is going to be, you know, one step in the right direction because it's going to be a lot harder for Palomore to do what he did there in the end where he literally just set up the whole team, just stealth, stun, 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 uh, and smoke bomb. But uh, still, uh, I feel like it's going to be a tough one uh, for Liquid to crack here. I, I, I will say, I think if they play Windwalker Mage Priest throughout the series, they're going to lose the series. Like, uh, I don't know if they've been practicing, like, DA... I feel like DHDK would be good. Play big zone on the DK. That's an answer uh, to survive. You have darkness as an answer.
to survive. It just makes it so Novos has to go through a lot more trinkets and do a lot more setups in order to win. And uh, I, I think it'll just buy Team Liquid a little bit more time to actually get something rolling. But I don't know how these cleave comps do into RMP. Um, we'll see. Uh, I guess if they're the most confident with Windwalker Mage, uh, that's likely what we're going to be seeing. But I just feel like it's a losing matchup into a good RMP. Yeah, I don't, I don't like Holy Priest from C2 in this matchup. I actually think a Shaman would still be better at least. Getting some extra cooldowns that can go through Shadowy Duel as well is important. Like you can link that bomb Resonator Go. You can Earthen Wall, but that's probably not going to save you, but link <laughs> link the Resonator Go, maybe Ascendant's <laughs> AoE heal. Like getting some AoE heals is going to be important because nobody can really help during that dual Resonator. Um, Trill is vulnerable on the Windwalker. I'd rather not see him on Windwalker. Sam, I am Mage is fine. Yeah, so getting a little bit more AoE okay. heals, getting the revival from the Mistweaver. Surprising to see the Mistweaver actually come from Sidu. Uh, but First Mistweaver. Have, having the revival is going to be really important. Um, having the Life Cocoon for a trade. Fury Warrior, I'm a bit worried. They're going to do the same thing to him. They're going to open with Bust, Blades, bait him to Trinket, Rage Regen, maybe get a Life Cocoon, and then do the Bomb Resonator. That, that's what I think their game plan is going to be off that first round. Um, we'll have to wait and see if that's how they play it out here again. Maybe they mix it up. Maybe they open with a bomb, try and bait something, and don't send anything. Um, bait a trinket, and then combust later. The, like Novus can be flexible here. So Team Liquid, they, they can't get comfortable. This is still a very strange comp. The uh, the Mistweaver, Fury Warrior, Fire Mage. Uh, I almost feel like this would be like a Maro Blizzo comp. Like Looney's team might lock this in or something. But to see Team Liquid locking this in, like we know them traditionally oh. as the Melee Cleave. Sam flexes over to Boomkin every once in a while when it's in the meta. Um, so th this is kind of like treading new waters in, in, from my point of view for them as a team. Um, trying these like Warrior Mage and Windwalker Mage comps, which could be a good investment down the road. But right now, is it going to be the, the correct move? Definitely. I, um, it's hard to say. The one thing I do like about it is instead of like we see that same situation play out. I mean, obviously, it's different compositions. We see that same situation play out where... Mez has no trinket, and he's going to be met with a shadowy dual resonator or a smoke bomb resonator, and he's got no trinket. At least Sidu from range can use revival with Peace Weaver, yeah. um, and that—that's a—I mean, that's basically you, you're not going to die. There's no way you're going to die. Uh, resonators are going to get totally immune. Combustion's going to get totally immune. It just gives them more answers uh, from range. Also, could be a little bit more difficult to get cross CC on Sidu if he can actually port during the stuns. So we're going to have to see a dopamine in good positions to make sure he can actually land that CC. The CD is going to port. So little things like this, um, I, I think make it a little bit less uh, scripted for Novos. They have to you know, deal with a, a few more tools that Team Liquid has available. But I still feel like this is a matchup they should win. Yeah, I, I think so too. I feel like the Fury Warrior is just very exploitable because he doesn't have, you know, like when you think about, you know, Demon Hunters and DKs, like, they, they have, you know, AOE magic uh, or AMZ, you know, they have uh, AMS as well. They just have like those big personal cooldowns that can soak up a lot of that burst potential. And also, uh, you know, uh, things like uh, Icebound 42 and, and, you know, just a lot of ways to kind of prolong the game to a point where they can actually win because that that's one of the uh, weaknesses of the sub rogue is that you're not going to have that same consistent damage every time we see a sub rogue play they're always going for restuffs they're always going for setups and burst so uh, that's going to be the downside you know but um with that fury warrior you really only have that trinket and then you know using things like your enraged regen to uh, reduce the damage and survive one time but it's kind of the same thing as what we saw with the uh windwalker and as well with the mist weaver um, it's going to also be kind of a target that you could potentially take down in a stun as well. So a little bit worried about that. So he's going to be playing uh, Vent here, uh, Mist Weaver as well. Going to see exactly how they decide to open up here. Game number two between Team Liquid and Novos. Asherman's Fault, great map for Team Liquid. Currently down one map here. And this is the debut of Mez uh, for Liquid. So you're going to see exactly what he can do. He's been a key player in the past and he's going to need to do it again. All right, this opener could be explosive. Where are they going to start? Ring of Frost on Sidu, Paralyze on Waylor. Mez going to leap over to Dopamine. Spear Bastion down onto Dopamine, targeting down the mage for now, but Palomar peels him away, dismantle the setting up on Sidu. Smoke Bomb gets dropped. Massive damage on the Sidu. He's counting, but that's it. Easy KO. Novos going to match point. And that's exactly oh, what no. I was That's exactly what I was just talking about. Mistweaver can definitely be a, a target as well. 
and uh, disaster in game number three for Liquid. And this is an elimination match as well. It certainly is. You're not wrong about that. So that is not the situation you want to see. I mean, I, I want to see all the cooldowns that was committed by Novos there because I feel like CU may have greeted it. He had to use his trinket, but uh, a revival, a cocoon, uh, something, it may have actually kept yeah. him alive. He went for the cheat torpedo oh. and just got deleted what through it. What counterspelled him? Like, how did he, I swear he was in a ring and he got CS. Like, he was CS while he was stunned. I, I want to see when the counterspell landed, or at least that's what I saw in the UI was a counterspell, which yeah, surprised yeah. me. So, all right, let's see exactly how this one plays out. All right, so Polymer moves forward, gets the sap onto Sidu. Mez turning uh, into a Beyblade, trying to get the uh, Rogue out of stealth right now. Sidu into a full Ring of Frost. Does he just get interrupted? Is that what happens? He goes right for here? like... Um, yeah, Soothing Mez, he gets yep. kicked. Kick Ooh, kidney. So over. he can't do anything. That, that... The only thing he could have done is Fortifying Brew. If he actually used Fortifying Brew there, he probably would have lived, in all honesty. Like, that was his only answer, because I, I do believe... I'm 99.9% .9 sure you can use Fortifying Brew while you are interrupted, and it gives you a little bit of a shield. Um, so likely would have actually survived there. So a bit of a misplay from Sidu. Maybe maybe he kind of forgot that he was interrupted, and he trinketed and tried to just use Revival. Um, and that was like the only button he could press, but didn't realize that he was still interrupted. But, I mean, if you're a Novos, you are so happy with what just happened. Look at Polymore. He's yeah. <laughs> so excited. By the way, it's really, really nice. I don't know if everybody yeah. uh, watching... I noticed, but in the replays now, we actually have the player cams, which has uh, been a great addition. Yeah, production has been stepping up big time. We'd love to see that. And another thing that you love to see is exactly what you mentioned there, Ben, uh, especially from a lot of these newer uh, players competing. We saw it earlier as well with uh, Zen Chang. They're just so excited. Like it, 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 we saw it yesterday as well with, uh, with you know with Luxia and, and uh, some of the European players. They just get so fired up. They get so excited. And I mean, why not? It's a big, big moment for them. It's their first AWC here on Novos and potentially uh, taking out Team Liquid. I mean, they got them on match point right now after a quick 2-0. Uh, they had two quick back-to-back -back wins here. And uh, I, I don't know, what, what is Team Liquid going to do here to to bring it back? They need, I, they need to find a comp. The good news for them is that, you know, Novos only plays that RMP, right? So they just need to find something that can beat RMP. Uh, Three to zero on every map, and if they decide to respect <laughs> assassination, you know, just it's easy. Find something that beats RMP. Hmm, thinking <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be tough. That should be easy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe what gear were they wearing? I want to look. Like, well, were they we've wearing actually seen what or were they wearing full verse? Because we saw Zpi wear full verse when when he thought he was gonna be the target. So I'm Dude, curious. Dude, we actually we've seen one comp beat RMP. Ellie RMP. Oh, well, Ellie Mage beat <laughs> it too. Did Ellie Mage Arm beat it? Yeah, Z by. What RMP? First series of the day beat? yesterday. They beat uh, yesterday. It was RMP. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, but didn't they. That's true. They didn't lose a game, I, feel like they, I don't think. Didn't they lose right away to Raikou? I think they did. Hmm. No, they didn't. They didn't they fight didn't Raikou yet. Yeah, Raikou's still in the upper bracket. They lost. Oh, okay. um, oh yeah, you're right. They lost the wizard mirror against Swapsy's wizards. Um, yeah. I think maybe if Sidu plays Holy Priest, he should play Res Legendary. That at least removes a little bit of the vulnerability for the Holy <laughs> Priest. Like, he can use his trinket to save Trill and then still have the Res Legendary later on to save himself. Because that's one of the things is the Holy Priest is that you just run out so fast. But all the Holy Priests we've seen that beat the RMPs were running Res Lego. So it wasn't I... an option to all in the Holy Priest. Is it? Do we see that? A little comp? sneak peek? Is it the same comp? I really want DHDK. I'm gonna keep saying it over and over and over. I, I I just I don't know if like maybe maybe Fire Mage Warrior could work, but from what we've seen in the tournament so far, Rogue Mage just beats Warrior Mage. But they're gonna lock it in. Try once again. I mean, that that's one of the things is when you try a new composition. This is what feels especially bad if you're Team Liquid. You try a new composition and you get no data from that last game. Like yeah. it was, I don't want to say it was a fluke kill, but I mean. Uh, Sidu basically it didn't have the best, didn't have the best time in that one. He didn't get to press a single button, <laughs> quite honestly. He just pressed soothing mist, got interrupted, and died. So that was his game, and you basically get no data. Like, is it going to be good? Was that just a complete fluke? I mean, that could that could maybe happen again. I think it's unlikely he gets interrupted and put in a stun, but it is possible. Um, I do like Novos playing so aggressive, though. It seems like they have a clear game plan. They're able to execute, and this has been a really good series from them so far. Absolutely. But another thing that's interesting is the map. 
why did they pick hook point because in the previous game they picked you know ashermans it's like okay yeah they're gonna have a lot of distance you know make it tough for the sub rogue to get those big uh cc chains set up but on hook point you're all stacked up uh, you know you're within shadow step range basically so it's gonna be an easy time for powder more to get those setups so i'm not sure unless they're going for like a, maybe a priest all in it doesn't really make a lot of sense uh, to me at least to go for that hook point map pick but Maybe they're just thinking, well, we're going to probably have to play on hook point anyway if they pick it, so we may as well pick it. I'm not really sure uh, what the mental state is like here. You do trying to fake out some soothing mists here. Playing with fire a little bit there. He gets sapped. Oh. Dragon's Breath onto Mez, and Mez is going to be the target here. How is he going to respond? Pre enraged region here by Mez. Nicely done. Sam, I am going to be the target. Trinket there to swap back onto Mez. So uh, this is. Oh, yes. Mez! Uh, I, was, I was about to say. See you next week. Yeah, I mean, that's literally their tournament lives. That, I mean, Team Liquid has to be disappointed with that one. They basically had two throw games back to back. Really unfortunate. Polymore's happy. He's having a great time. He's going to be, like, Let's go. He's gonna be advancing. We're, we're going to see him tomorrow, but unfortunately for Team Liquid, um, not the best series we've seen from them. Yeah, I mean, Mez pre and Rage region there. So he's like, all right, I'm fine. And I was just about well, to say, yeah, Mez you can use looks it like stunned. he. Okay, fair stuff. enough. Fair enough, for Mez. It, it looks like I okay, didn't know that for the record. He, yeah, I mean, how often do we see Fury Warrior, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, he uses his defensive cooldown on a hundred percent HP. Let's just put it like that. And they even swap over. The, 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 the crazy thing here is they just do like a mid go swap to Samayam quickly with a smoke bomb and then go back to Mez. I mean, look at that. They force out his string and they're like, all right, let's go back to Mez here for a second. Cheap shot Sidu and the combustion just takes him out and the Sidu. What can he actually do there? If he trinkets, well, there's a full blind waiting for you. You would have to trinket pre-cocoon it, and even then, uh, they might just go through that. So uh, we're going to see it a couple of more times probably, but I really don't know what they could have done here. I, it's got to be finding a better comp, I feel like. Uh, it's just they're all so vulnerable. I saw Fury Warrior just dies through its own... I mean, Mez did die through his cooldowns. He could have rallied here. Rally, spell reflect, like spell reflect that pyro. Like He could have used his own remaining buttons i think it would have kept them alive for cd to get out of the chain uh, but then you lose the rally for somebody else it, they should have gone for rally rally should have been yeah. used um and that probably kept them alive right there it's just you don't expect to die right like the rmp just went you and it's like oh, i walled now they're going mage so you're like oh, i'm safe now right like you get it you get comfortable like you survive the first stun you're thinking like okay it's my turn to get aggressive now and then they just come back to you and kill you without even having a stun. So it can be really rough when that happens. Uh, and it just seems like uh, Novus, uh, was this the team that sent Liquid down to the lower bracket? I, I kind of think that it was. Uh, it if my been, memory yeah. is, is serving me properly. So this is like two times they've lost to it. And there's a bunch of other rogue mages in the competition. So I think the lesson from this is to get a good comp and get a good strap for rogue mage priests like you, you're gonna need it you're gonna yeah. need it. I, I think i think if you don't got it if you don't got it, it you ain't right going now. nowhere like you're just you got you gotta have something for rmp yeah that's, ah. that's great advice for all the competitors figure out something to beat rmp and do it fast <laughs> profit yeah yeah <laughs> well i Certainly um, an unfortunate way for things to end for Team Liquid. That was a super quick series, but absolutely, I mean, well done to Novus, new, you know, newcomers to the AWC competition. Uh, their name, Novus, means Latin or means new in Latin. So, I, and they just, they showed up and they showed up to win. And I, I'm really excited. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this team for sure. They're going to be heading off uh, to Championship Sunday. So we will get to see them again. But unfortunately, that is the end of Team Liquid for this weekend. And that wraps up that match. And now we're going to be moving on to another elimination round, another elimination match for our very last one of the day. It's going to be Cloud9 versus Golden Guardians. And the last time that we saw this team, I think Zico, maybe it was you who was saying you were a little worried about Cloud9 versus Golden Guardians. Absolutely. I mean, we just saw Cloud9 get absolutely dismantled by Kawaii. And they, guess what they played? Rogue Shadow Priest, uh, Holy Paladin. Well, guess what the Golden Guardians plays? And you could maybe argue that they're a little bit better at it because it's their main composition. Rogue Shadow Priest, sure, they don't have the Paladin, but still, they have Absters on that Shaman. And I mean, he has Plex to Paladin as well in the past, so it's not like uh, it's impossible that we see them bring it in. Uh, but still, that would be a kind of a rough matchup, and I really hope that either Cloud9 swaps their composition or that Cloud9 has maybe prepared something. Maybe they're swapping talent, swapping gear, trinkets, whatever it might be, 
to actually deal with this rogue shadow priest because so far it's been a bane in their existence. Uh, Looks like you got something to say, Ivan. I don't know. I you know you know what I think they might actually run. So I think there's a bit of a mind game going on because Brain plays plays Paladin. Uh, Chun Li is a bit afraid to play Windwalker Monk because you can negate a lot of those mm -hmm. defensives with the blessing of protection and kind of all in. But the fact that Absurd is playing Shaman. I actually think what they're going to run is Frost Mage, Windwalker, Druid, which is something we saw them play in the open bracket, and maybe Chun Li will be able to play his Windwalker uh, in the match. Oh, okay. Well, a little bit of spin to win. I, I like it. Yeah, it'd be, I'm excited to see what these guys bring in uh, into this first game up next, but we have to go to a break first, and when we come back, it's going to be one last series of the day. Someone is going home, and it's Cloud9 versus Golden Guardians up next. Be right back. Cloud nine out. Um, quite frankly, they lost to the best team in North America. I mean, so yeah, it doesn't. It's not necessarily representative of how they'll do against the rest of the teams. I, I still think they're really, really strong, and likely, I think they'll switch it up. Uh, I, I think my prediction for this game number one uh, would be Golden Guardians locking the RPS and uh, Cloud nine locking the Windwalker Frost Mage Resto Druid. Um, something that is interesting. Um, a composition that we saw yesterday in Europe, which is the Shadow Priest Hunter, Survival Hunter, 
I think is actually pretty good in the yeah. mage lock. Like you basically just play it as two casters, put up dots, bring the game into dampening, and just kind of out attrition the mage lock because you don't really have to cast that many spells, um, and they they kind of do if they want to get off effective damage. So. Uh, I think if Cloud9 does play the Hunter Frost Mage, that Golden Guardians can actually throw them a curveball with the Survival Shadow Priest, and uh, I think it's a good matchup. So we'll see lots of different options. I think this is one of those series with how many comps they have that could go down to uh, a game five uh, based off of who wins the blind pick. Yeah, that blind, I mean, as we know, when teams are, you know, at the level that they are, that blind pick can be absolutely crucial. I mean, we've seen uh, just devastating mistakes made and you know you're not making the right choice for a counter pick um and then you just end up getting offset for the entire the entire series if it goes to game five uh it can be very very intense but what do you what do you think super Tease? what would you like to see coming out from cloud nine as we head into this game three words three words sure first one starts with b <laughs> second one starts with o third one starts with b any ideas the last Spring word on the Spring. beans Bring out the beans, bring out the beans, bring whatever it is. Bring the out the beans. It's time for jelly beans. Like, come on, man. Hunter Shadow Priest, this is the team that you've got to be bringing out jelly beans, I think. Even though you just saw Shadow Priest Rogue Paladin, we don't see Absurds on Paladin too often, although I know like he could break it out. I think the Shaman Hunter Shadow Priest would be a nightmare for a Frost Mage, just running him down. Even as BM, uh, BM Hunter Shadow Priest even, would be really tough for the Frost Mage. Just trade with the Marksman Hunter's cooldowns run down the mage with spam purge um, and multiple interrupts and grounding. Like, I, I think it would be really tough uh, for Cloud9. So I, I would like to see Jelly Beans. Definitely a game one Jelly Beans. Do we want to chant? Do we want to try and chant to bring them out? That didn't work last time. I know. I don't want to do it. Man. And honestly, we, we, no, honestly no we're kind of terrible it. at it, so I don't think it's, it, true. it's not going to work. <laughs> we got to level up our chanting if we're going to use the chanting. You're right. We'll have to practice yeah. them maybe for Cup 2. We can come back and, uh, and then maybe we can get a little bit better at it but uh, you know in the meantime we can't talk about the match record between these two teams golden guardians they have a two to three match record this expansion versus cloud nine uh that was of course with their old roster i know that this is uh just a little bit maybe growing pains that we're seeing with cloud nine obviously these are very experienced players all four of them but i think just if you head into a cup uh just you know with with a brand new roster such as this, it's going to take a couple of games to to find that synergy. But on, on the other hand, Zico, this is Cloud Nine. Like these are very, very veteran players. So maybe I'm wrong in that statement. I, well, I, I think ben, one thing that's <laughs> one thing that's important to say is just they only they, like they they won all their games. They lost to Kauai. I mean, you know, <laughs> you're right. the best uh, to expand so. on that. To expand on that. Yeah, expand the on old that. Old Cloud but... Nine also consistently lost to Hawaii. <laughs> so everybody, everybody. So right. It's the same result so far. Let me take that back. There's no growing no. pains with them. No, Nothing. They're, they're, they're still might There could be, like but Kauai. we don't know yet. <laughs> yeah. There could be, but I don't think it going up against Kawhi and losing is a good representation. Definitely like, not. It's not representative of how strong their team is because everyone loses to them. That's true. Even they if they lose to the Golden Guardians, I don't think it's that representative as well because I mean, these are technically the two hardest teams for Cloud9 historically uh, yeah. last season. So uh, you said you have two to three, uh, you know, series record. And that's against, you know, the old Cloud9 playing Mage Lock, like really uh, one team that usually could crack them here and there uh, would be, you know, Golden Guardians. So and uh, seeing that we had a preview of that last game and the fact that the Golden Guardians are basically playing the same comp. I would say the Golden Guardians should maybe be a little bit favored here, unless Cloud9 shake things up here. They bring in Chun-Li on the Windwalker, they bring in Cubsy on DPS, and they maybe have something mixed up there. Uh, it really depends on what Cloud9 are bringing, but based off of what we've seen, I would say the Golden Guardians uh, have a bit of an advantage here. And uh, another thing that's kind of crazy is that we just sent home Team Liquid, and now we're going to send home either Cloud9 or Golden Guardians. Like These are you know, some of the top orgs in NA, and they're all in the lower bracket fighting for their lives. Like, how crazy is the competition right now when you have, you know, newcomers that take soaking up all these spots? Newcomers yeah. and Kawi, of course. Kawi's not new at all. Uh, they're they're kind yeah, of respected. Um, yeah. I, I feel like they're asserting <laughs> dominance. Like, if the new generation can't take them out on Sunday, I'm thinking we're living in a, a Kawi world here, uh, at least for the first cup. But like you said, I feel like what Golden Guardians have struggled with actually has been the Cleaves. I feel like Cowie and Cloud9 in previous seasons usually locked Turbo into them. 
and the Golden Guardians would play Rhett Hunter, and they'd be like really struggling to figure out what comp they could do to deal with the cleave. So Cloud Nine actually might pick a cleave, um, even though like they've played tons of games as the Frost Mage Hunter. They, if Cubsy does play Warrior, like they could pick up Turbo between Cubsy and Wealthy Man. They could even do Windwalker Enhance if they wanted to, or Windwalker Warrior. That comp kind of disappeared, but used to be a really good Shadow Priest Slayer. Uh, and those cleaves have been what's rough for Golden Guardians. Like, they got knocked down here um, by Zan Chang on the Ret Warrior. Like, Ret Warrior just ran them over. So if you've got a melee cleave, uh, it seems like that is the best thing to lock into the Golden Guardians. So I don't really even want to see this Frost Mage Hunter comp uh, from Cloud9 if they have if they have one of those cleave options. Mm. No, I, you know, and back to your earlier point, Sid, it is so weird. And it, it was the same story over in Europe, too. It's just like these really big names, these really strong teams are getting knocked out early. Um, and I think with North America, it's a little bit different in that these really new rosters are the ones that are also really rising to the top and surprising us quite a bit. I feel like I'm, especially since it's only Cup 1, I'm so excited to see where really where both of these regions go. But since we're in North America right now, obviously that's a little bit more relevant. But uh, I mean, brand new teams knocking down really legendary uh, teams that we've seen in the AWC for so long, one of them being Wealthy Man here. Uh, he is, of course, on Cloud9 that we're going to be seeing in just a couple moments here once that game is ready to go. But, I, I mean, just look at the stats on this guy. I mean, he's an insane player, Ben. Yep. Plays a lot for them. 96% uh, play rate. Um, I mean, the interrupt rate and juke rate. Looking solid. Uh, but, yeah, the one thing I've always liked about Wealthy Man is he uh, is willing to bust out the Frost Mage. You know, he plays Fire, too. Exceptional at Fire. Um, but yeah, it really makes it work. I'm curious to see if they can make it work outside of the Mage Lock. Uh, we saw it with the Mage Hunter. Fortunately, it didn't work out against Kawhi, but I still think there's potential with that composition. Uh, I'm curious to see what they decide to do for game number one, and if they are going to implement Wealthy Men, or maybe we see Cubsy locked on something. Um, I don't know if he's going to be bringing in the Warrior, if he's going to be bringing in the Warlock, if he's been practicing Shadow Priest, but uh, I feel like there is options for Cloud9, and they could have some you know tricks up their sleeve uh, you can see cubsy this is the more interesting <laughs> one is he plays paladin That's such and a great Rusto picture Drew. yeah he has 100 percent play rate well not anymore these stats this must have been last season He's, yeah i mean he didn't play in that it's last year across series, shadowlands so. i think mm, this this is yeah, this, this is, is all of shadowlands. okay this is the all sites. of shadowlands yeah. not including today so outside of today for cloud nine 100 pick rate as the healer i mean that's pretty standard um but now kind of having to watch flop um, perform on the restoration grid and Cubs is going to be flexing on that uh, DPS so we'll see getting into grand here very shortly okay, I really well, like let's... his gamer pose the... no, oh, gamer was... pose? yeah yeah no he, he definitely has Maro beat on that one that's true it's a good one real casual too got the, got the smile and the sunglasses going but it's game number one here <laughs> loser of this series going home cloud nine versus golden guardians oh points for Maruki there uh, with the prediction Resto Druid and that Windwalker Frost Mage are going to be coming out here. Necro Lord once again from Wealthy Man. Currently also uh, going to be now he's going to be playing that Kyrian and Flop is also going to be playing that Necro Lord. Sydney shot onto Chun Li. Peekaboo going to be playing Assassination. RPS coming out from the Golden Guardian. So this is basically what Cloud9 uh, was expecting. And now let's see how they can perform here. The opener hasn't really forced out too much here for the Golden Guardians. Big damage coming out immediately from Wealthy Man. Look at him just parsing out those cross bolts such a fast cast time on those and peekaboo uh, does shut it down with a kick mind control onto chun li resheat there onto absturge they're gonna swap over to absturge maybe nice the kidney shot into smoke from here onto chun li oh, it needs to be very oh the ice wall beautifully done look at that that smoke bomb gets nothing because of that ice wall beautifully done there by what nice plays so far here by cloud nine Let's see if they can execute for a kill here in the near future. Chun Li still has another set of images ready to pop. Leg sweep coming up in eight seconds. Flop staying in the back line, keeping Golden Guardians pinned at the moment, trying to starve their resources, killing their healing tide totem. Nicely done by Chun Li. That's a powerful healing effect you need to get rid of against the rest of Shaman. They're stacked up for a double leg sweep. They're swapping to the Shadow Priest. WizK immediately trinkets and trades the greater fade. Peekaboo swaps back to Chun Li, peeling him away in the kidney shot while Abster just cyclone. Flop jumps in, bashes Peekaboo. They could swap back to Peekaboo on the bash. How much damage do they have though? Ring of Peace knocking everyone away. Spinning Crane Kick, he didn't want to break the Polymorph, which is why he did that knockback. That was a nice preemptive move by Chun-Li to try and get some damage out without breaking CC, but the pressure is not too high at the moment. Getting the Shadow Priest Trinket, not a big value. You can still use Dispersion, and getting the Rogue Trinket would be much more high value here. Moonwalker Frost Mage 
if, unless they're looking to drag this out into deep dampening, their early game is looking pretty lackluster. And it's kind of the nature of Frost Mage. You pop all your cooldowns, you're really scary, they run away, and then outside of your cooldowns, you're kind of just waiting till your cooldowns are back up. Um, so uh, I think Cloud9 they just need to hold on and then try to overwhelm when they do have that Deathborn available. Chunli going to be moving over to WizK, putting out a decent amount of consistent damage. Flop way behind on mana, so at some point, Flop's going to have to go for a drink here, recover that mana, because I think it's going to be a big win condition for them. WizK getting the wall. walled off. Big Fist of Fury here. Looks like Wizk will just trade out the dispersion. Doesn't want to mess around getting behind the pillar, but now won't have that available for Deathborn, which is up in about. Oh, seconds. whoa! Okay, good night. That wall got value, bro. That wall got so much value. Look at the replay. Like Wizk ran all the way around the wall, and they're like, "Okay, we can't hit you." While well, Peekaboo's still out of line of sight from the wall, so <laughs> we're just gonna completely erase him instead. Like. That was definitely a game-winning ice wall, and you'll see it in the replay. They were not ready for that at all onto Peekaboo, it looked like. I want to see what options they had. I feel like they did have options and cooldowns that they could have sure traded, but they did not expect that amount of damage. Uh, and I'm, I'm really anticipating this replay because that wall was so clutch. It's like the first time we really get to see it. I know Vinruki's probably got a ton of clips on his own own content of the ice <laughs> walls, but like the first time in AWC where the ice wall gets to to take a game. So when, when we do get it, you'll see Wealthy Man place the wall at line of sights, uh, Absturge away from Wizcape. And instead of killing the wall, Wizcape decides to run the long way around the pillar. And while he's running the long way around the pillar, they just switch to Peekaboo instead. Uh, and that wall was still up and it can be quite difficult to take down especially for casters uh, melee dps not so bad even rogue can be really pretty tough to take down the wall so it's it's a really good pick for them um that, that was just a nice swap Ooh. really good setup by them huge value i was questioning their early game because the damage was looking a little bit low and i think it's this moment right here where we'll see wealthy man that's who you want to be watching right now he gets an ice wall around the corner on this pillar to the left where Absturge is, and it blocks his line of sight so that he can't heal WizK and he can't heal Peekaboo. Right here, Ice Wall, right there, blocks the line of sight. And WizK is like, okay, I'm gonna move around the pillar and get away, because I don't want to die and I can't kill the wall. But Peekaboo is sheeped on the other side of the wall. So they're still behind the wall, and then they just go for this insane what? damage. Like, <laughs> it was, what was that? It was a just, I mean, Peekaboo. Yeah, Peekaboo didn't use anything. It was a spinning crane kick into a rising sun kick, but I mean, that was... Peekaboo traded his Aegis, and I think he forgot that Windwalker monks don't care about that. They just punch you. <laughs> you know, like, just punch and kick you. So he used the Aegis, maybe giving him a false sense of security, and he just got deleted. Because, I mean, if we could actually see that replay again, I feel like Peekaboo had a lot of answers. Like, basically every single Everything. cooldown. So, very, very spiky. I like Cloud9. Uh, for a couple different reasons. They're playing all my favorite builds right now. Chun-Li's playing Kyrian Windwalker Monk, which makes me smile. Wealthy Man's playing Necrolith Frost Mage. And yeah, it, it's nice to see, but I, I definitely, I, I feel like um, Golden Guardians, like that matchup actually wasn't looking too bad for them. So let's look. Peekaboo literally has every button in the game. He's got Trinket, he's got Evasion, he's got Cloak of Shadows. Um, and it's just Chun-Li literally just walks up to him, presses Spinning Crane Kick. He presses his Aegis, which absorbs magic damage. And Chun Li kicks him with a rising sun kick and deletes him. So you look right here. This is another one of those games, unfortunately, for Golden Guardians. I feel like they had just so many answers. Look at this. All right, there's the pre faint. Oh, Piggy was dead. So it was a lot of damage, but I mean, there was he, cooldowns to trade for it. Did he fist the fury of Whiskey and not use his rising sun kick? He's playing the legendary where he gets extra crit. I think that's maybe what happened because he dispersed during the fist of fury, so he just saved it. And, uh, yeah. It only lasts five seconds though, so I don't know if that was still available. Could just be okay, crits, probably, you know. You yeah, maybe you just got a crit on. Yeah. yeah, maybe you just got a lucky crit. That's, that's insane though. He was like thirty <laughs> percent. Not anymore. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Asher means uh, fall. Gonna be the next map. And what is the Golden Guardians gonna do? Are they gonna lock in the same? Probably gonna. I... Yeah. Is it time for the for the Shadow Breeze Hunter? I feel like if there's that's another one of those games. It it's like the last series. It's kind of like the last series we just saw. Uh, like, I feel like Liquid still doesn't know if Warrior Mage <laughs> was super <laughs> good into RMP because, you know, both games were over instantly. I mean, they, they didn't really get much data. I mean, Piku had uh, so many buttons to trade. So, one thing uh, that is interesting, I don't know if WizK knows this. Um, and I, I don't really like to reveal these secrets because it's annoying, mm -hmm. but you can actually mass dispel wall. 
So you can literally just cast Master Spell on wall and instantly really delete <laughs> it. So you don't like to reveal the mage secrets, huh? Yeah, I don't like you know, <laughs> cross mages everywhere are getting mad at me right now. But that is an option for Golden Guardians too. Like WizK could have just Master Spelled the wall, and maybe um, they could have been in a position a little bit easier to actually get those heals on Peekaboo. Ride or die, RPS to the grave for the Golden Guardians. They've been golden playing guard, this true garden, golden guardians so, fashion, yeah. <laughs> they're gonna go out, they're going out playing RPS uh, from the Golden Guardians in Cup One. That was a surprising amount of damage. Um, so now the Golden Guardians know that potential is there uh, moving forward for the rest of the series. Their offense, though, they were running cup flop out of mana frequently throughout that game. Like he had to run back, drink, run back, drink, run back, drink. So I feel like if the Golden Guardians can hold their defense together, like they, they could still take this even with the RPS. Obviously, they think as well, so they would have changed it at this point, I think. Uh, so it's going to be an exciting series. Good to see Cloud9 uh, get some performance here as well after that upper bracket round where they didn't really get to get fully unlocked. Uh, so it is nice to see them come in here uh, and start putting on a show here. And this is exactly when they need it. This is their last line. If they fail, they're out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is just kind of a brutal series, similar to what we saw in Europe. Some really top teams uh, facing elimination. So they got to rise to the occasion if they want to make it uh, to tomorrow's games, Championship Sunday, um, to see who ultimately will you know, win the first cup in the region, which you definitely want to do. Picking up those early points and that momentum for the season, uh, I think is really, really important. Uh, but yeah, interesting comps. RPS, kind of standard. Uh, the Windwalker Frost Mage, it definitely... Cloud9, as always, even when Snuts and Channel are on the team, they're always running these compositions that are a little bit unique to them. Um, and we'll see if they can make it work here in game number two. Yeah, and that's something that actually gives Cloud9 a nice edge because you don't really, like, even when they were dominating a lot with Mage Lock, there wasn't really that many other teams running it. So it wasn't a good way to get practice into it. And that's something I guess Golden Guardians as well have going for them. Uh, I mean, right now, Kawhi, uh, of course, also playing that Rogue Shadow Priest, but most of the time uh, people don't play that comp so you don't really get practice into it unless you fight off unless you pay with your awc points against the board. so uh, it's an uh, interesting uh, kind of adaptation for them uh, that uh, their compositions uh, can bring them but now the game is live ice wall first global here from wealthy man big damage coming out onto chan uh, by whiskey whiskey's gonna get cheaped up looks like might be going for him there. Big damage coming out onto Whiskey here. Will he trade the dispersion for that Lex Reef? That is the question. Um, Surge looks like he's going to be able to deflect this one. Or the Wall Totem should be enough defense there. But look at Wealth and he's just stacking those Frost Bolts with that Deathborn. Looking for that damage. Pick up in a Cyclone right now. And they find anything more. Could they maybe swap here? It doesn't look like it. Masterful getting free casted there on the Sheep. Nicely done there by Whiskey. Kidney shot onto Chan. Stun onto Flop. Potential uh, silence as well there. And Chan is going to respect the putting out the Aegis as well as that. All right, let's see if they can keep it up here in terms of offense. Peekaboo trading evasion. Faint trying to tank the hits of Chun Li here, but Chun Li still has Zwen. He's going to pop that out onto Whiskey. Knock Absturge away and trying to isolate Whiskey. Huge damage potential. Big heals, though, come in from Absturge, stabilizing Whiskey. Peekaboo Shadow steps into the Windwalker, making a swap. We see the Unholy Nova Siphine combo on Chun Li, but Peekaboo is in Polymorph. He cannot get enough damage out. Chun Li going to reposition, put his port down at the pillar, punch away at the Siphine, get rid of that threat. Flop spending a lot of mana right now it looks like he wants to go for a drink with a cyclone on peekaboo which is a great time to do it whiskey is counterspelled abster just drinking as well both teams preparing for a potential long match here we'll have to wait and see if whiskey gets good purges during a vendetta wealthy man or chun li could be overwhelmed still flop lining up that adaptive swarm scenarian ward up on chun li big hots on chun li big setup on peekaboo abster moving in position gets walled off from his team he is able to reposition and get some big riptides out on Peekaboo. Chun Li's gonna retreat back behind the pillar, but then he's left behind. So he's gonna relay his portal in a better defensive position with his healer so he can escape if he needs to. Here comes Vendetta, big damage over onto Wealthy Man. This is where Whiskey is gonna be mashing Purge, removing as many hots as possible during the blind. Peekaboo still gets the sap despite the Ring of Peace. Flop is still crowd controlled. They're trying to remove those barriers from Wealthy Man. They stun Chun Li, trying to go for the Siphon, but it looks like the Siphon is gonna get sniped out immediately. Still decent damage onto Wealthy Man. Flop struggling to recover. 
cover, going for the Swift Men, Adaptive Swarm onto Chun-Li, he thinks Chun-Li is going to get swapped to, so he's preparing for that by committing the Adaptive Swarm to him right now. Big Boo polymorphed out in midfield, Chun-Li trading Karma, again a bit prematurely, just maybe to add some extra damage to Shadow Priest, stay on target. Big Boo, they've got great control on him, I love that they're dragging him out into the open, sheeping him three times, rooting him three times, cycloning him three times, it's basically Big Boo is out of the game right now, and Wizk is just tanking a Windwalker Muck. Probably maybe his number one hated spec on the Shadow Priest. I feel like more often than not, when there's a Windwalker, Wizk is in a lot of trouble. Here comes another setup on the Peekaboo, but they grip him into Ooh. a triple leg sweep. Chun Li with a nice punish on that. It's going to get Wizk's medallion, but they're repositioning with Ring of Peace, trying to avoid the reconnect. Wizk is going to greater fade, trying line of sight on the icy veins. Absurge getting left behind. I don't think they want to go after Absurge, though. Kidney shot on Chun Li. Wizk is setting up a Siphine behind the pillar. Wealthy Man can't kill it, I think. A Siphine could get some big value on Chun Li. He's going to try and line it as fast as possible. Peekaboo gets blasted. What on earth, man? There's looking at Peekaboo for a moment. He loses half his health. But oh, the ice wall. Line of sighting Peekaboo from his team. He's trying to soul shape back to him. But if they stack up, that leg sweep is going to be a threat. If they run out into the open, the ice wall is going to isolate them. This is going to be a dangerous dance that the Golden Guardians need to do. I don't I don't love that Wealthy Man is splitting up his icy veins and his Deathborn, because now he has his Deathborn available, but doesn't really have the veins to kind of back it up, which is really important. chun -Li getting swapped to right now. He's playing Kyrian with the auto stun, so he's going to have a little bit more durability if Peekaboo gets him low. Uh, he's going to automatically stun him. He has the file as well to keep himself alive. A little bit of damage now onto Wizk. If we look at mana, Flop is actually behind, so Flop's going to have to manage his mana. He's going to need to sit down for a drink at some point in this game. He wants to recover. Polymorph onto Absurd. Wizk just blasting Chun-Li, but it's actually Peekaboo on the back foot. He's taking tons of damage, forced to trade out his Vanish, as Cloud9 has a lot of momentum right now. Deathborn mm. active for a wealthy man. WizK getting interrupted. Potentially could go after him as well. And it just seems like Cloud9, what they're trying to do is just survive, put on the pressure, and uh, making it really difficult for Golden Guardians to actually get the setups you'd like to see if you're playing RPS. Yeah, and uh, Peekaboo still struggling here in that disarm. Absurd mana not looking great comparatively to Flop. He's been able to sit down for a few drinks, and uh, Absurd is going to have to try to get a drink of his own maybe later on in the game, but Chan Lee. Getting out the touch of karma here, and that vendetta is coming up for Peekaboo. That could be uh, an opportunity here to maybe go after Chun, maybe get his trinket there at least. Nice leg sweep coming out. There's the kidney. There's the vendetta. Iron Bar coming out. Chun Li getting absolutely cracked, and he is gonna go down immediately. Instant punish on that touch of karma. Wow. I mean, that was an unbelievable amount of damage. I have to see that in the replay. Cause Flop, I don't, was Flop in any crowd control there? Was he silenced? He did end up leaking in, but I don't know if he was actually in any crowd control. Perhaps Cloud9 could have played those last few moments a little bit safer. Their strategy seemed to be, uh, you know, doing okay. Uh, Flop, I think, actually recovered some of his mana drinking, but Golden Guardian's really punishing Chun-Li there with a huge hit of damage. Likely going to be that big shiv, big vendetta, and uh, they're able to drop him really quickly in game number two. I want to he see, had that Iron see Bark what active. Happened. I think he had Iron Bark active, but I think he got silenced towards the end of that push, but just uh, the Mandata. I, I think, wait, Chun had Trinket as well, so I don't think he Trinketed either, unless he did very late. I, I, well, let's just see. Let's just see what happened. Sid, walk us through it. Yeah. I mean, right here, Chun Li was using Karma, like premeditated a lot of the time just to stay on target. Uh, and then during the big Vendetta pushes, if they're stacked up and double purges there between Absurge and WizK, they can just strip off all the hots on Chun-Li and they pop a Siphene, pop a Hemotoxin. He's taking no hots. He's got no incoming healing. That's exactly what they want. And that's exactly what happened at the end of here. So we're waiting to see. So he Karmas, again, this is like premeditated. He still is Trinket. He could just Trinket Karma, but he pre-Karmas. And so the Karma's out of the way. He doesn't have Diffuse. Diffuse is like the big one for him to be able to survive, reversing all the dots, taking huge magic damage. He thinks he's safe to get aggressive. He gets Kidney Shot. He gets pre-Iron Bark, but Iron Bark, we don't care. They're dropping Resonators, Vendettas, oh. Purges, and Siphene. So Iron Bark not going to be enough to keep him alive during that burst and Golden Guardians returning the favor for game one. Wow. I mean, that was remarkable. I was just a silence on the Iron Bark, but yeah, Vendetta, Assassination Rogues right now, very strong. And Peekaboo obviously knows how to get it done, putting out that burst damage. That was, this gets really, really interesting. I, I mean, I, I kind of wonder if we're going to see them continue to play the same, the same composition here. Um, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the series of Cloud, you know, between these two teams, 
whatever team ends up winning the blind pick will likely have uh, an edge because uh, they can counter comp and change the map. Um, I, I wonder if Cloud9 is going to switch it up. And if they are, what would they switch to? I don't know if they actually have a better answer. We just saw their Hunter Frost Mage lose to Shadow Priest Rogue. Maybe it's different with Paladin versus Shaman. I'm not sure, but I think that would be a bit of a risky play to go into. Big map. Mm -hmm. Big they map. have the right map for it, maybe. <laughs> but I, I'm not sure. I'm not sold on it either. I feel like, yeah, I, actually, I'm not sold on this matchup either because I think if that game went on for a longer period of time, I kind of still would favor Golden Guardians. Uh, like, the rest of Druid seems to really struggle. That Iron Bark was on like a full, full percent HP Iron Bark. He went in for the bash on the peekaboo, and during that time, he just died and flopped trinketed, but trinketed into a full fear because he was on top of them. So, no matter what, Flop would have to trinket there and get like a Nick Swiftness off as well uh, to keep Chun alive in that situation, or Chun would just have to trinket and like port away or yep. uh, try to build some distance. So, no matter what, somebody was trinketing there. So, it just opens you up uh, for later on, you know? So, I'm not sold on that. And also on the scoreboard, Peekaboo had the most damage done out of anybody. Whiskey was right behind him. So, like, yes, Flop had a mana lead, but he's also expending more mana compared to the Shaman. Yep. So I, I'm not I'm not sold that that matchup goes in their favor in the long run, and I'm not sold that they kill in setups. Like I, I feel like Golden Guardian setups are deadlier. So I I actually kind of want to see a swap from Cloud Nine, maybe to a, a maybe it's time to bring in Cubsy and go for some kind of melee cleave, or maybe it's time to go for like yeah, like a Turbo or something um, with Wealthy Man on the enhance. I'm I'm not sure what they have uh, practiced up, but I think it's time for a melee cleave, or maybe they go for the MM Hunter. <gasps> You know what I want to see? Yeah. You know, I know Flop plays as well as Mistweaver. I know Mistweaver doesn't, you know, get to have the best reputation right now. Uh, we've only seen one series <laughs> and it didn't work out so well. But I actually think Mistweaver into RPS is really strong. Um, uh, you have that ranged grapple weapon. So if you go into crowd control, you can just grapple weapon peekaboo. As soon as you get out of crowd control, you have these really strong emergency cooldowns. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to be killing through Life Cocoon. It's unlikely you'll kill through Life Cocoon. I don't want to... It's not... It's not out of the, the range <laughs> of possibility, you know, but, uh, you know, things like Revival, Life Cocoon going to be really strong. Flops is playing at max range anyways. So if that's kind of the game that Golden Guardians wants to play, where they just kind of sit on one pillar, they're just trying to avoid, I feel like it actually would play uh, well into cloud Nine strategy. So literally just play Double Monk. Double Monk, Frost Mage, keep Golden Guardians at the pillar, play max range, run away, abuse the fact that you have so much mobility, you have double Ring of Peace to keep people in Wealthy Man's line of sight, as well as Ice Wall. And uh, I think it could work out a little bit better because we've seen um, in both series, I think we've seen Cloud9 play, the Restoration Druid kind of getting abused by these Shadow Priest Rogue comps. Uh, I feel like, it, at least in the past, it has been kind of a counter to, to Shadow Priest, uh, people playing with the Spears as well to just spam the spell, the, the damage over time effects with the Mist Weaver. But I feel like also they're, they're traditional weakness has always been that once you like they're really good at getting into dampening and having full mana when you get into dampening but once you get into dampening those life wounds become kind of like power shield and all of a sudden uh, they don't really have that same emergency healing and uh, it's kind of easy actually to out damage their healing so i'm not sure in 9.2 uh if that weakness is you know uh, improved at all but uh, that's the one thing i'd be scared of uh, for the golden guardians um, or uh, for cloud nine if they did go with that but uh, we're not going to see the Miss Weaver anyway. So it's going to be the same matchup here from Cloud9. And honestly, that game number one wasn't a convincing win. I don't know how you guys feel, but it felt like kind of random. You know, Peekaboo had his whole spell book ready. It was definitely random. <laughs> it was just, you know, like, okay, you know, it happens. And just shake it off and go for the next game. Uh, whereas Golden Guardians win, it was a little bit more convincing, but also a little bit random because there was, you know, you know, answers still on Cloud9. So... I, I can't say 100% who I think is favored in the matchup, but I would lean a little bit towards Golden Guardians. Hmm. I think it's the mana that's leaning me towards Absturge. Like, I feel like Absturge is not going to need to drink, or his flop, if he goes for a drink at the bad time, and then somebody just gets iced out uh, by a Siphon <laughs> or a Hemotoxin, like, it's, it's going to be rough for him. Uh, it's a good map here, so if the Golden Guardians want a turtle, the pillars are going to be smaller. Um, so I, I do like that pick here from Cloud9, and they'll still have Maldraxxus as well with the small pillars and big map. 
to rely on, but when we get to a game five, if Golden Guardians pick a big pillar map, uh, it could be really rough for them. This is a series that could go to a game five. I think there's lethal potential from both sides. We've already seen it. The Windwalker gets some good procs um, with the spinning crane kick, or if Pikachu gets a good vendetta off with spam purge and his whole team to back him up, they can just immediately erase somebody from the game. So the lethal is there. We move into dampening. I think Golden Guardians are going to be favored slightly, uh, and we'll have to see if they can get there. Um, but Windwalker is a threat nonetheless that they've got to be ready for. You guys remember, um, I think you called it out, it was the first ice wall of this series where chun -Li got caught into a kidney shot, and instead of using ice wall offensively, he actually used it defensively to kind of cut off chun -Li from Wiz K and Abster, so they really couldn't assist in damage. I wonder if Wealthy Man should just be using that ability purely as defense to protect chun -Li from these kidney shots. And then really where would the win condition be for Golden Guardians? It's going to be really difficult. For, I guess mana could be a potential, but I think there is some <laughs> options for them. Um, we'll see. This is definitely going to be a good map. Uh, Wealthy Man's happy. These small little pillars make it so Blizzard and Frozen Orb cleave quite hard. Whiskey and Abster is looking like they want to play on opposite pillars here. Um, and we shall see what they decide to do. Peekaboo and Stealth right now moving forward, potentially opening uh, here onto Chun-Li. We're going to get this game started really, really quickly. Chun-Li moves in, gets kidney shot, though. Is there crowd control on flop? Actually, a full blind. He's going to be sitting it. They decided to just burst. They're going through. Karma and Diffuse Magic traded out by Chun-Li, and he's just dying through it. Needs to be very careful. Flop holds onto his trinket into a silence, but Chun-Li trading out his trinket, trading out Karma, trading out Diffuse um, is definitely scary. Yeah, especially if Pikachu is playing that short Vendetta, and he's going to have a smoke bomb coming up. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but he will have that smoke bomb uh, advantage. So Chun Li at any point could just get absolutely bursted in one of those smoke bombs. Bob actually pushing in here for some drive control. Goes for the bash, goes for the cyclone. Whiskey taking uh... a lot of damage. Here. Spinning crane kick. He's gonna force out the dispersion. So Cloud Nine get a big cooldown back. Look at Peekaboo taking a lot of damage there as well, using that Aegis trinket to recover uh, as long uh, as well as his uh, Cloak of Shadow grab a weapon coming out on Peekaboo. Lizard's coming out from Wealthy Man, and uh, Wealthy Man just trying to find an angle here to go for that big, big uh, damage. And Wealthy Man uh, doesn't have his Death Horn. He doesn't have his Icy Bane, so not really packing too much of a punch right now. And it looks like Chun-Li is just going to roll back to this pillar, and Wealthy Man is going to be the target here, soaking up some of the damage from the Golden Guardians. The Golden Guardians looking to push forward here. Can they find Chun Li? It would be their ideal target here as he has no trinket. They have that smoke bomb. 15 seconds left on the fuse, 15 seconds left on Arma. Next sweep coming out onto Peekaboo. Ice, Ice wall. wall coming up. Big damage. This is a nice setup there. They block off Ab Surge on one side, Whiskey Sheep on the other side, Peekaboo. And I use that vanish looking for the sap here onto flop. It's actually gonna kidney shot flop here and go after the healer. And this is something we've seen a lot from the Golden Guardian in the past with Peekaboo just kind of soloing the healer. And Whiskey and Abster just kind of playing a 2v2 on the other side of the map. And that actually usually gets them a lot of pressure. We'll see if it does this time around. All right, let's see if they can. Peekaboo just stuck in crowd control right now. And that's what Wealthy Man and Cubsy, or sorry, Wealthy Man and Flop have to readjust. I've been doing is just getting so much control under the melee DPS. Now Polymorph out of the route, just removing Peekaboo from play while they try and get on top of Wizke and Absurge and stack them up for double leg sweeps and get a little bit of cleave there. So let's see if they can keep that going. Chun-Li gets kidney shot. Here comes a big resonator play on Chun-Li. He pre ages to that kidney shot and it, it was able to allow him to soak that resonator hit and sit that sunlock comfortably. But a flop doesn't feel safe. He actually iron barked on top of Karma. He does not want to run the same risk as he just did in that last game, but that means no iron bark for Wealthy Man. Swapping over to him, he's going to use Fleshcraft, build up a bit of a shield, uh, and try and tank the rest of these hits. But Peekaboo is freely attacking him. Finally, now Polymark dispelled instantly. Step Kidney onto Chun Li on his leg sweep. So Peekaboo using his kidney shots to kind of like intercept Chun Li in the middle of his pushes and peel for Wiz case. So defense and offense getting high value out of those kidney shots, but they're still stacked up. Spinning crane kick, getting big value, trying to run laps on this small pillar. Very risky. Ice wall blocking them off on one side, but I don't know if that's perfectly preventing them from moving if they want to on this side. And then they can use Ring of Peace as well to bounce them off of the pillar. So it's going to be a very deadly map. Cyphiend is down on the kidney shot on Chun Li. They got Shadow Fiend out as well. Big damage. Um, but Peekaboo is not able to get there to use a Hemotoxin. It looks like he's just throw dagger, trying to get his poisons up. Whiskey getting just fists of fury right now by Chun Li. So much damage. Ring of Peace bouncing him back to Wealthy Man on the Death Horn, passing him over for the alley oop. And Wealthy Man's trying to go for the slam dunk. Is he going to be able to connect the damage? Absturge down to half, getting cleaved as well. They're going to polymorph him instead. 
go after peekaboo he's just running around the corner trying to find an opportunity trying to find a window to get some pressure but you can tell that this map is heavily favored to cloud nine I mean, that's certainly why they picked it. Oh, double stun is a stun on Peekaboo and a kidney shot at Chun-Li at the exact same time. That's kind of peculiar. You don't often see that. They're both melee stunning each other. Um, as both setups are going to be completely stopped. Wealthy man right now trying to find some damage with his Frost Bolts, with his Deathborn. Peekaboo just going to be line of sighting. Healing Tide Totem drops down by Absurge. That's going to be immediately killed off by Wealthy Man. Peekaboo goes for a full stun and a smoke bomb. Preemptive Iron Bark, but can they just kill him through it? Oh no, the preemptive Iron Bar, can they still get the Trinket and the Karma? That's a bit of a disaster for Cloud9. It really just shows you the power of the Vendetta. I want to see if Peekaboo actually is running the short Vendetta. I, I think it's most likely that he is. But the power of that uh, Legendary is that now his Vendetta will be desynced with the Trinket of Chun-Li, meaning Chun-Li could be in a lot of trouble this next setup with the Vendetta. Yeah, and uh, so far, Wealthy Man, he's got his Icy Veins coming up here, so... Uh, he really prefers to not stack that with that one. Oh, Ice Wall coming up here for Absturge. Going to be forced to run into uh, Peekaboo here on the other side of that wall. Looks like they are going to be able to recover here. Fleshcraft coming up from Absturge. He's kind of spell. Looking potentially for some crowd control. Silence onto Flop. Big damage coming up. Nice uh, pre-link here by Absturge on the setup from Chun Lee. This was the Serenity setup. Big damage coming out there. And the Icy Veins as well. So that was definitely a fair trade there coming out from Absturge. Saving out Peekaboo's Trinket. Saving out. Ooh, they're swapping over to Absurge though. He's going to use that uh, Astral Shift as well. Chun Li now stuck in that initial no trigger available. Cap Totem connects. Big damage here, and that will be the Diffuse Magic as well from Chun Li. So Chun now for another 20 seconds has no cooldowns. Might need to touch a free touch of Prima that next go. I'm going after Absurge here once again. Flashcraft coming out from Flop, and now he's going to feel safe to push in and go for the stuns. Shadow Melt into a stun onto Absurge. Looks like it's not going to be getting too many cooldowns though. Full sheep onto Absturge and they get some damage going. This could be a scary kidney shot. That's it. Full silence onto Flop. He's going to trick it out of it. Get that big, big Iron Bark and barely save a Chun there. But guess what? Peekaboo is going to have that full blind later and he could make some serious damage with that. And look at Flop's mana. It's not looking great right now. Golden Guardians in the driver's seat. Yeah, Golden Guardian's taking control, and if Cloud9 can't win on their map pick, that is going to spell trouble for the rest of the series here for them. Can the Golden Guardians take back the swing match, set themselves up for success? It would only be one game away from qualifying the championship Sunday. It is still insane that Cloud9 and Golden Guardians meet each other in the lower bracket, eliminating one in, one or the other before we even get to Sunday. That's absolutely crazy, the level of competition. Chun-Li getting stunlocked, trying to roll back to his healer. Flop needs to try and drink, but his team is getting devastated. They're getting ravaged by the Golden Guardians, and Peekaboo knows that they're weak. He senses weakness, shadow stepping in, trying to go for the kill, gets paralyzed away way by Chun Li. Chun Li is trying to support with Vivifies, trying to help Flop heal because Flop has no mana left. He's going to proc his tree of life there for a moment, boost his healing, allowing him to recover his team back to full health. But now he needs to drink. He's running across the field. He's in the far back line getting mana. Chun Li is going to immediately evacuate. They need to avoid Peekaboo. They need mana right now. They're trying to peel away from Peekaboo. Peekaboo can't get there in time. And Flop is getting a huge drink right now. Great defensive posture by Cloud9. That was getting scary for them, but now they are going to regenerate huge mana as the Dampening has been running for about two and a half minutes, and they could still take it. Yep, this is a Serenity. Chun Li being punished. He has to trinket trade up the Karma as well as the Diffuse Magic. Peekaboo is just a nightmare with that Vendetta doing so much damage. Chun Li still scared, but feeling a little bit more confident with his Aegis with Iron Bark. Looking to get aggressive with the last little bit of his Weapons of Order. That Windwalker Monk ability with Kyrian. And this is Icy Veins as well for Wealthy Man. So this is a huge hit of damage from Cloud9. Really just putting Golden Guardians on the back foot. But I am afraid for Chun-Li. He has zero defensive cooldowns left. It's going to be half up to... It's going to be up to Flop in order to save him. I don't know if Peekaboo is going to be able to reset his Vendetta. If you look at Peekaboo, he's got nothing to work with either. We're at 20% dampening. Both of these teams are going to start really struggling to survive with how much damage output they have. A beautiful grapple weapon there by Chun-Li on the kidney shot. Peekaboo goes for the Shadow Step kidney shot, manages to find uh, it, but gets the grapple uh. weapon. Somehow, all, almost dying through it anyways. Beautiful play, but really just showing you how much damage WizK and Absurd can really assist in those moments. Yeah, and that, that was just I think That was just WizK uh, going completely berserk there onto Chun. Free grapple weapon and almost going down through it. Pre-Aegis there coming out from WizK. He it still has to trade out the dispersion. There's still respecting the damage coming out from Cloud9. So Whiskey 
could be a potential target here. No trinket as well onto him. He does have that void shift in his back pocket. Uh, but if they go for him in a leg sweep or in a in bash stun, they could finish take him now. But right now it's gonna be Chan on the back foot. Vendetta available for Peekaboo. He's not gonna hold, he's not gonna push the trigger on it right now. And there is gonna be a window here where Chan has no trinket. Peekaboo has that vendetta. If they wish to go for it, if they can line up the CC on the flop, that could be potential win condition there. Ice wall now oh. coming up. And there's that bash onto Whiskey that we talked about. The link through the wall. And the link through the wall coming out from Absters right there, respecting that Serenity one shot potential. Very, very nicely played there by Absters, reading that situation beautifully. Oh. And here comes the vendetta. Big damage from Peekaboo. What are you going to do, Chan Lee? Trace out the karma. He still has that diffuse magic. Doing tons of damage onto Whiske. Whiske still without the dispersion for 30 more seconds. Forced to use that trinket. But now he's not going to be able to trinket and use that void shift. Fear coming out onto Welcome and especially with that death horn. Disarm onto Peekaboo. Peekaboo looking for Chan here. Pre egg is coming out from Chan. Nice totem from Absters. is going to be enough. And that is going to be the trinket from Absters. Overlap there with the void shift from uh, Whiskey. Whiskey gets cycloned up, and all of a sudden, Cloud9 in a big lead. Yeah, they're in a great position if they can keep going a little bit longer. Trinket Diffuse available. Palmer's on to Peekaboo. Flops drinking in midfield. Oh no, Whiskey is not able to find him. He's trying to find him in stealth with Mass to Spell and AoE. Manages to stop him from drinking, but he already got a significant lead. Another head on cooldowns, a head on mana. If Cloud9 was going to take it, it's got to be now. Flop jumps in, stuns Peekaboo. No Trinket. He pre faints. Is that Whoa. enough? Doesn't look like it. He barely gets the cloak vanish off in time. Slipping into the shadows, stalling the game for his team for a moment, trying to find an opportunity to turn it around, but he's struggling to recover at 35% dampening. Wealthy Man blinking away from this pursuit. Frost Nova onto Peekaboo, grapple weapon onto Peekaboo, trying to slow him down. He pre faints again. Healing Tide Totem is down. Ice Wall gets dropped, but actually lines Chun Li from going in, so they're going to cancel that Ice Wall right away. Wealthy Man's rotting down. This is where I want to see Wizkid just triple dot, just get lots of pressure out, open up some opportunities for Peekaboo. Peekaboo's just sitting in stealth. He's trying to stall. They're just trying to wait. They're praying that they can get to another big cooldown to survive. He has no trinket, no cloak, so if Peekaboo can stay in stealth, but Whiskey's just dying while he's waiting. They stun up Chun Li. They're forced to open, but Whiskey gets counterspelled. Peekaboo's in a polymorph. We're so deep into dampening. Wealthy Man blinking in. Chun Li rolling forward, trying to go for the kill. Dispersion still available for Whiskey. Just Needs to make sure he doesn't get interrupted. Side being down, distracting them, trying to stall the pursuit. Flop actually oomed himself again, and this is what I'm saying deep into dampening. The shaman doesn't need to drink. Flop setting up a bash, looking for a cyclone onto the healer. Peekaboo pre evasions. He gets it right after the end cap. He evasions the leg sweep when he had no trinket. He was dead there. Whiskey trades dispersion on the swap to him. Insane evasion by Peekaboo. Now he's setting up stuns on the Chun. Chun trades the trinket to Fuse. He's trying to stay aggressive. They have pressure right now. They need to ride this pressure. They need to kill the golden guardians they've got to go for it can they do it in time peekaboo down to half line of sudden he blinds chun lee but flop is drinking flop's gonna get full mana here wealthy man though if he's not careful he might get killed by whiz huge damage on him right now they're setting up on chun lee with the kidney shot spread pressure on the two targets these teams playing out of their minds 44 percent dampening 44 percent healing reduction in this match zero mana remains for absurd can his team pull off the victory at this point they interrupt wealthy man he blocks is there a master spell? Master spell gets shut down by Wiz or by Chun Li there. Good shutdown. After shots, healing tide. They slammed that healing tide so fast that tide is up and gone almost immediately. And I still can't believe this game is going on. Kidney shot, no iron bark, no karma, no diffuse, but. Peekaboo's actually going after Wealthy Man instead. Gets close. Now. Oh my god, that's soul shape by Peekaboo. He avoids the bash for just an extra second to get to the pillar while Absurd is drinking. Absurd is getting a couple of ticks of mana. This is an insane game. This is absolutely insane. Absurd with his Trinket Spirit Link. They're actually going after Wealthy Man. His uh, lack of mobility playing that Blink Stun. They can literally just attack him. This is exactly what we saw in the first series. Peekaboo getting cycloned up. Good control there by Flop. Just trying to slow down the damage at 50% dampening. Peekaboo is just going to kidney shot. Wealthy Man blinks out of it. But now I'm really afraid for Wealthy Man. He does have one more Ice Block. We're at 50% dampening. Deathborn is available. Icy Veins almost available. Serenity available. There is a huge hit of damage here for Cloud9. He pre-invasion the leg sweep again! Vendetta. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, if Peekaboo can connect a Vendetta on somebody, I don't know why he's not going after Chun-Li. He doesn't have a trinket, but he's just going for it. On Wealthy Man, it gets interrupted on Frost! Gets the ice block off, 53% dampening. I don't know if Flop's going to be able to top him off. Momentum definitely in favor of Golden Guardians, but once again, a huge hit of damage available for Cloud9. Where are they going to send it?
So you're trying to go after Wizkay at the same time. Wealthy Man is just not feeling healthy whatsoever. Finally, Flop connects some heals, but that is all of his mana. There is no mana left. Wizkay going for a solo mission on Wealthy Man. Blink on the kidney shot once again. Chun Li going after Wizkay gets interrupted, but just gets Link. up. Big trouble. Spirit Link drops out for Absurge. What a crazy game. Yeah, this is Whiskey's opportunity. He has basically no cooldowns left. He needs to go in and they need to finish this game right now. Flop cannot get another drink. Wealthy Man, though, buying time. Flop buying time as well with that Cyclone. Peekaboo stuck in that one. Whiskey in a lot of trouble here. Silence on the Flop. They have that Earthen Wall totem, but they don't have anything left to work with. No mana, no cooldowns, nothing whatsoever. Shadowman coming out. Whiskey, how are you going to survive? They go after Chun Lee. No trinket onto Chun. This is the last ditch effort here. Lava Burst are being lobbed in. Chun, so low. No, but he does access the fish karma with the diffuse magic with the Aegis trinket dampening so high up flop sitting down for a drink right now and whiz k he might have ran out of steam here dispersion so far away 30 seconds left on that cooldown that void shift though coming up in five seconds it's gonna be whiz k's final line of john's dead didn't even buy him enough time but he doesn't even need it while flop is drinking they find the opportunity to take chun down and Dude. my goodness what a game 62 percent dampening here and the golden guardian do it unbelievable dude peekaboo is dead twice this game like four minutes earlier he pre-evasion leg sleep when he had no trinket or cloak or anything twice in a row if he didn't do that peekaboo is dead like chun has serenity has every button he would have killed him twice already like that was peekaboo kept his team going all the distance there like it was actually over for them and they managed to pull it off on the map pick of cloud nine they take the swing match I hope we caught the pre-evasions from Peekaboo. It's like it's like a very small play that you might not see because like evasion's not the biggest animation in the world. And leg sweep, you might not notice if it doesn't land. But I think this is before the game ended, and Peekaboo carried hard with the pre-evasions. Like as a rogue against a Windwalker, when you have no trinket, like you're just dead. Every Serenity stun, you're dead. Here, I was thinking this double trinket might actually cost uh, Whiskey and Absurge the game later on, but they were able to close it out before it ended up being of too much consequence and. Man, they just kept this going, even with nothing left. Flop tries to go for a drink at the last second here, while Chun Li has defensives up uh, and tries to regenerate mana. But like, there's like a point of no return, man. Like you're 60% dampening. You're like perma improved, sharpened, bladed for the rest of the game. Like you're just not going to be able to bounce back after a certain period of time. Uh, and they go for the kill here. They silence Wealthy Man because they know they don't need to really CC the Druid. They're just going to kill him through healing. So they silence Polys. They stop the Mage from peeling, and they just go for the kill deep into dampening. It's a really good readjustment there by the Golden Guardians, winning on the map pick of Cloud9. Scoreboard's like even pretty much across the across the table here for both sides. And now Cloud9, this is this is the pressure cooker. You're you're on match point. You gotta you gotta win on the Golden Guardians map pick. You better believe we're not going to no Ashamanes. We're not going to no Imperial or no Imperial Domain or no Maldraxxus Arena. Like we're gonna go to a map in game five that's gonna be really rough for the rest of the series. I'm almost thinking that they might need to make a change. Uh, at some point in the series if they want to win it a comp yeah. change that is yeah it's looking like that could definitely be an option are we going to see cubsy i think that is the big question i i, I don't know if the hunter i don't think the hunter frost mage is going to work uh maybe it could uh, i think it would actually be better I'm, I'm i'm not joking when i say this i actually think the hunter frost mage is actually better into the shaman um <laughs> than the Paladin, because the Paladin has that additional crowd control with the Hammer of Justice, the Blinding Light, get those extended CC chains. So I feel like if Cloud9 thought that Hunter would be good into, like if they thought that their composition would be good into Shadow Priest Rogue uh, Paladin, it should be even better into Shadow Priest Rogue Shaman, in my opinion. But um, I don't know if they're going to make that change, if they're going to bring in Cubsy. Maybe they could try some sort of melee cleave. Um, like you said, Sid, that's something that Golden Guardians has struggled with in the past. But uh, I think they got to come up with something here. Hmm. Go for the neutral map. So I, I feel like if they were going to play Hunter Mage, they would have picked uh, Muldraxxus because it hasn't been picked yet, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, I think Maldraxxus would have kind of been a little bit of a giveaway there, but... Tolveron, I mean, they could, Yeah, yeah or Tolveron. Um, I think Tiger's Peak, I mean, they could still do it, but I think it would be significantly worse just because Flop has less distance to work with there in the back line. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Probably another Windwalker Mage game, honestly, uh, based off of the map pick, but of course we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Golden Guardians, I mean, the thing is, you know, it's two to one, 
And the Golden Guardians, that was a nail biter. Like Sid mm -hmm. mentioned, you know, it just comes down to small individual outplays uh, from some of the members on, on the Golden Guardians for that game to end the way it did. And I mean, in Cloud9's credit, it looked like they were in a pretty solid spot there. Uh, at times, it looked like, okay, this is just over. There's no way Whiskey is going to survive here. He has no dispersion forever. He has no void shift. They, they got nothing. Um, but still, somehow, they pull it off, you know, and Peekaboo as well. Uh, there's so many times where he just gets that vanish off on just like one or two percent HP and manages to like there was one point in the game where he literally just vanished like he was dead he manages to get his vanish off and he just sits in stealth for like yep. you know what felt like an eternity so uh, I, I I wouldn't be surprised to honestly see the same matchup as well because that was a really really close game and I mean Cloud9 did win with it in game number one bit of a random one shot but still uh, it's not like it's impossible for them uh, it just comes down to that weakness that we kind of talked about a little bit in the pregame where the Druid is just more thirsty than the Shaman. Like, if you have Peekaboo and Whiskey doing similar levels of damage as Cloud9, and they have a better Mortar Strike effect, and they have, you know, better hybrid healing with the Shadow Priest, and they have a Shaman that, you know, just can live with less mana, it's just inevitable. Like, the Druid is going to have to drink, and the Shaman won't have to drink as much, so... All of that just spells recipe for disaster and dampening, in my opinion. So I, I think uh, if Cloud9 locks it in, it, it's gonna be uh, you know, it's gonna be winnable, but it's gonna be tough. Hmm. They're taking their time. What, are, what about Fury Warrior? Like Fury turret. Warrior Fire Mage, Druid? Could that be good? Maybe just set I, a Fury I don't Warrior. Think that's good. I swear the Warrior. Rookie wants to see a Fire Mage over a Frost Mage. I don't want to see it. I'm just thinking of options. I want to see Frost Mage every game. I feel like Fury Warrior is so flimsy. Like, if you play Fury Warrior Druid into a Shadow Priest team, it's so flimsy. But the Warrior will just be dead the whole game. Yeah, you uh, could be right. If you do that, I, I don't think... What about the Mistweaver? I, yeah, I think that's the thing that needs to change. I feel like flop changing healers um, mm -hmm. would, would be a better addition here uh, for Cloud9, if anything. Um, but they're taking it every second, and I don't know if they've practice any cleaves because like that's that's what is the kryptonite for golden guardians i feel like it's cleaves you run a rep paladin with a melee or enhancement shaman with a melee like that's what the golden guardians have crumbled to um in past tournaments that's what sent them to the lower bracket so i would rather see a cleave from them something windwalker yeah. enhance warrior enhance whatever, whatever it happens to be um, but i would actually like to see a cleave that's what they ran into golden guardians exactly. last season with their old roster um so do they have it as this new roster They've run the clock. What's it going to be? Chun Li Mug, Chun Li Hunter. Do you think uh, coming in? Do you think Survival Hunter Warrior could be good? Okay, there's Fire Mage. Oh, I don't know if it's better. I really don't. More burst. Yeah. I don't even agree that you have more burst. <laughs> I mean, maybe you do, but you're fighting against like. What you get where's the protection? Yeah. There's no protection for your combustion, like. It's true. I, I don't know. Purge. I don't. I don't know if it's going to be better, but we'll see. Uh, Wealthy man likely going to be playing that new trinket once again, and I don't even know how much I like it to be honest with you. Like Wealthy man is playing the blink stun. I wonder if he's kind of like baited himself into using that trinket because I feel like it's sometimes the good old fashioned medallion having shimmer <laughs> lets you push in and be a bit more aggressive on your your veins and your deathborn because people are going to pillar you and if you don't have certain things like he's not using frostbite either if you don't have frostbite to root people in place you don't have shimmer to actually chase i feel like it's really easy for golden guardians to actually kind of escape that deathborn go um but we'll see maybe i mean we could just change directions he's going to be playing fire in this one i don't know if fire is going to be better this could just be like a desperation thing from cloud nine i'm not sure uh, but i feel like golden guardians probably not too sad about this one yeah um yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, I think um, you, you bring up a, a pretty good point with the combustion uh, being very purgeable. But at the same time, at least they have a Resto Druid on their roster. So uh, it's going to be a bit of RNG there as well with the Resto Druid uh, healing over time effects. But still, uh, Wealthy Man, all it takes is just one good sheep, one good combust. And that could be the game. However, uh, Shadow Priest also uh, a class with a lot of uh, you know answers to that uh, combustion, of course. You're gonna have things like uh, you know greater fade and obviously dispersion and stuff like that. So uh, I I would expect them to maybe go after Peekaboo, get those stunts on the Peekaboo, get that big combustion, and uh, try to get some uh, CC on the Absturge, try to get cross CC on the Whiskey. And I think actually 
I think maybe they will just be playing that setup base game. I don't think they're like with the Frost Mage, we see them just staying back, going for a lot of, you know, scoreboard damage essentially. But I don't think that was working for them. They actually kind of got out dampened at their own game. And I think now they kind of have to play Golden Guardians game with this comp where, you know, we're probably going to see Flop going for a, bit of, a little bit more Cyclones, see him uh, try to coordinate that Mage Druid synergy that we've seen in the past and uh, try to find some kills that way. Uh, but it might be tough. It's certainly going to be tough. I don't think it's a might in there. <laughs> I feel like Golden Guardians, like, <laughs> this is like, this is what they're known for is dismantling mage teams. So playing a mage in the Golden Guardians is like the ultimate challenge that uh, you're going to have to overcome here. Uh, Wealthy Man's going to make a little bit of an adjustment going from Frost to Fire. Perhaps they're going to play more aggressive, play more setup oriented like you, like you talked about. They do need to make a change, though, I think. Um, Golden Guardians, they just came off the first series of going to 60% dampening. Like, they're ready. Uh, if teams want to try and run them through the ringer in terms of these late games. Uh, but right now, they're in the lead. They just need one more win. It's not their map pick, but if they lose here, they're going to have their map pick. So I am very worried right now for Cloud9, this new roster. Are they going to just be knocked out of the tournament before even making it to Championship Sunday? chun -Li already stunned up. Wealthy Man blinking in, saving the day with a double Dragon's Breath, soaking that Resonator damage as well. Hero play by Wealthy Man in the opener here. Polymer for Peekaboo, but Flop jumps in. Bash onto the healer, looking for a Cyclone. Whiskey greater fades around the corner, trying to avoid the Leg Sweep. He wasn't able to. Leg Sweep connects. Big damage coming out from chun -Li here and he is running a Kyrian Monk that weapons of order active he's got big damage which case soaks it with the Aegis and his trinket uh, in this position wants to save this first for later having already used fade I think it's a good way to line up his cooldowns as well now Zwen is pop big damage onto peekaboo he's gonna soul shape out of Fist of Fury but Chun-Li just rolls right on top of all of them and Cloud9 are getting aggressive triple ring of fire cleaving the team triple spinning crane kick just trying to max the damage board here between Wealthy Man and Chun-Li we see Wealthy Man blink in once again intercepting that kidney shot with a defensive dragon's breath trying to put them on the back foot it seems like Cloud9's strategy is to just do as much damage as possible cleave down whatever target you can and potentially just blast them out early on. Yeah, that seems to be the strategy. I mean, let's see if they can actually do it. Full blind now on flop. What are they going to try to get done? Actually going after Wealthy Man. And he once again is playing that new trinket and the blink stun. So it's going to be really difficult for him to go down, at least in the early games. Chun-Li now getting targeted. Full kidney shot on him, but a defensive ring of fire. Wealthy Man playing that ring. I really like the ring of fire, to be honest with you. Puts out a lot of damage. And if someone's playing around a pillar, you can drop that, punish all three members, and it kind of goes into the cleave strategy. Uh, we're seeing a Cloud9 to just maybe bring the game late. Overwhelm with the Windwalker damage. WizK right now under fire, getting a little bit low. Whirling Dragon Punch, going to be shut down by a nice fear there by WizK, but Spursion is forced either way. So they do get a small victory there with their combustion. But the man, does he find damage on anybody else? Doesn't look like he's going to be able to. Gets dispelled. That's going to be up to Chun-Li to kind of carry the damage uh, for the next few moments. But Vendetta is available for Peekaboo, so there's a huge hit of damage available somewhere. They're going to go after Wealthy Man. Kitty Shot gets blinked, but Peekaboo just continuing to pursue. Nice grapple weapon there by Chun-Li. Shuts that attempt down, and Wealthy Man should be okay. Yep, and now it's going to be the Earth Wall Totem from Absturge fading. Big ink cap here onto Absturge. What are they going to do with it? Doesn't look like they can get any follow-up, and that's going to be Flop going for the Cyclone here onto Peekaboo. Ring of Fire coming through. WizK is going to be the target of choice. That Earth and Wall Totem uh, should be fading uh, shortly here. And that should be an opportunity for Cloud9 to get aggressive. 45 seconds left on that dispersion. And no combustion for another 10 seconds. Here's a Kidney Shot onto Chun-Li. No Vendetta committed just yet. Nicely done there with the damage onto Chun-Li. But it doesn't look like he's going to have to actually use anything. Now Wealthman going to be kicked here. And those kicks are so devastating with that new trinket. Lasting upwards of 6 seconds right there. And Chun-Li... Uh, in a panda ratio, see what they can get done here. Combustion is ready and gets popped. WizK got to immediately respect it. Trinket, and they're going to go with the leftovers on the peekaboo, but there it is, with the purge on that combustion coming out from Absurge and WizK. And that uh, damage from Wealthy Man is going to be shut down, and now he's going to be forced to reset that stun lock. And WizK will have that greater fade, and that will give him time to also get that dispersion back. And Wealthy Man in the back line, meanwhile, taking a lot of damage. Full sap onto Flop out of that blind peekaboo. Looking for the reopener here. Whiskey though, getting absolutely crushed here by Chun Li. And that is going to be the Aegis trinket committed there by Chun Li. But still, Peekaboo all over Wealthy Man here. Can he find the kill? Can oh, he find the cauterize? So close. And that's going to be the cauterize triggered for Wealthy Man. It might be even the ice block that oh. silence. Feeling like it's lasting forever. But a massive heal coming out there from Flop. And that is going to be at least a big cooldown there with that cauterize in trade for that Vendetta. 
All right, those vendettas are the big windows for Golden Guardians to pull off a victory here. Uh, they were kind of greedy there. They get away with it. No ice block. Nature Swiftness saves Wealthy Man. Now they're setting up aggressively on the WizK, trying to go after him as he's used his medallion. Leg Sweep is available. Dragon's Breath on Peekaboo. Flops rolling up to get crowd control and Absturge. Nice crowd control, but Peekaboo gets dropped for a moment on that Polymorph. Manages to get to his teammate here uh, and starts to be able to stabilize with that greater fade. Side Fiend down. Void Eruption. Big damage onto Chun-Li potentially from WizK, but Flop looks more than ready. Scenarian Ward reset and refreshed onto Chun-Li. He's gonna be quite durable during this time. And Peekaboo swaps off the Scenarian Ward. This is the best way to run a Resto Druid out of mana. Really smart tactic to swap off the Scenarian Ward. Going after Wealthy Man here, and you can see Flop spending so much mana to heal him up instead. Trying to stay ahead of the dots, spamming Dispel as well. But now they swap back to Chun-Li after the Scenarian Ward. They drop a Smoke Bomb. How are they gonna respond? It's match point. They can't afford to throw here. And it looks like every member himself and Touch of Karma is gonna be the trade here as Chun-Li escapes from the Smoke Bomb and survives it, but Vendetta is available. If they go in that timer before the Medallion is available, it could be a game-winning play from Peekaboo. Blind is coming up in 14 seconds as well. They've got Silence, they could lead with a Silence, Bait Trinket, go for a Blind or something like that here onto Chun-Li, are they ready for it? Scenarian Ward, looks like it's already rolling. They're trying to wait for that Scenarian Ward to fade before committing the Vendetta. Blind is up, they intercept Peekaboo with a Frost Nova, it's spelled out. Are they gonna go for the Blind now? Dragon's Breath, they're just stalling Peekaboo, paralyzed onto the healer, they're trying to go for Wizk. Leg sweep, big damage coming out onto Wizk. That's gonna be a Trinket fade right away into a Mass Dispel attempt, interrupted on the Mass Dispel into a Cyclone. Peekaboo still locked down in Poly, three on one. Wizk trading Trinket fade and Disperse. Peekaboo having to use Cloak and the Combustion Swap to him. Big defensive blown out here. This is looking like a solid game from Cloud9. They've got big advantages on multiple targets. Yeah, good preemptive positioning by Chun-Li, kind of realizing the go is over and that he is the main target. He actually just runs away, gets cheap shot on his Fist of Fury. No Vendetta going to be used. I think Peekaboo really wants to use that Vendetta on a wealthy man. They can kind of bait the Iron Bark on Chun-Li. I think that is the game plan of Golden Guardians. Zwen, Ring of Fire. Whiskey going to be taking a huge hit of damage, going for a Master Spell. Keep in mind, there's no Dispersion. He's getting low. There's well, they overlapped. to throw away the game. They overlap the Void Shift as well as the Spirit Link Totem. That is a huge waste from Golden Guardians. A bit of a panic moment. And Cloud9, with that, is going to have some signs of life here. Yeah, big advantage there for Cloud9 now. And with that overlap, they could potentially even take down App Surge now that the Void Shift is out of the picture. But uh, Wizke probably going to be the target of choice here. Still a long time left there on that dispersion, about 20 seconds. That Combustion is ready to go. Who are they going to go after? It looks like Wizke here is going to be the target, but the, uh, the totem there from App Surge should keep Wizke nice and healthy for now. They're doing a good job here starting it out, but there's a Combustion getting ripped out, and they are going to swap to App Surge. Big damage coming out here onto him, but... Nice read there with the Astral Ship. Nice defensive blind there from Peekaboo. That blind might have just been what saved Absturge. A beautiful uh, read on that situation because that was definitely a devastating one. And Peekaboo will keep his team in the fight for that one. Still holding on to that Vendetta. He's been holding on to it for a really, really long time. That Carter is almost coming back off full time here for Wealthy Man. Just a few minutes or so left on that one for Wealthy Man. And he's going to be nice and healthy uh, on that mage. Peekaboo now. Finally, trying to connect back to his target, but Wealthy Man once again soul shapes away. Flop in the back line, drinking, getting tons of mana here. He might just be coming back with a full mana bar, honestly. He's been drinking for such a long time. Whiskey with his dispersion back, Absurge. Uh, his trinket is going to be rotating back up as well. So it looks like the Golden Guardians, with that defensive line, have been able to kind of weather that storm from earlier. And now it is their time to get aggressive here. Yeah, see if they can. Uh... Get in there before the punish comes because there's no void shift, no link from that overlap earlier on. But at the same time, Vendetta is available, Siphine, Power Infusion. Like, Peekaboo and Whiskey have a lot of damage in their back pocket. If Cloud9 aren't ready for it, we've seen them close out games rapidly throughout the series. So, see if they can pull it off again. Leg Sweep, big damage coming out from Chun Li onto Whiskey. Trading Disperse, more than fair trade here as he runs to Absturge's side to try and break future crowd control with AoE. Now chasing down Flop, big damage coming out. Here's the Vendetta from Peekaboo, pushing for the win onto Wealthy Man. Can they take him out? Nature Swiftness doesn't do too much. They activate Scenarian Ward, is that gonna be enough? Peekaboo evasions to try and stay aggressive here on Wealthy Man. He does not want to retreat during the Vendetta, but he doesn't connect, and they're gonna stabilize. Now here comes Combustion onto WizK. Massive damage, that overlap earlier. Is it gonna cost the game? Peekaboo intercepts with the Kidney Shot onto Chun-Li, slowing down the pursuit, but Ring of Peace knocks them back in the line of sight. Triple Fists of Fury, triple Ring of Fire, trying to cleave down the Golden Guardians, but Absturge with a well-timed Descendants is going to be able to AoE heal through all of that cleave. 
and start to recover. Flop is burning his mana so rapidly. Gonna go for a Fleshcraft preemptively. This way later on he can maybe get aggressive and not get punished. Stun onto Chun-Li once again. Trying to bait some cooldowns with this one on the Siphene. It's not a Vendetta go. Seems like the Vendetta is the big pivot point, but if they can bait anything here with the Siphene, it's gonna be important. They're trying hard to push for it. They're not getting the Karma. They're not getting the Diffuse. That's what they wanted to get with that Siphene push. Now Whiskey on the back foot, double leg sweep, Whirling Dragon Punch, lots of damage available here potentially from Chun-Li, but decides to just roll out. Doesn't want to pop images on that push. Peekaboo now out of the stun lock, trying to reposition with his team. Flop drinks to full mana. They're playing the safe game, playing the long game. Can the Golden Guardian steal it away from them? I mean, that really is the question. Let's see if they can do it. Ring of Fire down once again. Cloud9 with the big Fists of Fury. I mean, that damage is quite significant. The problem is, it's a lot of AoE. They're not able to get up the setups. And so far, Golden Guardians hasn't been able to survive. Kidney Shot on Chun-Li gets the Iron Bark. That wasn't the Vendetta. So that's exactly what Golden Guardians wants. Get that Iron Bark out of the way. And now they can look to make a push. I think they could actually go after Wealthy Man. Maybe get his Ice Block and Dampening. Could definitely be a target. Maybe they decide to go after Chun-Li. Peekaboo in a lot of trouble. Cloak of Shadows in touch of Death's Rage. Needs to vanish out as well. Doesn't want to throw away the series. In terms of cooldowns, Absurd still has his Trinket. He has Spirit Link. Wiz K has his Dispersion. 50 seconds on Void Shift. Golden Guardians has a lot of answers here. Big all-in here on Chun-Li. Gets the Preemptive Karma. Is that going to be enough? The Aegis as well. And it seems like that's just fine. I mean, that's a great trade for Cloud9. Didn't have to use Chun-Li's Trinket. He gets the Karma. Trades up the Diffuse. It's a lot of his defense, but for the Vendetta, I think it's more than worth it. I think he might have actually used every member himself right there. That's kind of like a little short, but we're going to see uh, if he can break out out of the next one. Right now, Chun Li still going to be the target. Peek away in a leg sweep, gets gripped with a beautiful vortex from Flop coming in right there. And now they're going to turn the pressure back onto Chun right there. Chun going to be taking a decent amount of damage. He has that fortifying brew in his back pocket. He's going to summon Zwen going after Whiskey. Absolutely just desperate here for some mana. And he has a little bit to work with, but it's not too much. Whiskey taking huge amounts of damage. Going for the Fleshcraft, defensive blind there on the Fulnots of Chun Li right there. Big, big defensive blind so far in this match from Peekaboo. And uh, maybe uh, looking for the sap as well, not able to find it. Uh, you're gonna hex Chun Li there instead. Grapple weapon on the Peekaboo. They're going after Wealthy Man. And that are only a couple of seconds away here for Peekaboo. Spinning crane kicks for Wiz K. That's gonna be the procs coming out. And Wiz K, unfortunately for him, is gonna have to use that dispersion. Running low on cooldowns. They're swapping over the Peekaboo. Peekaboo with the evasion here as well. He just has to run on his own kidney shot. Just throwing daggers at Chun Li. Afraid to even just auto attack him at this point. Absturge. Having his work cut out for him with that ascendance, topping off his team once again. But Wiz K, he's got nothing. He's got absolutely nothing for this leg sweep here. What are they gonna do? Absolute has his trinket oh and the goodness. spirit link. They do have that ring of fire as well, doing plenty of damage all across the board here. Wealthman on that fire mage, just cooking up the beast here on uh, or on the Golden Guardians. Dragon's breath coming in. Can they follow it up with the sheep? Doesn't look like they're going to be finding it. Whiskey stayed super low here in touch of death range. And that is going to be the, the, the spirit link totem coming out from App Surge. They have that astral shift, or sorry, uh, they have that void shift. But that is going to be the final line of defense. And no trinket to go with it. He's in a stun. Can he activate a kidney shot on the Chun Li? Will buy Ch uh, Whiskey enough time here to get void eruption up and to sit through that stun lock right there, Chun. Trading out his defenses now with that touch of karma. Peekaboo now gonna be the target of choice, and he's got basically nothing. Night Fae coming out here with the blink, with the soul shape, and Peekaboo looking for the restep, but that might not even be enough because Whiskey could be the target here, Sid. Yeah, he's got Trinket Void Shift. They're holding on by a thread. No mana remains for Absurd. Peekaboo got opened on here. He's trying to get back to the pillar in line of sight, the combustion, but Chun Li's riding down. Is he going to push forward? Both Chun Li and Peekaboo at half health at 50% dampening. It's a risky move to get aggressive right now. They stun oh, up Chun Li. They're trying to get aggressive, trying to push him away. Now retreating with the remainder of that kidney shot, controlling during the Zwen window. But leg sweep is available. Evasion doesn't come up for two more seconds. Chun Li gets blinded. Does he trinket the blind and go for the win, or does he try and sit it? Peekaboo gets stunned up by Flop. Flop and Wealthy Man going after Peekaboo. Ring of Frost on the Whiskey here, trying to lock him down. Peekaboo Shadow steps over, doesn't want to get leg swept. If Peekaboo gets leg swept here, it's going to be devastating. Absurd has to heal with no mana at 50% dampening. They're kiting for their lives. They want to steal this away from Cloud9 and dampening. They want to just close it out, make it a championship Sunday. Whoa. But no, he is going to flop to Cloud9. They, they had cooldowns, but they didn't have mana. They got really pressured right there in those final seconds. And we are going to a game five. So a couple things. 
The nice thing about the Fire Mage is you have Dragon's Breath. <laughs> so every single time we see a Kidney Shot on Chun-Li, instead of not being able to really help, maybe drop an Ice Wall, we just see an immediate Dragon's Breath on Peekaboo. That shuts that down, Dragon's Breath on Wiz-K, and uh, Chun-Li's able to survive. Another thing, I really like the fact that Wealthy Man is playing the Ring of Fire. I think it's super good. I think his overall damage is going to be really high, especially in a game like this. Dampening is just so high. All of that Ring of Fire damage gets reset by shifting power as well, just AoEing and cleaving down the game. I would be surprised if Wealthy Man wasn't top damage in this game, but this is just desperation moments, 50% dampening. You know, uh, anyone could truly fall. Both teams are actually allocating most of their CC uh, defensively. So defensive blinds, defensive paralyzes, just trying to basically stop the one shots from each other, just kind of ignoring the healers. Here's a, once again another Ring of Fire, Chun Li in a kidney shot, but unfortunately Peekaboo just burning down to that Ring of Fire dot, taking a lot of damage from the Zwen. Chun Li moving in with his Fist of Fury. There's the defensive blind once again, so it doesn't have that as an offensive option. Uh, but I think they've just completely overwhelmed at this point. This is not enough healing. Absurge did his best. I, I think they had good cooldown trades. Now, Whiskey does have the Void Shift and Dispersion, so I'm curious to see if he actually is able to get those off. Kind of just gets one-tapped by the, the Fist of Fury Rising Sun Kick. That's Wen's Battle Gear from Chun-Li. Gives a massive... Yeah, Boop. so it's just... <laughs> oh my it's god, just a massive, animation on the Panda, man. <laughs> yeah, just absolutely a massive Rising Sun Kick there. And that's what's so scary. I mean, if you fight a Kyrian Monk and he's channeling Fist of Fury, you can expect that there's going to be a fat Rising Sun Kick after. So, needed those cooldowns traded. You cannot afford... Uh, to not use them, but that was a surprising amount of burst damage. Yeah, and uh, you can see the scoreboard here as well. Chun is going to be topping it. This game, Peekaboo looking kind of even, and uh, Wealthy Man slightly under them as well. But for a Fire Mage, that is plenty yeah. of damage. And, and the thing about the Fire Mage as well, look at how much healing he does with those shields. So uh, Wealthy Man definitely having a great game there, a great performance uh, with that Ring of Fire build as well. And uh, yeah, I think a, a big story in this game is, you know, uh, they have a lot more safety with that Dragon's Breath. Like you mentioned, you know, anytime uh, Chun is getting into those really scary situations where the Vendetta is up and the Kidney Shot is down and uh, they're just going all out, they have actually an immediate answer to just disrupt their damage and allow him to survive because we saw so many close calls where, you know, they're just going down in a silence like that. And that was kind of the win condition for the Golden Guardians. And in addition to that, they also have, you know, a, a big punch there with the Fire Mage anytime that Combustion is ready. Uh, so it gives them a lot, uh, a lot of win conditions, a lot of opportunity to just one shot somebody. Uh, overall, Fire Mage going to be very, very strong here in this matchup, but uh, it's going to be hook point, smaller map for the Golden Guardians. Could be a comp swap, but you know, knowing the Golden Guardians, probably not going to happen. And most importantly, for Flop, oh. this map is not great. No drinks. It could. If Jelly, I, Jelly Beans could get tagged in here against the Fire Mage, I think it could I would be love okay. To see it. I would love to see it, too. Bring out the beans. <laughs> Bomb. Ah, yeah. Cloud9, so this is the game five I was talking about. So now we get to see the map and compositional advantage of Golden Guardians. Are they going to go with the RPS? I mean, it is so typical of Golden Guardians to always play the RPS. I mean, even when their backs are against the wall, uh, maybe they feel like it's their best option. Likely, they feel like it's the best option if they're going to pick it, but we're going to a small map. Um, I don't know how much this... I, don't, I wonder how much this is going to matter. Like, are they actually going to be able to get crowd control on flop? and push them back and really utilize a small map. Kind of curious about that. I would almost expect Golden Guardians to prefer just like big pillars, like regardless of map size. I mean, it seems like Golden Guardians arena size is as big as the pillar that they're on because that's the only place <laughs> they're at the entire game. So well, just go to somewhere that has a big pillar, kind of use that. I mean, it's true though, right? I mean, that's what we've been Yeah, yeah no, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think the biggest thing is just that you're going to have an easier time stopping Fluff from drinking. Uh, okay, on, on yeah. a map like this, that's I think that's really the main thing that uh, that they're gonna have going for him, and that's a huge thing because yeah. we saw Flop sit down, and uh, I mean, I don't know how much water he, uh, Wealthy Man had picked <laughs> up for him, but uh, he definitely went through a, a decent amount of it. So uh, I, I think that's gonna be their win condition. There, they're just gonna get to dampening, and Flop's gonna be out of mana before Absurge out of mana. And uh, the nice thing for uh, Flop is that he just uh, you know stealths and drinks at the same time. Whereas Absurd obviously can't do any of those uh, things. He's just always going to get stopped by, you know, uh, the Ring of Fire or a Flame Strike or Chun Li just coming in and poking him or Swen or any of the other million things that can stop Absurd when he's going for those drinks. Um, so I, I think that's what they're banking on, unless Jelly Beans. But uh, yeah. I mean, it's also the Golden Guardians, we, we've been disappointed by that. So I'm not going to say that. I think 
guess. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is like they can't even CC flop. Like that last game, I, I think they silenced him once. And it's like a 15 minute game. Yeah. You got to silence flop once. So picking a small map where you can actually press your CC on him, I'm almost thinking that they just shouldn't. True. Like just stun silence the mage on your go. But oh, oh, yes! Wait, I saw it flash. I, but yes. wait a minute, it's gone. I saw it flash, Shadow but it's Hunter, gone. I saw it. I saw it, saw it too. It. I saw it too, but... That was just a little teaser. It's not locked in yet, so... Jelly Bean's coming in for game five. Everything on the <laughs> line. Facing elimination. Oh. Coming in for his team. He made fun of me on Twitter, but it's okay. Because now he's coming yeah. in here to be the hero. Is he going to be able to pull it off? Uh, Jelly Bean's survival Ooh. hunter as well. Not saying BM. Going to be playing the survival. I'm, oh. I'm very curious sure, to see this BM. play out. Uh, it's. I feel like it's going to crush Cloud9. Like, yeah. I feel like I feel like that too. I think they're going to be able to play very aggressive in this match, and Wealthy Band's not going to have, get to have as much fun as he did in that last game, where he's just dropping <laughs> out Ring of Fire on CD and Mortal. Like, I think they can actually really pressure him here. Uh, he's going to get purged out. Chumley's going to have to create a lot of solo pressure, I would say. Um, but yeah, not necessarily an easy thing to do. Uh, I, I think this is a great pick. I think Golden Guardians set themselves up for success here. Yeah, and that's the thing about the Fire Mage specifically. That roar of sacrifice from the hunter can be really, really tough to deal with. You always have to get some kind of crowd control on the pet, bring a frost or whatever it might be, and then go for your combustion. Uh, and that can be a really, really tough thing to do. Uh, and for jelly beans, I mean, the only thing he has to worry about is just don't die to Chun Li. Don't get, don't give Chun Li too much uptime. And uh, we're gonna see some of his stats here as well. Playing uh, at 33% play rate, 71% interrupt rate. 13% uh, juke rate, I guess, with the uh, Mending Bandage. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess, actually, on his uh, Fire Mage as well. Uh, actually, yeah, um, mostly uh, from his Fire Mage, I would assume. And then uh, overall, 42% win rate. But Jelly Beans is that clutch player. He is that He is that guy that they tag in when all hope is lost. This is, you know, this is the guy who gets it done for the Golden Guardians. Very, very key member here on the team. Even though we mostly see them uh, bring that RPS, he just uh, meshes with the team so well. You know, we always see them when they have these like kind of hopeless matchups. Uh, like, like those stats are from basically only playing into counters, right? Like, <laughs> they would play some kind of cleave like turbo, and they're losing. Well, what do they do? They play Red Hunter with Jelly Beans, and he has to play with like two alts and try to carry the game. So, uh, you know, there's you can't you know put put too much weight on those stats uh, in terms of like win rates and stuff like that. But uh, Jelly Beans uh, always going to be that player who. Who has it? You know, he has his work cut out for him, and he always has to do some heavy lifting. And uh, this situation <laughs> definitely no no different. <laughs> What's well, all mains? What do you mean? Shadow Priest yeah, Thomas, not, that. I mean, in those situations, but now it's not. Now, now he's yeah, a yeah. new main squad uh, yeah. in the cloud. Now he gets a fun. <laughs> Roar sacrifice, counter the bust, instant CC out the wazoo on a small map where the rest of the druids right next to you the whole time. You got three purges now. You're here. You're up another <laughs> purge. Like, I feel like it's gonna be really tough for Cloud Nine. Like, I'm so happy the Golden Guardians didn't do the whole just like lock in RPS the whole time because uh, this makes way more sense uh, for the final good. game. Yeah, this is so good. I mean, Golden Guardians. Basically, what we've seen in the last four games is Golden Guardians just sticking to a pillar and just running around it and like just kidney shotting <laughs> whatever they can. This game, I think, is going to be a lot different where they're going to be the aggressors. They're going to be running down uh, Chun-Li as well as a wealthy man and getting lots of crowd control on a flop. So I sure hope flop is ready for that because I, I feel like, you know, even though there's been some tough games, he's had a pretty comfortable in these games so far. You know, no crowd control on him. He's getting to sit back, kind of chill out. Uh, I think this game could play out a lot differently than the last four. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see because we saw, you know, spawn of damage in Europe do incredible yeah, yeah. things. And I'm, I'm excited because, you know, uh, Big Mix holding it down over in Europe. Uh, Jelly Beans has been that hunter who holds it down in NA for such a long time. It's going to be really exciting to see what build does he go for. Is he going to go for the Pain Death Legendary dance game? Or is he going to go for the Fog Champ? <laughs> the dance Big game. damn bomb legendary. He's going to get in there in their face with those wildfire bombs and just triple everyone's damage and just uh, run cloud nine over I, I i'm excited to see what he what he's gonna do actually because he's very he's a very innovative player as well he's always coming up with like weird stuff and he makes it work i'm excited can Can't we get wait. into the game i want to get into the game like we're, we're <laughs> after this, we're excited for this like 
Oh. Game five. We gotta we gotta see what's gonna happen here. Maybe they're talking strat. They want to make sure that they've got this completely on lock. Like, what are we gonna do? Do we want to go after the hunter, the shadow priest, or the shaman? I'm actually thinking shaman might be the best target. Um, get some AOE CC on the pet. Maybe even use your bash on the pet to stop the ring of or stop the uh, roar of sacrifice. Because if you get the roar of sacrifice out, combust is still pretty scary onto these targets. Uh, maybe running down on top of the shaman and CCing the pet and trying to get busts off on the shaman might be a good way for them to play this and kind of turn the aggression in their own favor. Because otherwise, if they're just running away and trying to line a site, like I think they're going to get CC'd out. They're going to get purged out. Being on the defense, I don't. it's not going to work for them on hook point. Like, where are you going to go? You, you can't just run 80 yards in the opposite direction like Tolveron or something. Um, they're just going to be all over you the whole time. So I actually think Cloud9 needs to flip a switch and meet offense with offense take some risks here because this matchup should be in favor of the golden guardians we got some stats here for absturge our resident north american shaman uh still repping it on the shaman has not abandoned the faith uh is obviously playing all of the games has a really high interrupt rate like 80 percent. that's a pretty high interrupt rate like landing those shears very important for shutting down casters being as annoying as possible on the restoration shaman has flexed over to holy paladin and holy priest maybe it's going to be important in the future uh, to pick up a holy priest at some point for him as well moving in this season with how prevalent they are not as prevalent i think in north america it feels like every comp in europe almost was a holy priest whereas in north america it seems like rogue mage only um, so maybe we see other healers flex at some point but the value you get from a holy priest right now it's kind of like it's it's running as my number one spec right now uh, for 9.2 uh, after those most recent changes and seeing its performance so i do wonder if we see absurd pick it up at some point but his shaman is phenomenal nonetheless we got wiz k of course his shadow priest but he's had to flex a bit as well and he's been playing rep paladin in the past has been the main flex the main question we've always had for the golden guardians is like are they gonna ever play rmp like you got wiz k or, or you got peekaboo on rogue like are you gonna pick up a mage is anyone gonna pick up a mage at some point and try and get rogue mage on that roster because if they had it it'd be a really sick team but it, every year it, they kind of poke at it but they, they don't commit it. to it they don't hard commit don't, to it though. It's like I don't want them to commit to it. You don't like, want them to commit to rogue mage. Okay. We have enough rogue mages. Like I, I'm just gonna come up and say we have enough rogue mages. Like You're more than K, He's actually played mage that when there was a time. I mean, there's been a few times where rogue mage paladin was really good, and Whisk actually did kind of commit himself to the fire mage. Absurd was playing the paladin. And they actually did play rogue mage paladin. Uh, a decent amount. There's been times actually where Jelly Beans plays fire mage too for them to play the shadow priest fire mage, but. I kind of like it. I mean, Golden Guardians, the, somehow, some way, as long as they've been a team, their compositions have been decent. Um, the Shadow Priest, the Rogue with the Hunter, and the rest of Shaman primarily, they always seem to do pretty well with it. Um, I think this is actually a really good meta for them right now with how strong Shadow Priest, Rogues, and Hunters are. It gives them a lot of different options. Maybe we even see Peekaboo you know, on Outlaw at some point. We saw it a little bit in Europe, so that that is a possibility whiskey actually plays warlock i know maybe he hasn't played it in a while but whiskey being that flex player i feel like at this point we've seen him basically play everything right like he's played ret what has whiskey played he's played ret shadow priest he's played feral druid i okay. think he's played enhancement shaman am i wrong about that he's played warlock uh -huh. for sure he's played dk for sure dk for sure i mean whiskey he's played a lot of different roles he's just that guy he plays whatever his team needs him to play uh, uh, but in this game, he gets to play his main, which is that Shadow Breeze, of course. And uh, finally, we're going to have that game five underway. Cloud9 versus Golden Guardians. This is an elimination match. Loser goes home. Winner gets to qualify to Championship Sunday tomorrow to fight for that uh, top four uh, or top one spot, I should rather say. We got Jelly Beans tagged in here when his team needs him the most. Wealthy man, gotta be playing that Ring of Fire. Once again, they're gonna go after Whiskey here immediately with that first leg sweep. Whiskey is gonna start off with that trinket. Jelly Beans now charging in, and he's gonna be going after that mage, and I do not envy Wealthy man in this situation. Bob here getting trapped there, sniped uh -oh. from downtown, and look at Chan Lee taking massive amounts of damage here. Yeah, Wealthy Man trying to stack up there with Flop to keep that trap, not able to. Sheep coming out onto Whiskey and Jelly Beans already doing absolute incredible amounts of damage, but so far, no major defensive being forced out just yet. 
Yeah, let's see what they can get done here with the combustion onto Wiz K. I think Roar Sacrifice activates. Burge. They swap to the Jelly Beans on the remainder of it. Alter Time forced onto Wealthy Man from the burst damage of the Golden Guardian, soaking all that and healing back to full quite easily. Flop procking his Tree of Life, so he's going to be able to easily heal unless Jelly Beans gets a freezing trap here. He's in a Polymorph. Wealthy Man goes for another one. Jelly Beans able to avoid it. Wind Shear on the Wealthy Man. Grappling hook. Oh, Flop dodges the trap there by shape shifting. Nice maneuvers by Flop, avoiding that crowd control. But now he's silenced. Wealthy Man the target. Wiz K interrupted, slowing down his pressure for now. Flop out of the crowd control, trying to stabilize his team. Double leg sweep DB. Beautiful setup by Cloud9 on match point in game number five. And that is going to net them a dispersion onto Wiz K. And they are looking unfazed from the survival pick so far. Yeah, it's looking good so far. Jelly Beans taking a little bit of damage because he's in the face of Chun-Li. Whiskey pulling away, trying to drag Flop off of the pillar. There's the Intimidation stun. The potential full trap does manage to find it. Wealthy Man positioned very far away. Chun-Li as well, not too afraid. Going to be moving in, getting some damage rolling onto Whiskey. Jelly Bean's going to have to carry the damage right now. Chun-Li line of sighting, and uh, it's been good positioning from Cloud9 so far. But once again, another thing you mentioned about this map, Sid, is the small map it makes it really difficult for Flop to drink. So if Golden Guardians could bring the game just a little bit later, then Flop might actually just run out of mana, but they have to get to that point first. Oh! Whiskey almost getting one shot. Fade does come out, going for a master spell. Resonator going to be used. Sorry, the Aegis going to be used. Whiskey with his Fleshcraft should easily survive here. And uh, Jellybeans is uh, running the defensive thing, that legendary, and of course uh, running that four set as well. So his oh, no. bombs are going to be doing massive damage. Double stun coming out here. They're swapping over to absolutely What is? Look at his reaction. On. That's my reaction. What? What was that? You just got a double leg sweep. And it looked like the Chun Li just saw the whole team. He just came down the whole team. Like, All right, you guys want to play uh, some some hunter? Just want to play hook point? Well, guess what? Uh, I have leg sweep. We're just gonna go aggro, I, I guess. Mean... Like, I was not expecting that. Like, maybe <laughs> they'd be a... able to pull off a win in this matchup, but they were making it look so easy. Like, not even getting that scratched a... by the Golden Guardians throughout that series, and just getting setup after setup, just see, seeing the whole team and punishing positioning, sheeping jelly beans on the outside, getting a double leg sweep. Like, I was really not expecting Cloud9 to be able to be so dominant in this in this game particularly like we see flop in a trap but nobody's even taking damage and right here whizk and absturge stack up behind the fence line i think and jelly beans gets left out in the middle at some point right about here so the whole team gets cc'd and they really can't help out he disengages in they want to try and stop the drink now they get jelly beans out in midfield maybe a little bit before that point but the crowd control was just so on point oh this is the bash setup that got the fade from whizk an important cooldown out of the way and then he tries to go for master spells he's fishing he's gonna probably survive he's got fleshcraft as a backup they're thinking they're okay they've used roar of sacrifice on combustion they're making good trades everyone thinking like all right that's the big push this is over right jelly beans get sheeped on the outside can't help double leg sweep chun li they, they snipe the healing tide and look at chun li's damage chun li just ko's oh, almost accidentally my. kills both of them db's the trinket on absurds like he wanted to trinket link there and just gets KO'd. Like, there's no way they're expecting to die. The combustion was just used. They're like thinking like, oh, this is like maybe, maybe a trinket go is, is what I'm imagining. That's what I would have been thinking there. It's like, yeah. we just traded. So are we going to be all right? But, you know, Chun Li just rips them right in the last game, qualifying the <laughs> championship Sunday. It's like one of the most satisfying things you can do on a Wind Walker Monk is just have, and Chun Li does this a lot. It's something he's really good at, quite honestly, if I can call it out, is always just saving the huge rising sun kick for like the last 40% of your health. So what he did there, use the weapons of order, use fists of fury, and that fist of fury is going to give him 50% additional crit on his rising sun kick. But before he pulls the trigger on that rising sun kick, goes for the spinning crane kick, gets him into that like <laughs> touch of, yeah, the spinning crane kick, gets him into that like execute range, I guess, 40% health, and just goes for that rising sun <laughs> kick uh, one shot. And uh, it caught was by surprise for sure. Yeah, Everyone by surprise, I, no one saw that coming. Uh, that was insane amount of damage. <laughs> Certainly a way to end it for Cloud9. Uh, I mean, just what an incredible way to end the day. Super close, get best of fives. I love when that's like the, the way we get to wrap up the day. Unfortunately, that is it for it for Golden Guardians. Cloud9 are the victors of that. And uh, were, were any of you guys, I mean, I know that obviously we weren't expecting that last game, Super Tease, but did you expect the Cloud9 to be able to pull out a win? It seemed like it was a difficult game going into that, and they ended up pulling it off. 
I, I thought Golden Guardians were going to have full control of the game. I thought the comp, the matchup was really good for them, and then just wasn't when it actually played out. Or at least it didn't look like it the way that that played. Um, every setup was a major cooldown, like every single time, and then right there, got punished on the trinket. Like the fact that Wealthy Man was prepared for that, like he was prepared to DB the trinket. Absurd trinketed out of the leg sweep to try and link, and he DB'd the trinket and clutched out enough damage to be able to kill him in that second. Like if he gets the link there, he's alive. They're going to survive at least for another few setups into the future and keep the game going, but they were just ready aggressively for that, which is a nice kind of uh, switch for them because. Previously, they were just dampening, trying to avoid damage, trying to drag fights out uh, and reach dampening. So to be able to flip that switch after playing defense all day in the last game when you need to qualify against a comp that I feel like all of us were thinking is going to be really difficult for them, flip the switch and be able to play aggressive and get your setups and get the kill was impressive from Cloud9. Certainly impressive. And then we're going to see them face off against Novus tomorrow on Championship Sunday. We can take a look at the bracket that we've currently got for North America. Only four teams remaining. And like I said, Cloud9 versus Novus. They're going to be in that elimination bracket. They are still on the cusp of being knocked out. We know how good of a game Novus had earlier today. They knocked Team Liquid out of the tournament in like under 10 minutes or something for the entire match. Uh, super swift victory for them. So how do we expect that one to go, Zico? Any thoughts? Uh, I think Cloud9 is going to have their work cut out for them. They need to beat a, a, an RMP. Not an easy thing to do for sure. And uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's, your guess is as good as mine uh, how that's going to go. Novos, uh, they got kind of crushed in that RMP mirror by three and a half men, but uh, they also did crush Team Liquid. Uh, if they can take out Team Liquid and Cloud9 as a newcomer <laughs> team, that would be absolutely incredible. But on the flip side, if Cloud9 wins that, and then imagine if three and a half men wins in that upper final. Well, all of a sudden, you get Cloud9 versus Kawhi again. So no matter how I look at this bracket, uh, Cloud9 is going to have to go through not one, but potentially two RMPs just to get a rematch against Kawhi. It's going to be a tough cup for them to win. Um, and Kawhi, on the flip side, if they can win against three and a half men, well, three and a half men is essentially just a better version of Novos. Well, no matter what happens next, you're going to be in a pretty good spot. Either you get a rematch against Cloud9, or you get a rematch against another RMP, or you get a rematch against the team that you just beat. So no matter what happens, I feel like Kawhi is probably in just the best spot that you could be in if they have a good answer against RMP. Yeah, most certainly, of course, since, um, you know, they are in that upper bracket as well, meaning that they have yet to drop a game even in those offline matches. So it's kind of cool how, you know, you look at the bracket and you've got Kawhi versus a newcomer, three and a half men, and then you've got Cloud9 versus another newcomer with Novus. But both of these two teams that we haven't really seen in the AWC doing really, really strong and just, you know, having to face those those powerhouse teams that have been around for, for quite some time. Uh, so hopefully they, you know, they're they're going to stick together as a team. And, and not let that that pressure of being on a live tournament get to them. But here's a little overview of the teams that we did see today. Of course, only half of these teams are still remaining, and we're going to eliminate even more tomorrow. That being said, we are also going to see the EU Championships tomorrow as well. Also, four teams remaining over there. We're starting off the day with TBD versus Spawn of Dav Damage, and then Kungana versus Casual Dads. And Ven, I have a lot of teams that I'm really excited about over in this region. What about you? I mean, all of them. I feel like at this point, all these teams are looking rock solid. I'm really curious to see if Kungana, I think a lot of people kind of expect Kungana to walk away with this one with how strong Rogue Mage Priest is, as well as kind of, you know, Meh making his debut in the AWC, Raikou's return to the AWC. I mean, it's just an all-star roster. But Casual Dads, I mean, you, I mean, they kind of, their name is Casual Dads, but this is like, a, this team is a serious contender. I think they have a lot of kind of tier one compositions. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I feel like if there's any team that could give Ghana a run for their money, uh, it could definitely be Casual Dads. So I think looking forward, that's going to be the most exciting matchup for me. Yeah, I'm really excited for that one. I mean, obviously, that's a team full of, of 
people that we've seen, you know, in AWC with quite a lot of victories in AWC and success in AWC, but it's kind of a newly formed roster and they just blew everyone out of the water, including myself. And I, I'm excited to see those guys play tomorrow as well. So uh, we can look at the schedule of the games that we are going to be seeing tomorrow. Um, and like I already said, we're starting off the morning in Europe. So that's TBD versus Spawn of Damage up first. And then in the afternoon, we're going to be doing the North American um, Championship Sunday. But like overall, Super T is for, you know, for cup number one what do you feel like about the just the overall level of competition i feel like just for cup one i think we are in for a, a really really good season i'm super excited i think it's higher than ever i mean you've got kind of this like cataclysm the great cataclysm of teams where they've all spread out onto new rosters reformed while the new generation of players is coming in some players have retired um like this is a really big opportunity to make a name for yourself right now uh, and this is going to be a really big year. I'm very excited to see it. Like the fact that we just sent um, two of the best teams from North America home before even Championship Sunday, right? Like I can't believe it. Golden Guardians and, and Team Liquid, both of them are gone before we're even into Sunday. Like that was crazy in North America. Uh, and it was very similar in Europe as well with teams like SK Pieces. I think Zipai said it like six times yesterday. Like, mm -hmm. Aro's not in the grand finals. Like, in my way. Uh, it's it's crazy. Reigning champions, my way. The only team I think that has been performing to where, like, we, we I think Van said, like, sometimes we don't even talk about them because they just win, but they still win everything. And I don't know why, it, like, is Cowie, like, Seralian, Pred, <laughs> Brain, and Drake. Like, yeah. they literally just win everything. They just never lose. Um, and they're still it's continuing. True. They're still continuing on the train right now. Uh, at the yeah. moment, they seem to be the most consistent, having moved forward from last patch to this patch. Maybe that's why, just because they're that consistent. So we're just like, eh, yeah, they're going to just win. get so phased. Maybe by we just it. need to talk about, yeah, second through, you know, tenth or whatever, like <laughs> something like that. It's just a gimme yeah. at this point. But I, I mean, you're absolutely right, Super Tease. That is an extremely consistent team. Um, so we'll see if they continue that tomorrow. But of course, uh, we will have to wait and see. That is going to be on Sunday. And then just as a recap, early in the day, it's going to be Europe. And then in the afternoon, it's going to be North America. So uh, I, I, I cannot wait. Thank you guys for, for hanging out with us as well. Thank you for being here for cup number one. It's been it's been a super great day of games or super great weekend of games so far. So that is going to be it for us. We're going to sign off youtube.com slash Warcrafts. Zico, do you want to you want to do a plug? You've been doing the, the, the YouTube plugs. Give us like your best YouTube my impression. Mind. My best YouTube impression is um, hey, guys. Warcraft here. Subscribe. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. But but for real, so hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, and you will not miss any of the action starting tomorrow. YouTube.com slash Warcraft. Same time, same place. 10 a.m. Pacific or 6 p.m. CET. Or you can follow us on Twitter. Wow Esports for more updates there as well. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We'll see you tomorrow.